Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto has wood in lava release. Part 1. If you guys enjoy this, what if? Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. So let's start the video. Chapter 1. Prologue, nice job breaking it hero. A single change in fate can change everything. A seven-year-old Naruto finds himself in this situation right now, for you see, fate, the crazy bitch that she is, headed out for him this night. Ah this is so troublesome we find our stubby hero, cursing his rotten luck. Only a month before the orphanage that had taken care of him all his life had kicked him out on the street, good riddance I say Naruto huffed, not like he had many good memories of the place, all the adults there were always so mean to him. L several times he even feared for his life after several severe beatings over very minor things, though his pranks could hardly be called minor, the flooding of the faculty bathroom being one of the more destructive things he's done, but in the end, it never really did any lasting damage, besides the place smelling funny for a few days as it aired out. However the bastards were a bit more resourceful in finding loopholes in their duty of taking in all the war orphans after the Kaiubi attack. Naruto couldn't and wouldn't get into all the red tape, suffice it to say he was boned, royally. With that little loophole they were able to kick him out and there was nothing the third could do for him. So, emotionally hurt and hungry the yellow-haired prankster had made his home on the streets, dodging the civilians that tried to beat him, why? He had no fucking clue, but like a certain pineapple-haired Nara often said it was too troublesome to try and sucker one of the civilians into telling him, even if he did muster up the nerve, he doubted that any of the bastards would have wasted their breath. Oh well. Naruto mused, at least things can't get any worse. There's the little demon brat. Get him. A voice yelled from behind Naruto, he turned to look at a large mob of civilians and sweat dropped. Was that tempting fate? He thought to himself, oh shit. He took off running with the mob right behind him. Naruto was dodging random debris being thrown his way by the angry mob, including but not limited to, a beer can grade a mob of drunks. A brick oh ha ha, a brick joke. A broom thrown like a javelin what am I, dirt to them. Don't answer that. A kitchen sink. Not even gonna ask. The witty thoughts Naruto had in his head with each outlandish thing being tossed his way, while keeping his mind off of fear, took away from his concentration, and that came back to bite him in the ass, as he took a wrong turn and ended up in a dead end alley. Shit. Naruto cursed his luck, turning back to see the crowd had barred the only exit, there were at least ten of them, too many to fight, and too many to fool. He wasn't getting away from this beating he realized. He backed against the wall as far as he could, fear and anxiety clouding his eyes, he slid down the wall to a sitting position. No please he whispered he noticed quite a few of the villagers were armed this time, unlike the times before they had just physically beaten him, most of these were carrying sharp tools and knives. Are they planning to kill me? The thought caught in his throat, choking him. The mob was only a few yards away from him now, one of the people threw a glass bottle his way, the glass projectile barely missing his head and smashing into the wall beside him. He flinched slightly as a large piece of broken glass cut across his cheek, creating a thin trail of blood. Naruto reached up and touched a burning red trail, they had never left anything more than bruises and welts on him before, this group wasn't out to enjoy a beating, they were out for blood, a shocked expression crossed his face. He looked at the gathering, fear slowly giving way to terror-induced anger, as he lashed out at his aggressors verbally why. He yelled at them, why are you doing this? Shut up, demon. One of them shouted. Why do you all think I'm a demon? Have I ever hurt any of you? The boy cried, a few of the villagers looked at each other uncertainty, his words rang with truth, the boy himself had never personally done anything to them, but the majority of the crowd just yelled back at him. You are a demon boy, you cannot fool us with your petty trickery. But why? He asked quietly, only one of the people caught that, an overly drunk overly fat man who had a large scar across his face, spoke up in a slurred voice. I'll tell you why, you little demon fox. The man hicked you politely drawing away from his angry appearance for a moment before a deep glare filled his face. How old are you, boy? Naruto's face crunched in confusion, I'm seven, why? The man's face grew dark, a menacing grin twitched across his face haha <laughs> and your birthday. October 10th. He answered slowly, his mind racing about what this could mean, would he finally learn why he was hated? But the real question was, would he want to know? Well then the fat man grinned wider what happened seven years ago on October 10th. He laughed a dark laugh, his eyes focusing on the boy, causing Naruto to break out in a cold sweat. Naruto thought for a moment what did happen seven years ago. The only thing I can think of is. No. No, it can't. His face turned from confusion to shock as he stared at the fat man only a dozen feet from him, turning an ivory shade of white as he paled in front of the crowd of angry drunks. No. It. 
he finally said at length. Oh, but a can demon boy the man spat out, venom and malice in his voice that night the fourth hokage killed the nine-tailed demon fox, you were born not moments after. You boy, are the nine-tailed fox reincarnated. It can't be. Naruto looked horrified. A sudden surge of power rushed through him as a tingling ran through his arms. Those whisker marks and that wound that's healed on your cheek are proof enough of the demon inside of you. The man said with finality, Naruto felt for the wound again, and in horror he realized it was gone, healed almost instantly, he knew he had a healing factor, and that alone wasn't really normal, but this was just too much for him. Ah uh, no. Just. Why? His voice squeaked lightly, this time no one heard him as he hung his head in shame, I'm the fox. He thought quietly before he was broken out of his self-pity by a loud roar, he looked up sharply and saw the thugs rushing him. Naruto raised his hands in defense, and time seemed to slow down for him. Naruto looked at the men approaching, the tingling he felt moments before turned into a bitter cold with a sharp wind flowing around him, the men charging stopped quickly looking at the boy in front of them. Around Naruto was a raging gale of wind, and the moisture in the air had frozen, ice began forming around him, freezing the blades of the weapons the men carried before they shattered into pieces, most of the men looked at the boy in shock and fear, but the fat man from before had a look of utter rage on his face see, he is a demon the man spat, pulling out a large wooden club, he rushed forward preparing to crush the boy's skull, Naruto raised his hand in defense, and the ice around him rose to meet the challenge, unfortunately the man did not feel the pain, drunk as he was as the ice speared him in the stomach, with a look of shock he brought the club down on Naruto's skull, and a splitting pain ran through Naruto's head before everything went dark. Naruto sat up and looked around, he was in a sewer with dark corridors leading away from him. In front of him was a large room, the steam and heat from the room causing a sticky feeling to break out on his skin. The only thing that seemed out of place in the dank pipe-filled chamber was a large gate-like thing in front of him. There was a small piece of paper on the gate with the kanji for seal written on it. Naruto felt strangely sick in the place, like an evil presence was watching him. Where am I? He spoke softly, not expecting a reply. You are inside your mind foolish human a deep reverberating voice rumbled around him, causing Naruto to jump several inches in the air in shock, Naruto watched as a pair of deep red eyes appeared from behind the cage. Naruto backed up from the cage, hands shaking and face torn with terror who? Who are you? He asked quickly falling back against the pipe covered wall, stupid boy, that man earlier told you, didn't he? I am the nine-tailed demon fox Kaiubi. The beast roared the last bit and an evil smile spread in the darkness, the glittering teeth of its mouth shining behind the bars of the gate. A look of hurt crossed Naruto's face, so it's true then. I am a demon. The fox however laughed heartily, the exhaled air shaking the room. You? A demon? Ha, don't make me laugh. The beast chuckled, the only demonic thing about you is me, foolish human, that fleshy sack of meat you killed was as big a fool as you. You're no demon, you're not worthy of that title human. The fox grinned again. Then what am I? The blonde asked, fearful of what the beast would tell him. Well seeing as you're asking nicely the creature mused, and I like that look of fear in your eyes, I'll tell you. Seven years ago, when I attacked this village, your father was the fourth hokage. The fox started, but Naruto interrupted it in shock. The fourth hokage was my dad. Naruto's breath caught in his throat, old man third had told him he was an orphan, if that was a lie, why didn't the third tell him, before he could ask the beast more he was pulled from his thoughts. Yes stupid mortal, interrupt me again, and I'll rend your soul to pieces. The threat was an idle one, seeing as the seal would keep it from killing the boy, but Naruto didn't know that now did he? As I was saying, the fourth fought me outside your village, and in one of the most insulting things any human has ever done to me, he summoned the Shinigami and sealed my soul and powers into you boy, his son. The fox's face screwed up in a frown, he then sealed my body and the source of half my might into him, and the Shinigami ate my body and his soul, to forever be trapped in his gullet. The fox growled deeply at the spawn of its most hated enemy. To answer your earlier question, you boys are the bearers of demons. In the words of your weak language you are known as a Jinchuriki, a human sacrifice meant to hold back the powers of a demon, and as much as I loathe the fact, you are also the only thing keeping me alive, this seal here binds us together, if you die, I die, it's as simple as that. Naruto was silent for a moment, he finally looked up at the evil presence that now had a shape and name so what now? What do I do now that I know all this? He was at a loss, even asking the demon itself what he should do, no boy should feel that lost in his existence. The fox however answered predictably. Why not release me boy? The fox grinned, remove the seal and let me free to kill the villagers that have wronged you for so long. Naruto thought for a moment before shaking his head, but I don't want them to die, and even if I did, I don't want you to attack and kill the people I care about, and since you're a demon, I can't trust your word that you won't kill them. The fox let loose a laugh louder than all the rest. 
Ha 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 ha. Maybe you aren't so foolish after all, puny human. Yes, I admit it all. I would crush the bones of all your loved ones, suck out the marrow and blood from their bodies, and leave you a twisted lump of flesh to grovel at my feet. Add and all of the above the fox licked its lips hungrily before letting that evil smile across its face again. An angry look crossed Naruto's face, the way he blatantly said he'd destroy everything he held dear was infuriating. You bastard, the villagers were right, you are a demon, I hope you rot in this cell for the rest of my life, you fucking bastard. The fox's face screwed up slightly going from that deep smile to an odd frown. Stupid boy, do you think this seal will hold me forever, simply by being here, talking with me already shows the seal is weakening, it is only a matter of time before I feast on your bones. The fox growled at him, but Naruto wasn't phased as he stared the fox down, and surprisingly the fox frowned and backed down a bit no matter, I am only telling you this now, because you will find out soon enough anyway, after you killed that villager, the other weaklings are taking advantage and surrounding your unconscious body. Now if it were up to me, I'd have just let them kill you, but seeing as my health is directly connected to you still breathing, I'll give you my aid this once. The red beast grunted once before it forced its crimson chakra through the gaps of the bars, surrounding Naruto in a vile cloak. What are you doing to me? Naruto yelled. Unless you wish to die from those pathetic villagers, you let my power in, even if you don't believe me, I promise not to hurt you this once, I need you alive and blood pumping to eat you, I don't particularly like rotten meat. The fox grunted once again and Naruto felt reality tug him back. But the shock his eyes opened wide to see a dozen or more weapons coming down on him, with a rush of energy a dark red chakra rose up pushing the men away. Naruto stood up as the red chakra formed around him, get back you worthless bastards. He yelled, raising his hands in an attempt to do as he did earlier with the ice powers, he felt the familiar biting wind and cold in his arms, before something else filled him, a deep foreboding, suddenly time seemed to stop. Naruto looked down at his arms, where what looked like green and blue energy were forming around his hands, they mixed with the red fox chakra forming dark violets and dark browns, before the three colors mixed together violently, in shock both Naruto and Kubi's voices said at once, Naruto vocally, subconsciously. What? Before all sound disappeared in a flash of white light. Forest of death, an hour later, Naruto awoke yet again in a place he didn't recognize. At least it isn't a sower this time Naruto thought dryly. He was laying in a meter deep crater where it appeared as though he had hit rather hard. He looked down at his tattered clothing, held together by the seams well. There goes my wardrobe he chuckled absently, shaking on his feet. Whatever the hell had happened had drained him badly of chakra. Naruto looked around, he appeared to be in a forest of some kind, the trees above him were busted, showing he had crashed through from above, apparently whatever that light had been it had launched him far into the air. Then how am I alive? He wondered for a moment before he palmed his face fox chakra, duh, one of the few times from this point on he would admit the fox being sealed inside him was a good thing, okay I'm not dead and I'm not hurt, now where the hell am I? Naruto mused looking around the dense forest again, the meager light coming from the setting sun didn't give him much hope of finding his way, and it would be dark soon, so he'd be even more screwed. His hopes for shelter were put on hold as a voice rang out answering his earlier question. Be my dear Dumbus are in my home sweet home, the forest of death. The voice seemed to be coming from all around him, to his surprise it sounded like a woman. Lovely name, let me guess. It's a forest and it's filled with death. Naruto replied sarcastically. Not missing a beat the voice replied, how did you know? Maybe you aren't such a dumbass after all the sarcasm was evident in her voice. Sure enough a woman appeared in front of him, leaning against a nearby tree. She had light purple hair done up in a fan style, while her pale brown eyes added a nice contrast to the spiky bangs covering her face. Her clothing was some of the sluttiest ninja gear he had ever seen, what was visible beneath the tan trench coat she wore was a skin-tight mesh bodysuit that was cut off on the legs and arms halfway out, on top of that she had a very short dark brown miniskirt that left little to the imagination there was also a fang necklace on her neck, but other than that was just standard ninja gear on her legs and waist. So Dumbus what's a brat like you doing out here in my neck of the woods? Where exactly is here? Are we still in Kanoha? Yep, Gaki, this is one of our training grounds, number 44 to be exact, the forest of death. Her attitude was bubbly to say the least, it definitely fit her wardrobe. So I ask you again. Suddenly Naruto was suspended upside down in the air by his legs. He looked up and saw a large snake coiled around his limbs. What are you doing here? She finished with a glare, the blonde gulped noticeably at the large python constricting his legs. I don't know honestly, first I'm getting chazzed down by some people, next I'm cornered and attacked, then some weird blue and green chakra surrounds me and some crazy ice forms, then some red chakra mixes with that, and then everything goes white, and here I am. Naruto blurted roughly though his explanation tactfully leaving out his knowledge of the fox. He didn't know the woman, she was clearly a Kanohan in judging by her headband, but he still didn't trust anyone, but maybe an old man with the truth of his meeting with the fox. 
Anko looked at the boy, his appearance showing her more skin than necessary, with all the rips in his clothing and the several burns on the cloth. It was possible that the fox's chakra had taken over the boy and had caused the explosion, but what concerned Anko most was those other two chakra the boy spoke of damn this isn't good, if what he says is true those people who cornered him are probably dead, not like they deserve any sympathy for attacking a child, but damn this kid is out of luck, if the council gets a hold of him, better take him to Suratobi, he'll know what to do. Walked over to him we're going to meet the Hokage, try to cover yourself a bit wancha. She gave him a dirty little grin that made Naruto blush a little. Before both of them disappeared in a. In the office of Saratobi Hirazanaka the Sandame Hokage, the old man was working on a stack of papers, his old age keeping him here late into the night with his duties to the village and its people. It was at this time that a swirl of leaves signaled into the third office. He looked up quickly to see Anko, behind her was Naruto hanging by his legs from one of Anko's snake familiars. He relaxed visibly when he realized who it was and leaned back into his chair, what can I do for you Anko? And why do you have Naruto tied up like that? Well, sir. She glanced meaningfully at Naruto, this has something to do with that explosion earlier doesn't it? Anko nodded and the third sighed, I'm assuming it was Naruto right. The third shot gave Naruto a serious look. Naruto gulped. Yes sir, but I think it had to do with that sir. Anko explained. The third's face became solemn as he pondered what to do next. What he wasn't prepared for was Naruto somehow slipping out of Anko's grasp and confronting him. Gigi. Naruto sighed as he sat down in the chair opposite of him, Naruto looked up and stared straight into Sirotobi's eyes, the dead look in Naruto's sky blue eyes made Sirotobi visibly flinch. I know about Kaiubi old man, I met it tonight, and there are some things we need to talk about. Naruto's voice was dead serious, if it wasn't for the way he looked you'd forget you were talking to a seven-year-old child. At the mention of the fox a shocked expression crossed the third's face, but he hid it quickly, after a second to recompose himself he coughed. Naruto, I want you to understand my reasons for hiding these things from you. First, the Yandame Hokage, Minato, asked me to keep these things hidden from you that you could possibly have a normal life, I have watched over you with my crystal ball for the last seven years, particularly this last month, and I can see now that that isn't an option, and for that I am sorry. The third looked silently at Naruto. The boy's face was a mixture of anger and hurt. The fact that Sirotobi would hide something as important as that from him left a bad taste in his mouth. Second the third spoke up Minato also asked me to tell you these things when you turned 16 or became a so that you'd be able to handle the stress those in your position have to handle daily, this too has become a moot point seeing as you already know, and from that look in your eyes, I can also see you are not taking it very well. The third took off his hat and placed it on the table did the fox say anything else. I know who dad is. The third sighed sadly, then this becomes a bit easier to explain, at the very least I would have told you who he was anyway after I explained things better. The third trailed off for a few moments before he began again, tell me Naruto what would you have done in Yandame's position if you were forced to make the choices he made. Naruto looked at him strangely. Let me put that another way. Would you have put the burden that you now carry on the shoulders of someone else? Would you force that fate on someone else's child when you yourself were not willing to make that sacrifice? Naruto's face went pale as he thought about that, would you have done that, really? Saratobi continued that, Naruto, is what we must do. We make the hard choices. We send ninja out every day to their deaths, and when the time comes we ourselves must face down the biggest threats to the village. Even at the cost of our lives. Do you understand? Naruto thought for a long time on the third word, letting several minutes pass by, he answered honestly yeah old man I understand and no, I would have taken the fox to my grave if I had to, but I still don't like it, I hate this, what I really am. Then you understand more than I had hoped what my position is in this situation. You don't have to like it, but it's the situation I was forced into to ensure that the village didn't tear itself apart over this. Most civilians don't know the fox was sealed within you, they just assume that since you were the only child born that day along with the whiskers on your face, that you are the fox reincarnated in human form, it didn't help much that you were in my office when the council convened that night after the fox's defeat. The council assumed you were the monster sealed in human form, or at the very least what most of the more intelligent ninja already knew, that you were a many of them called for your immediate death, but I did all I could to halt their intentions. Sadly the only thing I could do was put you in the orphanage and pass a law that made it illegal to speak of the fox to any of the newer generation, and for seven years that law has held people's hatred for you down under pain of death. But know this Naruto, I'm not a god, I can't devote all my time to watching you, and that mistake has led us to this is. The third sighed and grabbed a single sheet of paper out of the ten people that confronted you, none of them lived, they were torn apart by whatever it was that you did. 
I don't hold it against you, in fact there is really nothing that can be done to you, since you acted in self-defense, but know now that your life is going to be much harder, already there are rumors of your involvement, and the council will probably try to do everything in their power to limit, hinder or otherwise try and outright kill you to end the threat they feel you pose. Naruto looked crestfallen, seeing how hard his life had been now, it would only get worse. He couldn't take it anymore, as hot tears fell down his cheeks, and soft whimpers echoed around the room. Anko was looking at the boy sadly, feeling a very similar pain that he was feeling, he's in the same boat as me she thought quietly, ever since that bastard Orochimaru had abandoned her, she had been ostracized by the village, only keeping her position and pedigree by hard work and menial labor, since Orochimaru left the village, and she could only see herself in Naruto sir, if I may. She asked at length, go ahead. He waved for her to speak, Naruto looked up at her two long streams of tears staining his cheeks. If things are going to get harder for Naruto, then he needs someone to take care of him, someone willing and able sir. Naruto just started, but the third side is agreement. You are right Anko, but who here would take care of the boy? The council will ruin the reputation of anyone trying to help the boy, and none of the other ninja besides Kakashi would take the boy in. And I for one don't think Kakashi would be the best choice to take care of a child. The third trailed off leaving the idea hanging. Anko snorted at that thought, Kakashi was a good guy, but the man read so much porn and was tardy for every meeting he was ever called to, he'd be nothing but a bad influence on the boy. Not that her idea was much better, but seeing the same look in the boy's eye that stared back at her every morning in the mirror just hit too close to home for her. What about me sir? Anko asked timidly, Naruto's head spun around so fast you'd think his neck snapped. He stared at her wide-eyed, breath caught in his throat. You know my situation Suratobi, me and him are in more or less the same boat, the council won't touch either of us due to our situation, and it's better to have someone to lean on, than stand alone am I right? Anko smiled sadly. The third sighed. He was getting too old for this shit. I don't know if I can trust you with this one Anko, this is very serious. The third was about to continue when Anko cut him off, trust. Anko shouted in outrage trust is something I've had to work tooth and nail to get after that snake bastard left the village. I have to sweat blood and tears to get to where I am, who else than me to take care of the boy? Someone who has shared his pain and has come out of that darkness at least somewhat sane. She glared daggers at Siratobi, who sighed again, he was getting too old for this shit. Very well Anko, I leave him in your capable hands, but I have a few more things to say to Naruto, what is it, old man? Naruto asked, his joy at finally having someone take care of him tempered by the serious way the third addressed him. First of all, eyewitnesses said that they saw several oddities about the chakra explosion that happened earlier, first that it wasn't just the fox's red chakra, but a green and blue chakra as well, can you tell me what you felt when these things were going on? Well, all I know is that before the explosion those two odd color chakras made some weird kind of ice around me and protected me from the villagers, but other than that I don't know. I see. Naruto came here for a moment the third reached into his drawer and pulled out a stack of paper, he pulled one out and handed it to Naruto. I assume you at least know how to channel chakra right Naruto. The orphanage said that you were able to copy the invisibility illusion, and I've seen you use it several times to escape from the villagers. Yes sir Naruto focused his chakra, it wasn't much, but it was enough, the paper at first did nothing, but then it seemed to split down the middle, before one of the corners of the paper became wet, Naruto dropped the paper in shock. What happened? It seems you may have tapped into a latent keke genkai, maybe something on your mother's side. Whatever it is we. The third was cut off by a gasp from Anko, sir. She pointed to the paper on the floor, sure enough, on the floor the piece of chakra paper had split again, across the original cut creating four equal slices, and oddly enough, each of the slices were doing something different, one was still soaking wet, one was burning to ash, another was crumpled into a little ball, and the last was nothing but a pinch of dust on the floor. Kami. Toby was speechless. All elemental affinities. Anko finished for him. What are you guys talking about? Naruto asked, curious about their shocked expressions. Naruto, do you know what this means? Anko asked him, when he shook his head Siratobi spoke up. This means something unprecedented, Naruto, having all elemental affinities is all but impossible, sure most people have one major affinity, most John and after years of practice can have one or two minor affinities as well, but Naruto, not only do you have a major affinity with wind, shown by how the paper split not once but twice, but all four other elements as major affinities, and those affinities are extremely powerful, I've never seen chakra paper affected so powerfully by an element. Naruto, the reason this is unprecedented is the fact the last person to have an affinity to all five elements was Rikidu Senen himself. The third let that bit of information hang grimly in the air as the three of them stared blankly at what was left of the paper. Chapter 2, perfect for each other, maybe. But how? Naruto asked, shocked by what all this could mean. 
the third looked pensive a moment stroking his beard and thought honestly I don't know he said at length, I have a theory as to how that could happen, but it's a bit out there. What do you mean? Anko looked curiously at the third. Well, if my guess is correct, Naruto may have had, or may still have a Kekei Genkai, one of the lost bloodlines of the Land of Mist, the land near Whirlpool. The home country of the Uzumaki clan, which Naruto is descended from. As you know, wind and water are the affinities of Heimton, or Ice Release. What most people don't know is that the tailed beasts all have chakra affinities as well, for instance, Kaiubi's affinity is fire, an extremely strong fire affinity, what I'm guessing here, and this is strictly guessing, is that when you subconsciously used the Heimton bloodline, it mixed in all the wrong ways with the fire-aligned fox's chakra, causing a massive feedback into your chakra system, namely, the mixing of the fire and water affinities caused an imbalance, and the wind chakra tossed fuel onto the flame so to speak, creating even more havoc in the boy's systems, but what I don't understand is why he now has five elemental affinities, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the feedback. The rest of the third's words were cut off as Naruto felt himself being pulled inside himself, it was an odd feeling that left him in that familiar sewer that was apparently his mindscape. Naruto sweat dropped I seriously need to figure out a way to clear out my head, honestly if this is how a normal person's mind looks like I'd hate to see the inside of the perv's head, that's not how a mindscape works monkey. The very irritated voice of the fox echoed around him. A mindscape is based on a person's personality and experiences through life, seeing how bad you've been abused, your life has pretty much been in the shitter, your mind apparently took that literally. God I really didn't want to hear that coming from you. The two flaming orbs of the fox stared blankly at him as his eyebrow twitched in irritation. The fox leaned back a little, relaxing as much as it seemed possible in that relatively small cage, deal with it human, we have more serious things to discuss, I know you're talking about how you apparently obtained an affinity to all five elements, and I personally want to put my two cents into this conversation. Sarcasm filled the blonde's voice, and how exactly are you going to do that fuzzball? If you haven't noticed you're locked up in here and there's no way in hell I'm releasing the seal. He puffed up in front of the great demon, pointing an accusing finger at the beast. I will be sweat dropped well as much as I loathe to admit it, you are right for once. However. I have an idea, it's not the preferred one seeing as I'd rather be released to cause mayhem and torment as is my namesake, but you continue to be difficult. Well sorry if I actually care for things other than myself, he glared at the fox not budging an inch, despite the fact the creature was a 100 times his size. Sigh, I, I remember now why I don't try to reason and just eat you monkeys, you always give me a migraine. The fox rubbed the bridge of its nose with its claws, which to Naruto looked rather hilarious, and he tried hard not to laugh. And was failing miserably. Shut it human, I'm willing to help you here to further my goals, be glad I'm even lending you my aid, if events had been any different, I'd have left you to squirm without knowing anything, but seeing as you now have something this troublesome running through you, you need to be informed in case you accidentally kill yourself and me along with you. The fox grumbled a few times angrily. What do you mean? Naruto stuttered a little, his eyes shifted to concern in anticipation of what the fox would say. You can perform hand signs, correct? Naruto nodded, good, I'm going to teach you a known as shadow clones, this is one part of what you need for me to help, and don't worry about the outside world, time flows differently here, minutes outside can last hours in here, so you should have plenty of time to learn Naruto nodded again, looking at the Kyuubi's hands. Claws and noticed they were in a seal see this seal here. Naruto nodded again. Now this isn't very difficult, the only reason I know this is because it only requires one hand sign, and those bastard leaf shinobi used the thing countless times on me when I was destroying your villages. Haha <laughs> good times. The fox chuckled darkly, and Naruto turned a beat red at the beast's nonchalant attitude at murdering the people who would one day be his subjects. If he had a way to get the cage hat well boy, start practicing, contrary to popular belief I don't have an eternity to wait the fox broke him out of his thoughts and showed the boy the seal again, put as much chakra into the jutsu as you can, we're going for replication, not fine tuning. So anything above 5 clones should be sufficient control for what I'm planning. Once you have that down I'll show you the next step. Naruto blinked once coming back to reality to find the third still talking. Yo old man. The third stopped for a moment to look at Naruto curiously. Um I don't really know how to say this but. Well. Kaiubi wants to talk to you. Dot the third stared blankly at Naruto for a moment before shouting. What? The third's eyes widened considerably, his mouth hanging open a little in disbelief. Um? Yeah one second. The blonde sweat dropped and put his hand into a familiar seal with a slight twist as his hands flipped through three more seals after that hidden art. Kaiubi cage bunch and no jutsu with a small flash of red chakra the room was filled with a puff of smoke. When the smoke cleared the three looked around the room expectantly, the two adults in a bit of fear at what the fox might have made Naruto do. A slight cough brought them out of their searching, the three looked down only to sweat drop, a little fox sat on the floor between Naruto's legs with a pissed off expression. Oh my hate. 
All of it. The fox twitched in anger. You could at least learn better chakra control, that was pathetic, it was odd looking to say the least, that such a deep voice was coming out of something that small. Naruto, the third and Anko looked at each other for a moment, then immediately fell to the floor laughing. I hate. All of you. The third was the first to come out of the laughing fit Kaiubi is that really you? You're a bit smaller than I remember. The third eyed the fox who now had a feral look to its face. I'm not even going to answer that remark monkey, I came here to discuss the circumstances of the container's chakra system. The third immediately sobered up. What do you mean? What has happened that I should be aware of? The third's hands clenched in concern, if the fox was willing to speak to him in person. Er. Animal. Then something terrible must have happened. As you probably know the boy now has all the elemental affinities. The third nodded well then this shall be easy, what you don't know is that when my chakra mixed with the boy's keke genkai, it caused a chain reaction in his chakra network, causing a feedback that all but completely destroyed his chakra network, every one of his tinketsu were vaporized. At this all the human mouths in the room dropped yes, I see you understand that little bit of information at least. Well moving on, I worked furiously on the boy, sending around three tails worth of chakra through his system all at once to repair what I could, now this is where it gets strange. You know basic chakra theory right mortal? It looked pointedly at the third who nodded in response. Good, then you know how a being's elemental affinity is decided in the womb, where the parent's DNA is used to determine the affinity. What happened here is extremely rare, but with my tinkering in the boy's chakra systems, I came across the symptoms of elemental convergence, this is unheard of in humans, mainly because humans can rarely survive their chakra system being vaporized. We demons and those of the summon realm can survive to an extent, but this boy surviving is not only statistically impossible, but should be naturally impossible, no natural being should be able to channel all five elements effortlessly. The only reason the Rikidu Senen was able to do so was because of the Rinnegan, the eyes themselves were an unnatural occurrence that allowed the man to do so. So what does this mean for Naruto here? The third asked, genuinely curious now. Heh, what it means, is that when I repaired the boy's chakra network, the other elemental affinities leached into his system, as I said before a child's elemental affinity is decided in the womb, but unlike other sources of DNA, like the facial features of the parents and body types, the chakra network isn't set in stone, you can naturally change your elements to an extent with training, you can't effectively use all elements, but you could easily learn a few from affinities that you aren't aligned to. But when you completely destroy a portion of the chakra network, and it is repaired the elemental affinity that is present isn't there anymore, in effect you have an elemental neutrality, this draws in any elements around it, and unfortunately for the boy he landed in the forest of death, where the elements have gone haywire for generations. Wait what do you mean by that? Anko interrupted. I've lived there all my life, nothing really seems out of the ordinary there. The fox sweat drop do you honestly think the flora and fauna there are natural? Everything in that place is either highly toxic or abnormally large, even in the ninja world that place isn't normal. Anko made a slight O face to be precise it is a chaotic zone, there are several of these places in the world that cause things like that to happen, sometimes whole nations are subject to a chaotic zone, such as demon country or small pockets like the forest of death. The fox took a moment to collect itself in short, a chaotic zone is where the natural energies of the world are twisted and concentrated, that means all five elements highly concentrated in one place, and that's what leads us to the boy here, after I repaired his chakra network, his elementally neutral system drew in everything around it like a magnet, hell even I don't know to what extent the boy absorbed, he could have a hundred bloodlines for all I know now, with how much chaotic energy is in that forest, I'm surprised he hasn't sprouted any fox features, since my chakra was laced through his system when the absorption style. Actually, you might want to keep an eye on that, I'm willing to bet he'll start growing fox attribute soon, there's just no way he wouldn't, I was too close to his chakra system not to. Great, the villagers hate me now without the fox features, how much more will they attack me when I look like you? Naruto said bitterly, don't blame me human, I'm not the one who cornered you in that alley, if you want to blame anyone, blame those fools that you turned to dust. As much as I enjoy this conversation the third started dryly, what does this mean for Naruto in the long run, and how will it affect him? The fox thought for a moment before replying honestly. I have no idea, like I said before this is unheard of in humans, the only thing that I can think of that would hamper him is the piss poor control he has so far, I mean, I was supposed to be around the size of a large ninja dog, but no, I'm a chihuahua. The three humans in the room chuckled at that. Dot. If anything you should consider this a blessing, this boy has more going for him now than most prodigies. 
All five elemental affinities means he has access to all spheres of elemental. And since four of the five are fairly equal with wind being the exception due to the boy's originally high wind affinity, you can probably use many elemental bloodline abilities. Naturally now on top of the ice bloodline you already had, not to mention abilities you gained from absorbing any energies from me or the plants and animals around you. Hell for all I know you could have the Sharingan by now, and if not now maybe develop it further on. You don't realize the scope of what's happened to you yet. If I wasn't so bitter towards your old man, I'd actually compliment you on the improvement. Naruto had something of a bitter smirk on his face when the explanation started. As the conversation went on it turned into a smile and just grew wider from there, so you're saying I now have a better chance at being Hokage than ever before. The FFT Hokage. The fox chuckled if you aren't careful you could be the next Rakuto Senen for all I know. Naruto's grin took up his whole face. Hell yeah. He hopped out of the chair he was sitting in and did a little happy dance, pumping his fists in the air. Siratobi took out his pipe and lit it, I find it hard to believe that there are no side effects to this happening to the boy, are you sure that there aren't any adverse side effects other than the fox parts and possible new bloodlines? Something that might hurt the boy at any point. The fox glared at the old man with an irritated look on its face human, I've said this before already, I don't know, this rarely happens even for demons, and it has never happened for humans as far back as I can remember, and I've lived longer than a hundred of your lifetimes, hell the odds of this happening ever is statistically zero, or at least it should be. I mean the things that would have to happen to even survive something like this are insane, first, a person would have to have a healing factor, with my chakra that's a given, but most humans in the world don't have that. Second, said humans would have to have a bloodline, an elemental bloodline in particular, in this case, the boy's Huntin bloodline. Third, you would need a foreign chakra that is the direct positive and negative reacting element to the two elements in the bloodline, in my case fire opposing the water and wind element, and finally, you would need a chaotic zone close by when the feedback happened. All of this together is possible to do, but even then the odds of the person actually surviving the event are again near zero, so you see I have no clue what will happen to the boy. Hell he could turn into a demon and sprout random animal parts and elements out of his body for all I know Naruto looked about ready to pass out at this information. But before the sweet embrace of unconsciousness could take him, the fox interrupted his freak out, but in this case I can say that this is unlikely. For the most part the only time anything of that nature happens is due to the fact that demons and summons are physically, mentally and in some cases cases spiritually different from humans, and that's only in the worst cases that that has happened to someone, in your case, human your body is much different than a demon or summons, your body is more rigid in its physical nature unlike us. On top of that, you have my demonic chakra on damage control. I can, to an extent, control what happens in your body through my chakra, and considering both those things I can safely say you won't turn into a monster or anything of that nature. Naruto sighed in relief at this so I just wait and see what happens then. Basically yes, other than that maybe try and work on all your elemental affinities and see what you can do with them all now. If you have the capability of multiple elemental bloodlines, then it's possible to unlock a few of these and other more physical bloodlines you may have absorbed early to help you later in life. A third listened to all of this quietly weighing his options in the matter. On the one hand the boy's life was turned on its head, the civilians would soon be out for blood. If he was to have any sense of normality he needed an out, Anko was a good start, the woman shared the boy's lot in life. Unable to do anything about their their situation and ostracized for things outside of their control, but the third knew that wouldn't stop the majority of the civilian council from calling for his blood, and since the boy wasn't a ninja he couldn't protect the boy from them either. The only thing that could really save the boy is if he could somehow spin this new information about bloodlines to convince the council that the boy was worth the lives lost. Lord knows the civilians are bloodline hungry as it is, but that would just turn the boy into breeding stock, he'd need something more to keep that from happening. But what? The third looked at Naruto silently watching him talk with Anko, the Kaiubi was sitting in the corner, seemingly ignoring everyone when suddenly an idea came to him, it was a cruel idea, but it could prove to be beneficial to all parties involved. Naruto, Anko. The third spoke up gruffly, the two in question snapped to attention looking at the third expectantly. I've thought over this matter and I have a few things I need to get out of the way. First off if you are going to stay with Anko there needs to be a legitimate reason, the civilian council will jump all over that and I wouldn't be able to do much about it. The room grew quiet, Naruto sat down a little somber at the thought of being back on the streets again. Couldn't I just adopt him? Anko asked curiously he'd be like a little brother she shot the boy a grin. I, I've already tried that. Saratobi replied sadly, I'd have adopted the boy myself if that were the case Naruto was shocked by the man's words, he never knew that the old man cared that much about him, but those words only cemented his respect for him even more. Also, that's not the only problem related to the civilian council. The third took a long drag on his pipe. 
I know this might come as a shock, but I don't think that the, the civilian council will let the deaths of so many civilians just be ignored, they most likely will try to ask for your life Naruto the grimness in the third's tone sent chills up the blonde spine as he turned a pale shade of white. However he looked up quietly I have an idea that might help. A third sent a meaningful look at Anko, who liked the blonde next to her paled drastically. Naruto, Anko, the third sighed, my idea is for the two of you to be married. You could hear the pair of jaws hitting the floor at this point, while the Kaiubi was laughing its ass off in the corner. What? The blonde and the babe replied together. It's exactly as I said, now listen to my reasons before you say anything else the third growled out, the two wisely shut their mouths before nodding Naruto, the only thing that I can think of to get you out of this situation is to reveal what has happened to you to the council, if I can convince the council that you are much more valuable alive than dead then it just may be enough to save you, but to do that you'd need to provide something of value to the village and in your case that is where your bloodline and her bloodlines will come into play. The third turned to the fox in the corner Kaiubi, what has happened to the boy can be inherited by his children correct? The fox nodded. Well, that is the basis for my idea, as long as you are alive your bloodline per second will keep the council off of you, as for you two being wed, there are several reasons for that. First he held up a finger it's to keep the council from whoring the boy off to half the women in the village when he comes of age, having a bride to be will keep most of them happy, as long as you are married and have at least one child by the time you are 16, of course they may push for you to have multiple wives, according to the clan restoration act, since you are technically the head of your clan, but that is entirely your decision as long as you have at least one wife and child. The third held up another finger second, this will also allow you and Anko to remain close to one another, allowing Anko to take care of you Naruto, this also means that you will always be under watch by an experienced ninja, which will make your case a lot easier when they demand someone keep an eye on you. Another finger went up and finally third, this applies to you Anko, it is to allow you to redeem yourself in the eyes of the council, both ninja and civilian. Being married means that you are tied in a way to this village now, so the odds of you defecting are slightly lower in the eyes of your peers, you would be able to gain a certain amount of respect from both sides of the council, not only for going through with this in the first place, but if everything goes as planned, then possibly redeeming yourself completely by following through with it as well. He let his words sink in for a moment before continuing this whole idea is underhanded I know, it's also unfair to both of you in a way, but given what has happened and what will most likely happen, this is the best course of action. Do you both understand? Anko was silent for a while as she mulled over the third plan. She could definitely benefit from this in a major way, ever since that snake bastard Orochimaru had abandoned her, she had been the black sheep, a stain on the supposedly proud village of Konoha, hell her life sucked, everyone looked down on her, and no one would give her the time of day. Hell this really was the only option open to her at the moment that at least had some guarantee of redemption with a minimal amount of effort. And who's to say, they really weren't that far apart age-wise, 9 years isn't that much, and that gap would mean less and less the older they got so age didn't really bother her, she had also seen the fourth Hokage in his prime, if this boy looked anything like him when he got older, he'd be quite the looker, personality-wise she could tell at least mentally the boy was older than he appeared, that came with the whole I have no family, and I grew up on my own mentality, but if all else failed, she'd have the rest of his young life to groom the boy in anything he currently lacked. So to cap off her mental checklist he had the looks, mentality, prestige, most likely ability given this new development in his powers, and with that he'd also have the finances down after he grew up a bit and could take on missions, so really what problem did she have? Well, she could think of one. As she stole a glance at the boy's pants. No, bad Anko she mentally berated herself Orochimaru is the pedophile, not you. Though. That. Didn't stop her from glancing at the boy's crotch again. If he was packing heat when the time came for them to truly tie the knot, she could say with certainty that he'd be one hell of a hubby. Naruto on the other hand was completely blank, as soon as the third had finished speaking the hamster wheel stopped spinning and the gears locked up. I'm going to be married. He thought stupidly. Is that what I want? Really? The boy was stumped, he had never thought about the future, the only real goal he had set for himself was getting the hat from the old man. The coming hokage really was his only dream, but what about a family? A wife? Those thoughts running through the boy's head were confusing him to no end, hell a seven-year-old wasn't meant to think about his future in that way, give him another eight to ten years and maybe he'd be ready for that responsibility, but no, he had to make the choice now. He knew that the third wouldn't force this on him, it was his choice after all, but given the way things were, it really was the only choice. The third watched the two mentally go through all of what he had said and weigh their options, it was kind of cute how Naruto had such a serious expression on his face, given his age he couldn't hold a serious face without looking completely ridiculous and adorable at the same time, but the third knew the boy was genuinely thinking things through. Just like his father, so considerate of others. It made the old man proud that Naruto had turned out so much like his father. 
though he did have a bit too much of his mother in him for his own good. And the safety and sanity of the village for that matter. He turned to Anko who had a more interesting expression, somewhere between apprehension and resigned acceptance. Well, at least she's considering it. He thought. After a few moments he noticed both of them were staring right at him with resolve in both of their eyes. Have you decided? He asked at length. Naruto was the first to speak here Gramps he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly I'll go with it, but only if Anchin wants to as well. Anko's eyebrow and mouth twitched at the pet name as she dropped her head yeah as she sighed, I gotta say that this is one of the better things that's happened to me in my life, if what you say is true, and I can actually get some recognition in my own damn village, then yeah I'll go along with this. Good, that makes things infinitely easier. The third sighed, rummaging through his desk the third pulled out several papers and placed them on the desk, these papers here need to be signed to recognize that you both are indeed married, one signed you will need a ringmate to seal the deal. Actually, hold on a moment the third dug deeper through his desk and pulled out a small shiny metal band with a little diamond in the center. Anko frowned at the ring, why the hell do you have one of those in your desk? A third sweat dropped well, I'm one of the few people in the village who does marriage services, aside from the fire monks and a few others in the village. Though people tend to come to me when they need to keep an engagement or marriage secret, also the amount of people who elope in this village is just silly, I get a couple in here once every other month or so, so I tend to keep at least a few of these things lying around just in case. The couple stared blankly at the old man as he placed a band on the table next to the papers. Well Naruto, will you do the honors? The third nodded towards the ring and gave the boy a pointed look. Naruto nodded dumbly as he grabbed the ring, gulping hard the boy climbed up into the chair to be level with Anko, the boy gulped once before kneeling on one knee, Anko raised an eyebrow at this, if it wasn't for the fact that the person kneeling in front of her was a seven year old, she'd have been flattered. As it stood though she was trying hard not to giggle at the ridiculous sight. Naruto gulped hard and tried asking the question Aankich. Chan the boy stuttered W. Will you marry me? The boy had seen people do this before, but doing it himself was an entirely different story. He felt we were doing it, uncomfortable even, like people were staring, though it was probably just Anko who looked to be on the verge of falling on her ass from laughter. Anko looked at her future husband and chuckled mentally, the brat's got guts I'll give him that she reached out her left hand sure brat, I'll marry you, but when the time comes I hope you can handle me, she winked at him with a devious little smirk. Naruto nodded solemnly I will Ankachin, I'll take responsibility and take care of you when we get married. The boy didn't realize exactly what he had just said. Or maybe he did and the adults in the room just took it the wrong way. Yeah, that. Anko couldn't take it anymore and fell to the floor laughing. The third had a perverted grin and a small trail of blood coming from his nose. Well he was asleep, but the wide grin on his face showed he was well aware of what his idiot container had just said. It wasn't that funny he huffed, yeah it was. Anko cackled from the floor, still laughing hard. Naruto frowned, he didn't like being laughed at like that'll show her he thought mischievously, a small devious grin spread across his face as the prankster in him welled up. Walking over to Anko, he slipped a ring on her finger, and in a bold move that shocked even Kaiubi of all things he leaned down and kissed Anko on the lips. The third choked on his pipe, Kaiubi's ears shot up, and his eyes flew open, Anko. Well she was frozen that cheeky bastard she thought in shock. But that devious murk still on his lips he chuckled thank you Ankachin, I'll take good care of you when we're married. Apparently Naruto wasn't as dumb as he looked. Anko and the third both turned bright red at the way the boy said good and Kaiubi burst out laughing in the corner ha 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 ha, if it's one thing I like about you boy, it's that devious nature of yours, got the blood of the kitsune and you no doubt about it. Naruto walked smugly back to his chair as he waited for the other humans in the room to compose themselves after that little stunt of his. Oi, you little brat. The snake mistress fumed as she got up off the floor and approached the boy with a menacing gleam in her eyes, cracking her knuckles loudly. The third turned away from the beating that was about to ensue, and judging from the sounds coming from behind him, he was wise to do so. The third turned back to see Naruto with a large anime style whelp on his head with a black eye to match. Ahem. Now that you've both kissed and made up he chuckled when the two yelled at him for that cheeky remark, it's down to business, sign the forms here, and make this marriage official the third handed them a pen. Anko signed it first, she gave the pen to Naruto who looked at the paper warily, is there something wrong Naruto? The third asked, concerned at what was stopping the boy. Um? Well, yes. I can't write. The adults and fox in the room fan vaulted. The third picked himself up off the floor, what do you mean you can't write? Didn't the caretakers in the orphanage teach you? He raised one eyebrow when the boy looked down, ashamed. No. They didn't, they really didn't teach me anything, I had to teach myself. At this both eyebrows rose, the boy had taught himself everything he knew, that alone filled the old man with anger, he would have a long talk with the orphanage staff after this was all over and done with. And by talk he meant torture and interrogation. Naruto, just sign with an X and stamp your thumbprint and blood that will be more than enough written proof. 
Naruto nodded, used a pen to cross an X next to Anko's name, then used a kunai letter opener to slice his thumb open. He dipped the other thumb in the small pool of blood, just enough to coat and pushed it onto the paper, leaving a thumbprint slightly smudged but clear enough to show a majority of the boy's fingerprint. The third looked over the paper for a moment before signing it himself as a witness well then, by the power vested in me by the fire daemon, the head monk of the fire temple and the good people of Kanoha, I now pronounce you husband and wife, you may kiss the bride. He motioned his hand suggestively with a grin on his face. Anko looked at Naruto who looked back at her well he's already kissed me once she rolled her eyes and leaned towards him. Naruto pulled himself together and leaned in as well, for a moment their lips met, surprisingly it was a rather long kiss. Naruto broke the kiss, pulling back you could see he had a slight blush on his face, Anko was in a similar state he's actually a good kisser she giggled to herself, I can't wait to see what he's like when he's older. Well then the third coughed a similar blush on his face and a tissue in his nose, I think it's time we break the news to the council, I'll call an emergency meeting now, you two wait here and get to know each other while I take care of things. The third stood up before walking out to his secretary, tonight's going to be a long night. Chapter 3. Screwing the council. After an hour of waiting in the third office, the third walked back inside to talk to the newly married couple, only to find them both sound asleep, Anko leaning back in the chair Naruto had been sitting in with Naruto comfortably curled up like a fox. In her lap. Naruto, Anko. The third spoke up, waking the two from their nap. Naruto fell off Anko with a curse, hitting the floor with a thump when she jumped out of her seat. Anko looked around quickly for a moment before she smiled sheepishly when she noticed the third looking at her with an eyebrow raised, perhaps I don't have to worry too much about them rubbing off on each other, after all the third chuckled to himself, amused at the pair's almost immediate bonding, if it was one thing that brought people together it was a shared loneliness that they could relate to. Are you alright Naruto? The third asked the boy, who was picking up what was left of his dignity after being unceremoniously dumped on the floor. Yeah Gigi, I'm alright the boy turned to say something to him when the third gasped. Naruto. What? The boy jumped back, startled by the third's raised voice. Your eyes the third pointed to a small mirror on the wall, the boy turned and nearly jumped out of his skin, his pupils were thin, his eyes were still sky blue, but his once round pupils were nothing but slits now. I told you you'd most likely start showing fox attributes, I'd keep an eye out for your tail and ears next Kaiubi spoke up from the corner. I didn't think it would start happening right now the boy groaned, his transformation was already starting, and it could only cause him more grief once the council saw him. Come on Naruto, Anko, we can worry about Naruto's fox parts later, the council is waiting for us, the third led the pair to the council room, once there he opened the door and motioned for the two to enter. It's good to see you all are here council members the third greeted them all. At to the point Saratobi a middle-aged merchant spoke up, we all know this has to do with a little brat over there, so what is it? Now now Kurakarasan, I think there's a lot more to this than that. The voice belonged to an elderly man who ran the local cloth shops around Kanoha, he was also one of the more high-level heads of the civilian council. Kurakara glared at the old man for a moment before sighing go ahead then Hokage, very well, the aged cage nodded. The fact of the matter is that this meeting is, to an extent, about the young Yuzumaki over there he motioned to the boy in the corner of the room. Roughly three to four hours ago Naruto was cornered by a mob of civilian villagers who, by witness accounts, tried to take the boy's life. There were several murmurs among the men and women at the table at this. I am sad to announce that those individuals are no longer among the living there were cries of outrage at this. Did the boy kill them? A curious voice asked, everyone turned to the speaker, the pale-eyed head of the Hyuga clan, Hiyashi Hyuga. Yes. The third started quickly, but before the rising voices could get louder. However. He said with a harsh tone and the council wisely quieted the boy had reason to defend himself in this case, and while it still stands that he has killed, I believe a far more interesting event has occurred from this incident, namely the means by which young Naruto here killed those men, there was whispering through here and before the hokage continued. Due to the stress the boy was placed under, he inadvertently accessed his bloodline voices were raised, but again the third quieted them. I am not finished, as I was saying, the boy here unlocked his bloodline, which if any of you are wondering is Heimton, ice release, but that isn't all, again due to the stress the boy was under, it just so happens that the boy unknowingly tapped a bit of the Kyubi's chakra. He took a moment to let that sink in the boy is fully aware of what is inside of him, as he tapped into the fox's chakra at the same time, as his Heimton bloodline was active, but for reasons currently unknown, the chakra mixed in a negative way, creating a feedback which caused that explosion earlier today. What does this mean Hakajusama? A bored voice asked from the back, the voice belonged to the head of the Nara clan, Shikaku Nara. Well, I can't really explain without showing you, Naruto, come here a moment please he waved the boy forward, as Naruto got closer, he noticed a few looks of shock, as they noticed his slitted eyes and all but destroyed clothes, but he ignored the glares they shot him and approached the third. 
Here, channel chakra like you did before as he handed Naruto another piece of chakra paper. Naruto held the paper over the council table, and like before the paper split into four equal pieces, each being affected by a different element. Immediately shouting rang out. What is the meaning of this? An elderly voice asked, raising his voice to be heard over the others, and yet still sounding calm and collected. Anzo. Ever a pain in my ass. The third thought quietly before raising his voice, as you can see gentlemen, the boy not only has an elemental affinity to wind and water, the pair of elements that make up Heimton, but the other three elements as well. As for the meaning, well, that is the strange part, due to the boy's accident as we'll call it, the clashing chakra in the boy's system, rebounded and struck his chakra network, instantly vaporizing a good portion of it in the explosion. Impossible Hisashi interrupted no human can survive their network being damaged that badly. He should know, the Hyuga were experts on fucking with the chakra network to kill people. Exactly Hiyashisama, no human. This boy, while well he is indeed human, has a body that does not follow the same rules in regards to healing, I will admit this now, but both I and Naruto here have had a lengthy discussion with Kaiubi himself on this matter earlier. A small yip from behind the third drew everyone's attention, the third moved out of the way to reveal Kaiubi in all his short fuzzy glory. Subhumans. The fox hailed them. Shouts of the demons escaped. And monster. Among other things rang out in the chamber. Well fuck you too. The fox huffed and walked over to Naruto to collapse in a poofy ball at his feet. A third sighed and waved a dismissive hand at the council do not worry, the seal still holds. That form the fox is taking is just a bunch and body that it uses to communicate. The council whispered a moment over the fox until the third coughed to get their attention again. From what the fox explained to me, what has happened to Naruto here is what's known to demon and summon kind as elemental convergence, strictly speaking the converging of elements on an elementally neutral chakra network. During the time while Kaiubi was healing Naruto here the boy was able to draw in large amounts of elemental chakra from his surroundings, which just happened to be the forest of death of all places. Many in the room paled at the mention of the forest, even the experienced Jonin in the room were uncomfortable with the place. As you all know the forest of death is anything but normal, so anything the boy absorbed was most likely amplified by his chaotic surroundings, which leads us to the boy's current condition. As it stands the Kaiubi has told me that the boy at the very least now has access to every one of the base elements, with the possibility of the boy forming multiple elemental bloodlines likely. So any ideas you may have had of getting rid of the boy now would be nothing short of idiotic. The third glared at a few of the civilian council, who had been giving the boy, and by extension the fox at his feet, an evil look for a while now. If that is the case Iritobi then why do we not have the boy produce offspring that would take full advantage of his possible bloodlines? Danzo asked curiously. That Danzo has already been taken care of the third glared at the man, how dare he even suggest doing that to a child, it was disgusting. Anko. Saratobi motioned for her to approach. You all know Anko Midarashi here, correct? Many at the table nodded though not many hid their open distaste for the woman. Anko here is the one who found the boy and brought him to me. After a brief discussion on the matter which I personally brought up, she has offered to take care of the boy. Several voices of dissent were clear. Silence. I am not finished. Hirard Anko agreed to take care of the boy, but that alone would not allow her to do so, since he is legally an adult. As many of you on the council are aware, he gave each of them heated looks. He had made Naruto an adult only a week earlier to try and protect him when he had learned the orphanage had kicked the boy out. He couldn't take care of him himself due to the council's meddling, but the third had bought and was sustaining a small apartment for the child, and since he was an adult, he could legally have his name on the deed. Had he known where the boy was he would have immediately taken him there, but Naruto had a bad habit of hiding from people. Given his life though that's to be expected. If only he wasn't so damn good at hiding. It had gotten to a point where even his crystal ball could not find him at times. A third side, this wasn't going to be taken very well. Since the boy is legally an adult, clan head and last of his clan, he has made it clear to me that he did not want to be subject to the Clan Restoration Act, without his say in who he takes as a wife, I discussed his options with him, and we came to an agreement. As of this moment Anko Midarashi is now Anko Yuzumaki, the two of them are husband and wife. To the third surprise there was complete and utter silence, he looked at the council members in the room. There was shock, horror and rage, to name a few of the emotions on the faces of his council. Before anyone could speak, the third continued both of them agreed to this, I have the documentation showing as such, and if you want a second opinion, I'm more than willing to let Inoichison look through my memories to show that both signed the document of their own free will. Also, Naruto has made it clear that since he is now married, he is no longer subject to a council-ordered marriage or conception of a child, so long as he is married and has at least one child by the age of 16. Any other woman he takes as a wife under the CRA is entirely his choice. Do I make myself clear? The third's voice may have been controlled and even, but the threat was as clear as day to everyone in the room. 
many of the civilian council who would have pressed for the boy's death, expulsion or forced a marriage given his new possible bloodlines, nodded in agreement, after all what could they do? The boy had clearly acted in self-defense when that mob attacked him, and even if they could press the issue they wouldn't, not with the potential for a whole new string of bloodlines that could come from the boy. To them he was now even more of a necessary evil. Anzo on the other hand was sitting quietly to the side of things, on the outside he was as calm and collected as ever, but on the inside he was seething, well played Siratobi, well played. You knew I would make a pass at the child, as I've pushed to weaponize him on several occasions, but this. I never expected you to convince a child to do something as foolish as this. Foolish, but given the circumstances genius as well Danzo sighed before glaring at the third and ever so slightly nodding his agreement, thinking to himself I know when I've been outplayed Siratobi, I'll back off. For now, the third noticed Danzo's reaction and let out a mental sigh of relief Danzo's backing down, good, that means I've won this round, none of the others would dare try anything if Danzo is staying out of it. The third looked at the rest of the council, sure enough none of them seemed keen on arguing. If there is anything else any of you would like to add please do so. The room was silent for almost a minute before the third sighed very well, this meeting is adjourned, dismissed. The council rose at the third word and walked silently out of the room, thinking about what they had just heard. That was fun, the fox yawned. Well this body is almost out of chakra, later monkeys a puff of smoke signified its departure. The third watched the fox go Naruto he spoke up startling the boy from his thoughts. The eyes Jiji. Naruto fidgeted slightly, his nerves were shot to hell watching the council debate his fate, he couldn't describe the feeling when he realized he wouldn't end up a test subject or a breeding factory. I hope that you are happy with what has happened he said at length, his voice quivering slightly in sadness I know I can never apologize enough for not being able to take care of you, had I the chance I'd have adopted you immediately, but sadly I was never able to convince the council of my intentions, they saw you as a threat and in my weakness I never confronted that decision and for that I am deeply sorry. It's okay old man, I may have been alone, but I never really felt alone when I knew you cared about me, that and the Ichirakus were a big help too the boy let out an ear to ear smile. I bet they were, the third chuckled. Don't worry so much the boy sighed, I have people who care about me, and that's all I could ever really ask for in life. And besides, I'm technically not alone anymore, am I Anchin? The boy sent a sly smirk at Enko, who was a few feet away. The girl in question blushed slightly that little bastard she thought an embarrassment I mess getting him back for that. Yes I do believe you're right Naruto the third laughed. Though even if you have found someone to stay with, you'll need some decent clothes, after all, we can't have you walking around a beautiful lady in nothing but torn rags. The third nodded to the boy's clothing which had all but been forgotten. Anko can take you to the wolf claw weapon shop tomorrow, an old friend of mine is the owner, I'll have him put it on my tab. Thanks old man. Naruto hugged him tightly. No problem Naruto he chuckled, hugging the boy back, I think it's time for both of you to head home. Anko. Anko walked up behind Naruto and placed a hand on his shoulder yes sir. Come Gaki. It's nappy time and I need my beauty sleep. Naruto snorted at that before the two of them disappeared in a shunshin. The third sat in the council chambers for several moments, wondering just what the future held for Naruto, before he too disappeared in a swirl of leaves. I'll never get used to that Naruto choked when the two appeared on the edge of a fenced in forest. You just need to build up your strength, your body can't handle the changes in speed yet, that comes with growing up and getting stronger. Anko rubbed her hand through his hair ruffling the blonde mop and making it spicier than ever. Where are we anyway? Naruto looked around at the forest curiously. Anko smirked, back at the forest of death. Naruto looked confused what the hell are we doing here for? Well considering I live here. She trailed off a grin plastered on her face. Naruto's eyes went wide wait, you live here. Ilti. Raising her hand up in front of her in a joking gesture. Ugh, any other surprises I should know about? He raised his brow questioningly. Well. She trailed off I have a fetish for blood, my favorite color is purple, my favorite food is dango. You take my dango you die, and I have a tattoo of a python on my ass. She ticked each thing off on her fingers. Naruto slapped a hand to his face and groaned. I didn't mean that literally. I'm a very blunt person. She smirked. I can see that. Naruto deadpanned. He sighed fine let's just get to wherever in this crazy forest we're going, okie dokie. She picked the boy up and chucked him over her shoulder, with a leap at breakneck speed she jumped into the woods. With him screaming bloody murder all the way. An hour later roughly ten of them prying Naruto's fingers from her arm, they were standing in front of the tower in the center of the forest. Home sweet home. Anko nodded proudly. As a flash of lightning and evil laughter came from nowhere. What the fuck was that? Naruto yelled. Oh you know just the natural ambience. She smiled evilly. Wonderful. He sighed entering the building, as he entered he noticed that the place on the inside, for the lack of a better term, was fucking huge. Wow. 
he took off running, passing by at least a dozen doors before he made it to the arena area that was used for the exams, this place is awesome. He yelled out. I knew you'd like it, it's pretty big, so you really don't have to worry about anybody invading your privacy here, that is until the exams and this place is filled with wannabes for a few days, but that's why my room is at the top of the tower, no one really bothers with going that far up, just to find a room to stay when there are so many on the ground floor. She grabbed his hand and took him on a tour of the place, pointing out the large cafeteria and all the bathrooms in the building. The shower area was large too, looking like a gym shower, but that was to be expected in a place like this. Level by level they went up until they were near the roof of the building here's our room. She smirked, pointing to a large wooden door covered in seals. Any reason why that door is booby trapped to all hell? Naruto asked sarcastically. I like my privacy during the exams. Was all she said before walking to the door and channeling chakra into the seal in the middle, instantly a distinct click was heard and the door swung inward. Welcome to the bird's eye view suite. She laughed, waving her arms in an overly dramatic way. It's one of the two ways to the roof of the tower, and this one has a personal balcony to look over the forest with. And yes, I booby-trapped the balcony too. Naruto sweat dropped paranoid much. Anko ignored that well since it's already well past the ass crack of midnight, I think it's time to sleep. I'll finally have a use for that other bed now. She trailed off for a moment before noticing Naruto's state of clothing ah, I forgot about that, strip real quick I'll get you something to wear. As she walked to her wardrobe back turned to Naruto, who rather reluctantly stripped down to his underwear in front of his bride. Ah me this is awkward the boy thought to himself. Ah here we are she pulled out an old long grey shirt and tossed it to the embarrassed boy, who put it on quickly, only to find the thing was many, many sizes too big for him, hell it looked like a full length dress on him. Well, that's irritating. Don't worry about it, do you have a kunai, some rope and a needle and thread? Anko nodded and brought him the things he needed. Naruto immediately got to work, taking the shirt off he cut the thing out about the midway point, after that he took the bottom part and cut the lower two thirds in a V shape, taking the needle and thread he began sewing either side of the V. The speed at which he was doing this caused Anko's eyebrow to raise. You're pretty good at sewing gaki. Not stopping, Naruto grunted well, you tend to learn things that make life easier when no one will help you. There was clearly pain in his voice, he had only been out on the streets for about a month before all this shit happened, but really the streets were a better place than that orphanage ever was, at least on the streets, there are plenty of places to hide from the people after you. Not like that helped much really. Enko frowned. Look kid, I don't pretend to know what your life was like, I lived it. You don't have to keep up this mask of indifference around me, I won't turn a blind eye to you, just because you have some giant fireball inside you, and to be honest, you're not the only one having to bear a seal and bad memories. Naruto jerked his head towards her. Anko nodded and pulled her coat off of her neck, revealing a small black tattoo on her shoulder. The curse mark, she said slowly. A seal developed by my previous master Rajimaru, he gave this to me when he defected the village, as a memento of our relationship. It gives him power over me, to cause me pain whenever he wants, and the thing throbs constantly, I'm lucky most of its potency is sealed away by another seal, but that doesn't stop it from hurting me, or from other people thinking I'll turn on them at any moment, controlled by some snake bastard. Naruto's face was blank for a moment as he looked at Anko's face, there was genuine sadness there and a bitterness he'd only ever seen in himself. Naruto sighed, it was times like these that made him feel older than he was. A seven-year-old acting like someone triple his age. He dropped what he was working on and walked over to Anko, without saying a word he pulled her into a hug. Anko's eyes widened a little, after a few moments a small smile crossed her face as she hugged him back, it's pretty sad when a woman gets comforted by a child, or for that same child, you are the one who understands her pain the most. She chuckled bitterly, I know Anchin, I know how it feels. To be alone. But we aren't alone anymore are we? Eh, I guess not. She smirked as she tousled his hair again. They sat there for what seemed like hours together just holding each other, letting the other's feelings show through, if only a little bit. Finally they separated, knowing that truly they were no longer alone. Naruto turned back to the cloth he was working on putting the finishing touches to it. When he held them up until she snorted in amusement, he had turned the cut off bottom of the shirt into a baggy pair of pants, complete with a rope belt, the top half of the shirt he sewed along the bottom to make a clean edge. All in all it turned out to be a nice set of clothes for him, at least until he could buy some ninja clothing. Not bad, not bad at all. She appraised him. Like I said, knowing how to make things in life easier is a damn good skill. He flashed her a wide smile which she laughed at before they both went to bed for the night, knowing that tomorrow would be a new day. For the both of them. Meanwhile in an undisclosed location. A pissed off Danzo brooded. And brooded. You will rue the day you crossed me here isn't. Danzo yelled out to no one in particular. Chapter 4. Shopping with the Snake Mistress. Naruto awoke to a peaceful morning in the forest of death, the sounds of birds chirping could be heard all around the tower. 
Yawning to himself, Naruto dragged his ass out of bed scratching said ass as he made his way to the bathroom. He opened the door with his foot as he yawned again, not even paying attention to his surroundings as he made his way to the toilet. Once there he was preparing to take care of business when a cough interrupted him, he turned towards the sound tiredly not expecting a naked Anko to be standing five feet from him with a towel draped over her shoulder. Naruto stared for a moment, too tired to understand the world of shit he was in right now, then slowly his eyes widened as it dawned on him that he was about to take a piss in front of a fully nude Anko, and she was giving him a look that spelled certain death. Um. Sorry. He began. Anko shook her head no. Um. Oh we. She nodded e up he squeaked as the sound of a fist connecting with an overly hard head echoed through the tower. What have we learned? Anko asked, rubbing her hurting fist. What? The brat had a hard head. Naruto wept and I'm tears as a large whelp rose on his head knock first before entering. Eh? Close enough. She shrugged, still not covered in the least which Naruto noticed. Um, if the purpose of hitting me was to punish me for seeing you naked. Why are you still naked? Anko deadpanned. Three reasons. One. I'm not the most modest of people, you only have to look as far as my clothing to see that. 2. We're married so this really shouldn't surprise you, if it does, use this chance to get used to it. As she opened the shower curtain to the bath showing a tub large enough for the both of them to bathe together. And 3. I didn't hit you because you caught me naked, I hit you because you just walked in without making sure I wasn't in here, and also because you were staring at my tits the entire time. Naruto blushed, he had been staring a bit south of her face since he walked in, it's not like he could help it though, he was still a guy after all, and not only that it was the first time he had seen a woman's bare breasts before. Are you getting in or what? Anko asked as she leaned back in the tub. Uh, yeah. He turned back to the toilet and finished peeing trying to ignore Anko staring at him intently. Big for his age, good she silently appraised him. Maybe he could. No bad Anko, no pedo thoughts. She mentally slapped herself as Naruto sunk into the water with her, blushing madly as he sat in front of her. I'll wash your back for you she smiled, lathering up a bar of soap and scrubbing the boy down. His skin was smooth to the touch, not a mark or blemish on him, but that probably had more to do with the fox than anything the boy did. As she was beginning to lather up some shampoo, she noticed a pair of odd pointy things sticking out of the boy's head, reaching out, and she grabbed a hold of them, and immediately Naruto melted in her grasp. She blinked a couple of times, then looked over Naruto's shoulder at his face and noticed his face was bright red, flushed and was really, really relaxed. She looked at the points on Naruto's head for a few seconds, then started massaging the tufts of hair lightly making the boy shiver in her grasp. A wide grin escaped her as she continued her massage so cute. She giggled, the fireball was right, you already have fox ears coming in, I'd say a few more days, and you'll have a full-grown set to charm the ladies with. Oh joy. He said sarcastically, shivering some more as she hadn't stopped stroking his ears. Kami was sensitive. Oh don't be like that, if you're so worried about someone seeing them I'll teach you the chance to hide what you look like until we can get you a hat to cover them, and if your tail ever comes in we can figure something out as well. She poked the back of his head hard for a few seconds to get her point across. Naruto sighed alright as they both enjoyed the bath. In the Hukage's office. We find Saratobi passed out in a pool of his own blood, the red fluid pouring heavily from his nose. Note to self, do not check on Naruto with the crystal ball in the morning. Not good for my health. The third thought before darkness took him. Back with our odd couple we find them walking down the main streets of Kanoha, with the aroma of the market district filling the air. Anko was dressed in her usual while Naruto beside her was in his makeshift clothing with a loose grey hat on that he had thrown together from a belt and some old cloth. Honestly it looked like a cross between a chef's hat and a beret to him, but Anko thought it looked stylish with the rest of the clothes, so he begrudgingly wore the thing, rather than try and fool a village full of ninja with a half-assed hench. Anko looked down at her young husband and noticed his rigid posture, don't be so tense kid, as long as you keep that hat on and don't look anyone in the eyes they won't know the difference, and if someone starts shit I'm here with you. Some comfort at least the boy retorted. Anko sighed, the kid was being difficult again, it wasn't that he didn't understand that they could count on each other now, it was the fact that the constant glares the villagers were throwing at him were breaking the boy's resolve. Every other villager they passed gave the boy at the very least a look of disgust or anger, hell she never had it this bad, no wonder the kid was so depressed. At least I can discourage a few of the glares now she sighed again, tossing out a small bit of killing intent at a few civilians that were giving him dirty looks, more than a few paled and turned away, which for some odd reason gave her a sick sense of satisfaction, is it because I'm protecting Naruto? She wondered. A, it's keeping me off the boy. As she noticed his more relaxed posture. You don't have to do that Anchin, the boy said quietly. Did, these people aren't worth your time of day. She frowned the old man told me that your dream is to be recognized as a great ninja and become Hokage. 
I can tell you now just being won't get you recognition from everyone, there will still be people like this that will glare at you because they are fools and don't know any better. Also, the Hokage is a military leader, that means he is appointed by his military, his ninja. Not the civilians. If you really want to get some recognition, show the ninjas who you are first and the civilians will follow. The boy froze at what Anko had said, really. He thought to himself, he turned to Anko with a small smile on his face. Thank you Anchin, anytime Gaki. The walk to the Wolf Claw weapon shop from there was in a deep but comfortable silence. Welcome. A cheerful voice greeted them as they entered the shop, can I help you with anything? The man behind the counter asked. He looked to be a middle-aged man with graying hair and a cheerful face, if anything he reminded Naruto of old man Ichiraku. Hey Dustin, Anko said. We're here for some threads. Eh, same as always Anko. He scratched his beard and thought. Yeah I heard from Saratobi you were coming by, said you needed some supplies and a new wardrobe for the run here, though I gotta say when he said your clothes were a mess I imagined them to be more. Well in pieces, what you have on now doesn't look half bad. The FFT uh, the kid here made em from some cloth, an old shirt, a belt and some rope, the little guy is pretty damn good. She ruffled said kids here playfully. I'll say, that's pretty professional work right there, it almost looks store-bought, except for the few seams that are visible. I wouldn't mind having him around the shop fixing a few of the special orders I get. I'll keep that in mind if he ever needs a job. Yeah Dustin chuckled, but on to business, what's on the kid's to-do list? I'll help you find anything you want, Saratobi said to put it on his tab, so you can get just about anything you want. Well, we need some scrolls on elemental manipulation, one for each element. Ah, I see the rumors are true after all Dustin interrupted her word is the kid's got all the elements under his belt, am I right? The Inko whispered, but keep that under your hat, I'd like for those rumors to stay rumors for as long as possible, no need to make things harder on him. You don't even need to ask, I'm a good friend of Saratobi's, I wouldn't be unless he and I shared views on things, and Naruto is one of the things we see eye to eye on, you're straight with me, as long as you don't stiff the bill. Anko chuckled he as pragmatic as ever I guess, well as I was saying, we need scrolls on elemental manipulation, just the basics for now, since I've really only ever covered earth manipulation. Dustin nodded, he'll also need some kunai and shuriken, preferably the practice kind if you have them, I don't need him cutting anything off before I can get to it. She raised an eyebrow in his general direction, and Naruto could only chuckle nervously. Odd I see the other rumor is true too Dustin remarked dryly. Under the hat old man, or it won't be the boy that loses something to a kunai. She growled. Easy, easy. He held his hands in front of him defensively. I have a few sets of practice shuriken and kunai in stock, anything else? Yeah she punted Naruto in the rear towards the clothing section. Go fetch Gaki, I'm not a dog. Naruto grumbled. No, you're a little fox, now get, before I do that thing I did to you this morning again. She flashed him a hungry little grin, Naruto paled visibly, and took off into the rows of clothing. Dustin turned to Anko do I even want to know? He deadpanned, nope. A few minutes passed before Naruto came back, the two adults in the room turned and their eyebrows rose, Naruto apparently had good taste in clothing. He had somehow found a mesh armor undershirt his size along with a black shirt on top, with the mesh coming out a few inches under the arms, his shorts were black as well, and had orange stripes running down the seams on the side, a pair of fingerless black gloves were on each hand, and a pair of black ninja sandals on his feet. The gray hat still sat loosely on his head though since there was nothing really loose to cover his ears, he just had to settle for grabbing a roll of black cloth and another belt to make a black one later. For accessories he had a kunai holster strapped to his leg, a ninja pouch on his waist, and on his back was a small tanto, which looked more like a full-length blade on the small boy. Wow they both sat at the same time. Not bad Gaki. That's a nice look, but what's with the sword? The snake mistress pointed to the blade curiously. I don't really know, I just liked it, I never really had any weapons to practice with, and this is something my size. Dustin rubbed his chin thoughtfully makes sense, if the kid is going to get used to a sword or blade, it's good to start small and work your way up. Alright I guess, but you can only practice with it while I'm around. I don't want you cutting yourself with it. Naruto nodded. Dustin marked a few things down on a piece of paper. Okay, you have the scrolls, the training tools and some new clothing and weapons, anything else. Naruto thought for a moment before something caught his interest. Hey old man, could we talk over there for a second? Alone? He looked out of the corner of his eye at a frowning Anko. Uh, yeah, sure kid. The two walked to the back of the store for a few minutes, Anko watching the discussion silently, the boy was whispering in the man's ear, so she really couldn't make out what he was saying, but by the way Dustin pulled back surprised and looked in her direction. It couldn't be anything good. The two of them walked back to the counter, yeah kid I'll get what you wanted, but are you sure? That's a bit advanced for you right now. Yeah I'm sure. 
he nodded. Okay, one moment he walked to the back and opened his storeroom door. After a few minutes of rustling papers and clanging of metal the man returned with a scroll in his hand. Everything is in this storage scroll, just send chakra into it and the materials will pop out to store stuff just do the same. As he handed the scroll to the boy. Thanks old man. Heifer a friend of Saratobi, it's the least I could do. Dustin grinned at the boy it's all on his tab, so don't worry I'll send him the bill. Haha, <laughs> thanks he smiled back as the pair walked out of the store. Dustin's smile slowly turned somber as he watched the two walk away though the window. A small yawn from behind him turned the man around, looking around he noticed his daughter standing in the stairway to the living area. Who was that daddy? The girl asked, the buns in her hair bouncing as she yawned again. Just a friend, Tenton, the son of a good friend, a man who I respected greatly. His voice was quiet as Tenton nodded sleepily and walked into the kitchen. Minato. He whispered, your son is going to make one hell of a ninja, I just know it. Mind telling me what's in the scroll? Anko asked sweetly. A little too sweetly. Naruto looked warily at her no. He held the scroll behind him. An eyebrow rose why. It's a surprise. The boy stuck his tongue out at her and we're husband and wife now tell me what's in the scroll. She whispered angrily. No, he growled at her and turned away. Aki, just, hey. Get your ass back here. She yelled at him when she noticed he had started running away from her towards a nearby playground. Boy you brat, get back here. She chased after him. The chase lasted a good 10 minutes as they ran through the busy market district and Anko had to admit, the kid was fast for his age, hell he was almost as fast as a high-ranked genin and the way he weaved in and out of crowds of people baffled her. Heck catch me if you can. Naruto whispered to himself as he made his way to the playground. He took to jumping from stall to stall as his destination came into view, almost there he laughed. As he made a final leap to one of the slides, unfortunately for him he overshot it a bit and lost his footing shit he cursed as he lost his balance and fell over the edge. Yep. A voice from below cried as a loud thump sounded. Ouch Naruto rubbed his head as he leaned up on one arm. Where? He froze when he noticed a small girl in a similar situation next to him. Um. Hi. He rubbed the back of his head nervously, feeling that his hat had fallen off in the fall. Hello. The girl stuttered. Hello as well, the name's Naruto, and sorry for falling on ya, I'm kin to being chazzed by my anchin. The nod as she poked her fingers together nervously and woe is Ankin. Aki, get your ass out here now a voice screamed in the distance. Naruto sweat drop that would be her. I don't want you to get in trouble too so I'll sneak away, just keep quiet please. He turned away from her looking around nervously. Ah oh, no, Naruto-san. Yeah. He turned to her curiously. I is this your hat? She held up the thing in question. Uh, yeah. Thanks. He flashed her a smile that made the girl feel all fuzzy on the inside as he put the hat on his head. Thanks for the help, I kinda needed it. You know you're a nice person he flashed another smile that made her melt. Thank you. Hinata blushed. No problem, see ya he jumped over the fence that separates the playground from the road and ran off. There you are, you brat, come back here. A voice yelled in the distance. Naritasen. No. Naritaken. The girl thought to herself. He's. Nice, not like father, and those years on his head. The girl blushed again, she had peeked at the boy's head when he was looking around and said appendages had grown enough to be noticeable above his hair, so cute. Naruto shivered slightly, I suddenly feel threatened he shivered again with Anko not far behind him. Several hours later, top of the monument, sunset, damn it. Gaki Anko choked out, huffing in exhaustion. I told you already it was a secret. The boy stuck his tongue out at her with his back to the edge, apparently the chase had made its way through most of the village and ended on top of the Hokage monument, coincidentally on the head of the Yondame. Alright already Anko gasped it's a secret, now get your happy ass over here away from the edge. Naruto looked at her for a moment defensively, relaxing slightly when Anko backed off, would you promise not to take the scroll? Yeah I promise, now hurry up. Naruto slowly made his way towards her, keeping the scroll tied in his fist. Hurry up damn it. She growled. Naruto approached her warily keeping an eye on her hands, when she flashed behind him, his eyes flew wide as a fist connected with the back of his head. Two minutes later, okay I deserve that one Naruto thought, weeping and I'm tears. What have we learned? Again. Don't piss you off. He rubbed the large knot on his head comically. Close enough. She picked him up by the back of his shirt and brought him to eye level, scare me like that again, and I'll have my snakes tie you up for the day, and you won't do jack shit, understand? Yes Ankison, he nodded quickly. Good, I'll respect your privacy for that damn scroll, but let's get some dango, chazzing you made me hungry. Wait, Anchin. The boy grabbed her coat. What is Gaki? She turned around and crouched low, hearing the pleading in the boy's voice. I'm sorry about scaring you, I didn't just run away to get away from you, I kinda wanted to show you my special place. His voice trailed off as he nervously looked away. Anko turned beet red for a moment thinking he meant. 
well, something dirty, but the boy turned away from her and pointed towards the western wall of the village. Anko looked and her voice caught in her throat, in front of her was a view she had never seen before. The entire village was bathed in a crimson sunset, it was. Too beautiful to even say anything, she only knelt close to Naruto and enveloped him in a hug from behind, neither one said anything, they just sat there and watched the sunset, turning the world from red to orange, orange to purple, and finally ending in a deep ocean blue that gave way to the first stars of the night. Anko was silent for a long time after that, still holding on to the boy for dear life. Finally her voice, nothing but a whisper, broke the silence Naruto. Yeah? He whispered back. Thank you she squeezed him tighter. A few minutes passed before Naruto spoke. Ah Anko? Yeah? I can't. Breathe. Ah. She replied blankly, releasing the boy, who was turning an unhealthy shade of blue. Sorry. Naruto gasped as she let him go don't. Worry. About it. Alright Gaki, let's get going, I worked up an appetite chasing your ass around, after we get some food we're going home. Okay Anchin. He grabbed a hold of the woman's arm, and the two of them walked to the nearest dango shop. Suggested by Anko. Via sharp pointy hurdy things. Chapter 5 Impractical Training and School Days Outside Training Ground 44's Tower, two weeks later, it's been two weeks since the accident. With the help of a gag order from Saratobi, most of what happened to Naruto was reduced to a rumor. The Ichiha massacre that happened only a few days after that drew even more attention away from him, with the entire village focused on the tragedy, it kept Naruto out of the public eye long enough for most people to forget about the incident. In that time Naruto's fox ears grew out to full size, his tail was the next thing to come in, the fluffy appendage was currently sticking out the back of a pair of casual clothes he had stitched together from another large shirt Anko had given him, the bagginess of the pants was more comfortable on his rear, since the tail was still a little tender, he still shuddered when he thought back on Anko's reaction to it. Woo, the pain, too squishy he shivered unconsciously. Sadly our young hero suffered firsthand from the combined effects of marshmallow hell and an overly zealous glumping, Kami helped him if any other women got a hold of him. Hell he was still massaging the kinks out of his tail, though it was weird having a tail to begin with, his sense of balance was thrown off, but at the same time felt more balanced overall. He also felt stronger, and his senses were increasing as well. If things kept going the way they were going he might even consider this a blessing rather than a curse. Oigaki? Anko called from the entrance to the tower, breaking the boy from his musing, he turned to her curiously yeah Anchin. I think it's time I start training you, you've had a week to get used to your new animal parts, and I think it's time we bust ass and start your ninja training. His face lit up yeah, it's getting boring just sitting around doing nothing. I'm ready for anything you can throw at me hopping around a couple times and doing a few punches and kicks to prove his point. Actually, first I want to know something. The blonde stopped and looked at her what? You know what you used when we talked to Kayubi. He thought for a moment oh, you mean the Kaiubi shadow clone. Yeah that one, do you know the parent the shadow clone jutsu? He nodded yeah, that was the first thing Kaiubi taught me so I could use the Kaiubi clone. Why? Well, now things get a lot easier, do you know the special ability of shadow clones Gaki? No, why? He scratched his head and thought. Try and make as many as you can and I'll show you. Okay he shrugged, gathering a large amount of chakra shadow clone jutsu. A giant puff of smoke filled the clearing, when the smoke cleared there were easily more than 200 clones around Anko. Anko's eyes widened as she noticed all the clones the fuck. She yelled, literally falling on her ass in surprise. Naruto looked around confused, what? Did I not make enough? Not enough, are you insane? Anko's thoughts were whirling how the hell can he make so many shadow clones? For fuck's sake, I've never seen anyone make this many. Wait, if he can make this many. My god. The third was right the brat could be a prodigy in the making, screw the bloodlines and the elements, just being able to do this is a gift itself. Um. Anchin, are you alright? His voice was filled with concern. The Aya, just find the shock was finally beginning to wear off, just the thought of what he could do with this many clones, made her adrenaline rise. All the possibilities. All the. No bad Anko. No gangbang jutsus. She slapped herself and stood up quickly, Naruto, don't worry, if anything this should be impossible to do, just the fact you are doing it is amazing. He tilted his head so what now? Now I will show you a neat trick that shadow clones can do, shadow clone jutsu. She yelled out, a single clone forming beside her. Have one of your clones follow me, Gaki. As the clone walked off into the woods. You heard her. One of the clones broke off from the rest and followed Anko's clone deep into the woods. After a few minutes of walking, Naruto's clone turned to Anko's clone now WH. The clone started to ask, but before the clone could even react Anko's clone had stabbed it with a kunai, dispelling it. A second later Anko's clone dispelled as well. Back with the original, boy. Would you kill my clone? Naruto growled. She grinned ah, but how did you know I killed it? What do you mean you just? 
The boy frowned in confusion before a small smirk slowly crossed his face. Anything a clone experiences gets sent back to the original when it's dispelled doesn't it? Got it in one gaki. She laughed from now until you join the academy next year, you are going to be training with shadow clones, by the time you make Jen and I'll have your acid level. She flashed him an evil grin which sent a chill up his spine. This wasn't going to be pleasant, he just knew. Alright, first off, we aren't going to be learning anything new, I'm telling you that now. What we're going to cover till you start the academy is chakra control and nature transformation. She walked over to a nearby tree and yanked a leaf off one of its limbs. First, is chakra control exercises, as she placed the leaf on her forehead and channeled chakra into it to float it above her head, much to Naruto's amazement. The objective of this first exercise is basic control, keep the leaf floating over your head with chakra for as long as you can, it's not power you're after, it's control. Since there's around 200 clones here we'll have 100 working on chakra control, and 20 each working on a separate element. She grabbed the five elemental scrolls from her pouch and tossed them to one of the clones get to work, she then pointed to the original, you're coming with me. She was about to walk away when something stopped her oh. She yelled at the mass of clones hey, if you need to dispel, don't do it all at once or you'll give the original a bitch of a headache. She turned away from the mass of clones, come on, let's go the two of them walk to another clearing on the other side of the tower. So what are we doing over here? He asked curiously, simple, since shadow clones can only send back mental information, physical abilities need to be worked on by the original, sure you can work on your reflexes and instinct, but things like muscle memory and increasing your body's strength, speed, stamina and flexibility is all down to you. He raised an eyebrow so we're exercising. She smirked something like that an evil chuckle escaped her lips as she explained her training all the while Naruto turned paler and paler. Are you fucking insane? Finally finding the words to express himself. Maybe she laughed. But that doesn't change the fact that you're going to do it. Naruto sighed, the sooner he got this over with, the sooner he could rest. Kami, it was going to be a long day. 200 push-ups, sit-ups, kicks, punches and squats all before lunch, and then I have to spare with her. Ugh this is going to hurt. But the clones, okay, let's see here. Nature transformation, the basics the clones scanned each of the scrolls intently. Channel chakra into the object and imagine that element's properties in that object. For fire, superheat your chakra and imagine burning the object. For wind, split your chakra in half and grind it to a fine edge to cut the object. For lightning, aggravate your chakra and the object to create a static charge. For earth, harden your chakra around the object and grind against it. For water, use your chakra to gather the moisture in the air and soak the object. Seems pretty straightforward the clone grabbed a leaf and held it up high, alright mees, it's time to get to work. The clone pumped its fist before it dispelled itself and sent the info through the ranks. Okage's office, so it begins eh? An image of Naruto flashed through the crystal ball head, just seeing that many clones makes me feel old, Sirotobi chuckled to himself. I see great things in your future Naruto. Your father passed his will on to you while your mother passed on her love, remember both their sacrifices Naruto, grow stronger from them, and show the world you aren't some demon, show them the real you, the you your parents would be proud of. He sat there for a long moment taking a drag off his pipe, the quiet of the room ringing in his ears. A third sighed as he exhaled the smoke from his lungs, good luck Naruto, knowing your father's luck you'll need it, a dry laugh filled the air as the third again sat in silence. Although knowing your mother's luck. A few hours later, back with the original Naruto, Ami kill me now. The boy mentally yelled, his arms were already like jelly, but Anko insisted he learn the basic katas to her tojutsu style so they could spar, he had learned the first and second katas though the use of shadow clones, but the woman wasn't letting up, she kept pressing him to learn the moves, and any time his stance was off she'd correct him. With sharp pointy things. Okay Gaki, you got the first three kata down for this style, those are the basics, and they're enough to get you through a light spar, so come on, get off your ass, and let's do this. She stood a few meters away from him in what she called the python stance, a stance based on defense and single heavy strikes, perfect to spar against without killing the kid. And we at least take a five minute break. I can't even feel my arms right now. With the bitching, can't feel your arms, can't feel the pain now attack me, or do I have to come to you? She rose an eyebrow at this, almost daring him to let her attack first. The hell I'd give you a reason to kick my ass. He charged forward in the standard viper stance, the most basic of the stances built on speed and quick successive strikes. As it stood the boy was decent in speed and could deliver fairly strong punches, even if the stance he was currently using was meant for cherry tapping. Ah. The boy yelled as he ran towards Anko, fist leading in a vicious punch. That's more like it. She blocked the strike with her palm, with a swift jerk she tossed the boy behind her, Naruto flew through the air a few feet before he righted himself in the air and landed on all fours, he dug his feet in and rushed her again, dodging from side to side, to try and throw Anko off. Not a bad kid. 
She laughed, dodging to the side to trip him and send him rolling into a tree in a heap. But not good either, you leave yourself too open when you charge. When you come in for a strike and you're ducking back and forth like that you need to keep inside of your opponent's striking arm and make sure you can correct yourself if your opponent dodges. That was a good try though, now pick up your dignity and fight me. Crazy snake bitch Naruto grumbled under his breath as he got back into his stance and charged again, coming in for a low strike to the ankles, hoping to cripple his opponent somewhat to at least give him some advantage, it didn't help his self-esteem any that he was having to fight someone twice his size. Banko responded to the kick by hopping over it, bringing her foot up as she did so to catch Naruto under the chin, sending him flying back again. He rolled with it and got to his feet after sliding a good 15 feet. Tell me again, how kicking my ass is supposed to make me stronger? Naruto asked, rubbing his bruised jaw. It's training, deal with it. She stated flatly. Figures. He mumbled, getting back into position again, this time he was going to take it slower, just rushing in there wasn't doing anything. Oh, using a defensive stance. Well now, let's test it shall we? A wide grin crossed her face as she rushed him. Shit Naruto cursed. Bringing his arms in front of him and across to stop the kick aimed for his face, the blow knocked him back a few feet, he rolled to the side as a fist connected with the ground where he was a second before, he placed his hands on the ground and kicked out with his left foot, catching Anko on her lead shoulder, before tucking into a roll to dodge a kick she threw his way. Quickly getting to his feet he blocked a punch and sent it wide, getting in closer under her guard, he sent a punch into her stomach, before hopping back to get out of the grapple she was going for. Heh, that was a nice punch, Gaki. She coughed that actually hurt a little. You do know that this is hardly fair right? You're twice my height and weight, many times my experience, and I'm pretty sure you're just toying with me. And you think you won't fight people like that when you become a ninja. Anko deadpanned I Frodorachimaru snake summons and won in a tojutsu match, those bastards are bigger than a house, you think that bothered me at the time? Hell no. I did exactly what you are doing now, using your opponent's movements against them and striking when you have an opening. She smirked again and since you've hit me, you're clearly up to this level of speed. This. Level. A sinking feeling filled his stomach. Low genin speed test complete. She yelled exuberantly. High genin time. Fuck his words were cut off by a fist to the face. Three months later. Alright Gaki, take five. Anko yelled at him as the boy collapsed in a heap. He had spent the last three hours doing nothing but endurance training, which frankly surprised her. She'd thrown other Chunin through her personal gauntlet a few times in her career and handled it like a seasoned Jonin, the kid had stamina there wasn't any doubt about it. Maybe he could use that stamina for other things Kukukikirk bad Anko. She slapped herself no pedo thoughts. She looked out over the clearing to see her husband's clones at work. His chakra control and change in chakra nature training was going well, he'd gotten the leaf floating exercise after the first week of training, though even with his clones, it took a while since he was still a child and his control was abysmal at best. Even now, tree climbing was still a bit difficult for him to maintain. Of course she was also making him float leaves while climbing the trees to maximize the her training. As for the change in nature training he'd completed channeling all five elements into a leaf, he was struggling through the second part of the training though. It would most likely take him the rest of the year to finish the second step for each element. Banko's mouth cracked into a wicked smirk, plenty of time to get the kid's asking potential up to snuff the smirk spread out into a large ear-to-ear -ear grin. The academy teachers won't know what the hell hit them kooky kooky kirk. Seven months later, the loud yells of children and the shuffling of feet surrounded the pair as they made their way through the crowd towards the academy doors. All around them there were children of several different age groups, the largest of which was right in front of them, the fresh meat as the older students jokes. That first year would be the starting point where the dreams of many a genuine hopeful would follow. Eh, a lot of competition, Gaki. Think you can handle it. Naruto snorted in amusement please, after that hell you put me through. He shot her a small glare, you should feel sorry for them. He pointed to the group in question who all seemed like they would play being ninja, rather than just being ninja. The FFT haha, -ha, yeah I guess you're right as they walked into the academy, oh and remember what I told you? Naruto got into his best Anko impression, hold back just enough to make people think you're weaker than them, deception is a ninja's bread and butter, yada yada yada, yeah I know, I'll keep my skills to myself for now, but that doesn't mean I won't do stupid shit in class. You never did beat that out of me he chuckled at that last bit. Why would I beat the creativity out of you? Some of those pranks were pure gold, a small hint of shock filled her voice, though Naruto knew it was bullshit and she was fucking with him. One of the few things he couldn't stand about the woman, she hit her joke so well that sometimes you didn't know she was making fun of you. Yeah he chuckled after a few seconds. So any last minute advice. The buxom Kanoichi raised her hand to her chin thoughtfully, she seemed to honestly think about it for a good five seconds before reality and her merciless attitude reared its ugly head. 
yeah, don't let your mouth write checks your ass can't cash, try and make some friends and for the love of Kami, watch out for fangirls. Fangirls. Beads of sweat formed on Naruto's brow as the words sunk in, fuck that. I'd rather go toe to toe with Fuzzbit than meet one of those in a dark alley. The FFT hahaha ha Anko's merciless laughter filled the air. That's a good mindset, fangirls would tear you apart if they knew what kind of abilities you have at your fingertips, hell, if I want to jump your bones when you're older, just think what a group of preteen girls would do. Naruto grew several shades of white plus I heard the Ichiha brat that survived that clan massacre is in your class, heh, the boy has a fan club already, I'm surprised he's even alive right now with the way they're clawing at his door all the time. It took a moment before Naruto could recompose himself after that little mental torture, Anko put him through okay watch for fangirls he shivered again, try and make some friends, and don't pick needless fights, got it. Can I show off a little to put arrogant pricks in their place? She gave him a thumbs up yeah sure Gaki, you have my blessing to take the sticks out of people's asses when you feel the need to, so go in there and kick some ass. Naruto's hand snapped to his forehead as he went rigid in a salute mom, yes ma'am. He roared and ran off to his first class, ready to raise some hell. The door to the classroom slid open as the sounds of talking filled the air around Naruto. He looked around the room taking in each new face with interest. Out of everyone there, only a dozen or so even looked at him. Well then, start with the friendliest looking ones I guess. He readjusted all his clothing to make sure his foxy bits were hidden and walked over to a young boy who was munching away at a bag of chips like his life depended on it. Hello, name's Naruto Uzumaki Naruto reached out his hand in a shake. The boy looked at the offered hand for a moment before taking it in his. Doji Akamichi he smiled, teeth flashing with some food between them. Doji what have I said about swallowing your food before you talk? A bored voice droned from his side, Naruto turned to look at the boy next to him, laid back, bored, pineapple hairdo. Hey this guy looks interesting here reached out his hand to the other kid Naruto Uzumaki, nice to meet you, Shikamaru Nara, same here returned the shake again in a bored tone. After Naruto found his CD scanned the room, the other few people who still seemed interested in him were some kid with glasses and a long coat, name was Shino or something like that. A girl he recognized as Hinata was sitting in the back of the room. And two women who seemed to be fronting over someone in the corner. Or in other words. Fangirls. Stay the fuck away mode. Activate. Yahoo. A voice yelled from the back of the room, the three boys turned to see a wild looking boy in a hoodie hopping up and down in joy. Boy, dog boy, keep it down. Naruto yelled at him, he had smelled a strong scent of a dog when he walked in thanks to his new fox-like nature, but he couldn't place where it was coming from, looking at the wild boy, now he could tell the smell was coming from him. The dog boy turned to Naruto with a scowl on his face, you wanna start something, huh? Heh, I don't start things dog breath, I finish them. He replied in a cold tone that sent shivers up the spines of several people in the room, oh I am so thanking Anko for teaching me that killing intent trick, the look on everyone's face is priceless. The dog boy paled a little bit and a bead of sweat formed on his brow, but other than that he was holding up rather well. The eye picking a fight. He stuttered slightly. Nah, only if you started, but I won't do anything unless you do something. I'm here to make friends and learn how to be a ninja, so what do you say? Friends. He reached his hand out for the third time that day and smiled a genuine smile. Dog boy's expression turned from scared to confused, his brow twitching nervously as his eyebrows knitted together. Sure he said at length names Kiba and Yuzuka. Naruto Uzumaki, and I gotta ask, why do you smell like a dog so much? I could understand maybe having a pet that has its scent on you, but that's not it, your entire body smells like it. Eh, you can smell that. You must have a pretty good nose. Yeah, my family is famous for our Ninkan Ninja dogs, you could say we're as a part of our partners as they are to us, that's sort of the reason I was yelling earlier. I just found out earlier today that I'll be getting my partner soon. His grin took up his entire face at that. Naruto looked a little freaked out at the boy's reaction to getting a dog. Yeah, okay. I can't really see myself with an animal partner but whatever, to each their own. If you don't like animal partners, why do you smell like a fox so much huh? Naruto was confused for a second before he palmed his face oh, that. Yeah that's just a part of my bloodline his eyes widened a bit, he hadn't meant to say that. Most of the people in the room who were barely listening before now we're eyeing the boy intently you have a bloodline. Shikamaru asked. What is it? Yeah. Um, it's kind of a first generation bloodline, so I'm the first person in the village to have it he laughed nervously. Shit I didn't want to have to use this lie yet. Oh well the container rubbed the back of his head as for what it is. Well. That's a bit of a long story. We have another 30 minutes or so before class starts. Kiba nudged him. Apparently he wasn't gonna let this go so, in no little frustration Naruto began his tale using the lies Anko concocted for him to make making friends a bit easier on him, that, and being able to show off his foxy attributes without worrying too much about being looked on as a monster. 
well it starts 8 years ago on October 10th the day of the Kyubi attack. And my birthday he said absently making a few in the room wide-eyed, during the fox attack the hospital I was in was crushed under one of the fox's tails, apparently I was the only one there at the time, so I don't know what happened to my parents, most assumed they had died in the attack, and I was put into an orphanage, well, it turns out that one of the Kyubi's tails came extremely close to me during all that, and a large portion of its chakra blanketed the area around me, now normally the fox's chakra would have killed any normal person exposed to it. Somehow, I survived and up until a year ago I was a regular looking person, normal, except for a few whisker marks on my cheeks. He pointed to the marks in question. But a year ago my bloodline activated, the fox's chakra had changed my body a bit and mutated it into a bloodline and well. Um. I might as well get this out of the way while I'm letting everything out. He closed his eyes for a moment before taking his hat off and pulling his tail out from his pants. Yeah I kinda got a few other gifts from that attack as well he laughed nervously. Now there were many things that Naruto was expecting, fear, hatred, anger, all of the above in most cases, but the looks on the kids' faces shocked him to his very core. They. They look amazed the boys of the class looked at him in awe while the girls. Oh Kami. They look. Hungry. They were eyeing his twitching ears and the way his tail flicked back and forth with a desire to glomp his foxiness. Naruto backed away quickly from the girls, which confused the boys in the room, that is until they looked at the girls and started snickering at Naruto who played visibly. Hey Chen. A voice grunted from the side. Naruto turned to the sound, to eye a boy sitting on the far side of class next to a window let's see. Black hair, black eyes, pretty emo attitude, yep. Definitely in a chair. The blonde was mildly annoyed by this, the bastard was ignoring him like he wasn't even worth his time. Oi, you got a problem with me? No, you're just a loser, that's all. He replied in an even voice. Almost all of the girls in the room swooned at his supposed coolness. Oh ho ho he did not just go there. Naruto seethed, teeth gritted in anger. His anger quickly cooled though as a smile touched his lips, hey if you think I'm such a loser kid, why don't you put your money where your mouth is, or are you afraid? The black haired boy jerked his head towards Naruto, a look of anger on his face. Watch what you say loser, I'm an Achea. The black haired boy growled at him, the FFT Achea, a clan who does nothing but steal the hard work of others, and they say their nobility ha more like a clan of thieves more like it. That was it, the Achea boy was out of his seat and raising a fist back to strike. Naruto just smiled and stepped to the side, tripping the boy like Hanko had done to him on his first day of training. The Ichiha had speed that's for sure, but after fighting the snake mistress for so long it felt like he was moving in slow motion. Sasu picked himself off the ground and glared at Naruto with a look of pure hatred on his face. Naruto just stared what? Was that it? Ha 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 ha, seriously dude you're pathetic. Another fist flew at the boy, but a quick grab caught the hand, and in a small movement Naruto had his leading leg between the Achihas, in a single jerking motion the boy was flipped over his back and laid out on the ground, knocking the air out of his lungs. Naruto stood over him and stared intently into his black eyes look, I'm here to make friends and learn how to be a better ninja, I will even consider you a friend and ally, if you do two simple things, that goes for the rest of you too, he snapped to the others in the room who flinched one, don't make fun of me or the memory of my family, he paused to let those words sink in a little bit and two, don't try to hurt those that I consider friends, you do that and we won't have a problem, if you don't. Well getting your ass handed to you is the least of your worries his cold tone sent chills down several people's spine. He held his hand out names Naruto Uzumaki. The Ichiha glared at the hand for a moment before grabbing it, Sasuke Ichiha he grunted as he was hauled to his feet. Nice to meet ya the blonde smiled, confusing everyone there, where had that cold hard look the boy had on earlier gone. It was like it never existed. Troublesome Shikamaru deadpan from the side. Okay class, today we're going to be learning how to throw kunai and shuriken. The instructor pointed to a wooden target 15 feet away. The stood before the target showed the class the correct method of handling both thrown weapons, with a quick flick the pieces of bladed death hurtled towards the wooden target, with a meaty thunk all of them hit home, a decent 7 out of 10 kill shots. The other three were not lethal, but had it been on a human target would have hobbled them. Now line up in front of the target and throw the 5 kunai and shuriken that are provided. The children rushed to get in line, Naruto found himself near the back of the line, thankfully he had his tail poked back down his pants and his cap back on, before the teachers could come back into the room and start something, now outside in the training area he could finally relax a bit. Hey Naruto. A voice whispered next to him. Um. He turned to the voice and noticed Shikamaru and Choji right behind him. Yeah what is it? He whispered back. Choji and I were wondering if you wanted to go out for a barbecue later today, our treat. Apparently the two took his I want to make friends speech to heart, damn they start quickly for being big and chronically lazy. Not that he was complaining any, sure, where are you going? He wanted to get a good idea on which restaurant they were going to, just to make sure it was a place he was at least tolerated. 
after Choji told him it was one of his parents' restaurants he calmed down a bit, it's not like they would stop him and his friends from eating at his own family restaurant just because of him. Right. Thankfully that wasn't the case as Choji's father was there at the barbecue place. Choza had been at the council meeting that night and knew the boy wasn't the fox, but its container, and when he and Naruto finally got to talk face to face it only cemented that fact that and when Naruto had spoken of his love for Raymond, Choza had a look on his face as if he'd found a long lost son. He let out a hearty laugh and told the chefs in the back to prepare a feast for his son and friends, needless to say the three academy students had to roll themselves out of the building when the meal was finished. They spent the rest of the day watching and just talking about things they found delicious. Or troublesome. Yo Kiba, keep the mud off me. Naruto groaned, scraping the Kiba's newly acquired companion off his shoe as Akamaru was gnawing bits of the straps off. Hey I can't help it if he's teething the boy tried to defend himself. Then get him a chew toy dammit. He growled, yanking the dog off his foot and chucking him at Kiba. And if he ever humps my leg I will neuter him. Naruto let out a little kai which made the few people around him sweat, Kiba on the other hand was bujied and nodding in agreement, strangely Akamaru was doing the same. Quiet down class. Naruto stops threatening Kiba. Shino and Naruto sat across from each other in the school library, Naruto had a book on tactics and theory, while had a book on the many different species of insect of the leaf village, hardback first edition if I am not mistaken. Shino. Naruto nodded to the boy. Naruto. He nodded back. The day naruto -san, he stood up and started to walk away. You too shino -san, he continued to read. Odd how he respects silence like that. Naruto was walking through the hall towards his next class, so far the academy was pretty awesome, though the teachers taught a bunch of boring stuff almost every day, only letting them out to do exercises and practice the basic three. He stopped when he noticed Hinata was nearby looking at him. Hey hinata He waved to the pale heiress, trying to be polite to the odd girl. Thump, Hinata. Why did you faint? Hinata. Alright class, today we're going to have sparring matches to test out the tajutsu forms you've learned so far, any form is allowed, but lethal moves and strikes are strictly forbidden. The instructor pointed out to Sasuke Sasuke you're up, now who's going to spar with him? None of the other kids wanted to get in the ring with him, since out of the entire class Sasuke had the highest scores in tajutsu, that is if you're not counting. I'll fight the bastard. Naruto grinned as he walked to the front of the line. You sure about that dope, you got lucky last time, this time I'll kick your ass. He pulled his shirt off exposing his pale chest to the girls of the class, as expected. Oh my god Sasuke so the voice was piercing and could only belong to one Sakura Haruno. No doubt another loud voice agreed, this one belonged to Ino Yamanaka. Both were fangirls, both fucking scared Naruto to no end, however, for a good prank he would be willing to burst a few bubbles. He grinned fearily at Sasuke before slowly unbuttoning his shirt, he wore button-ups so he wouldn't have to remove his hat to take the shirt off, but oh, what a wonderful sound it was to hear most of the girls in the class gasp, along with a few of the boys as well. Wait what? Naruto was pretty built, his constant training with Anko had hardened quite a few areas of his body, leaving lean muscles, it wasn't grossly disproportionate for his age, it simply flowed with his body type, compact muscles on a compact frame, and unnaturally tanned skin no less. Hey the fangirls in 3, 2, oh my god. One he mentally chuckled. Okay Sasuke, let's get this over with. He took up the academy stance since it was what they were learning and egged the Achiha on with a come get some motion. Meanwhile on the sidelines. Sakura. Yeah you know. Naruto is hot. Like really, really hot. Yeah I know. What should we do? I don't know. Ch. 6. Graduation. Academy, final testing day. Ha, uh, 4 years. Has it really been 4 years? Naruto grabbed the back of his head and leaned back in his seat in the corner of the room, he looked around at the class as they were called to the front to take the graduation test. Over the course of the past four years he had made a fairly decent headway in his studies, getting up to what he thought would be mid his skill, before a fairly glaring wall halted his progress. Using Cage Bunshin had been a godsend for him, being able to learn at an accelerated pace could only ever be a plus, and he had taken it well beyond the extreme to take advantage of his new elemental mastery, he finished each of his change in chakra natures, so he was fairly proficient in his own mind, there were masters out there that could still control elements much greater than himself, but he could still give an average shinobi a run for their money. One of the greatest accomplishments that Naruto's clones could claim were his raise in academics, while he wasn't top of the class, he was still more knowledgeable about ninja life than pretty much anyone else in his class, and to a certain extent in the entire village, because he hadn't just brushed up on his ninja skills in history, he had expanded his library to include things that would help him later on in life, like fabricating his own weapons and supplies, Dustin had run him ragged teaching his smithing craft to the blonde-haired child, Naruto shivered at the memory. Flashback, ring, Naruto, what can I do for you today my boy? Dustin smiled at the kid, he was 10 now and had sprouted up a little bit since the last time he'd seen him. 
I was wondering sir, if you could teach me blacksmithing. Dustin raised an eyebrow in surprise. Eh and what would a ninja need to know blacksmithing for? Burrito twitched a little, rubbing his arm apprehensively. Well. I kinda need it for that thing we talked about when we first met. The man's surprise grew, he thought the boy would give up on that when it got too difficult, but to still be trying after three years showed dedication, and that was one thing Dustin prized above almost anything else. Hey oh dad. Well almost anything, he prized his daughter more than anything else. Hello Tenton. Naruto greeted her, throwing her a little salute. Hey Naruto how have you been? It's been what? Two months since you last came by. I've been doing good, and yeah it's been a while, been too busy with the academy and training. You too? Man you're lucky. I have to deal with all the stiff shirts in the advanced classes. There's this dude in my class, his name's Niji Hayuga. A real hard ass, kinda cute I have to admit, but he doesn't have anything on you. She let out a little smile at the blonde maverick. Naruto snorted at that. You should see the girls of my class, after that little spark between me and Sasuke there's been a civil war between the fan clubs, I'm still shocked I have a fan club. Naruto shivered unconsciously, hearing the phantom wails of the couple of girls in his class that frowned over him. What was that? Tenton wondered. I felt a disturbance in the force, the what? Nothing. Anyway I was trying to get your dad here to teach me a bit about blacksmithing, I just need a bit of training, so I can make a few things myself when I need them. Yo dad she threw him a thumbs up, don't worry about the whole take my secrets to the grave shtick, teach Naruto the basics here, and put him through the gauntlet. She let out a little evil chuckle, Dustin shared it, which made Naruto slightly uncomfortable, standing there with them leering at him. This is going to hurt isn't it? Naruto asked blandly. Oh you have no idea. She chuckled. Then flashback, after the torture that was learning from Dustin was over, Naruto could honestly say he was humbled by the blacksmith, sure he wasn't anywhere close to a pro, but he could still make many of the things that the village wouldn't give him. Only one real problem kept the boy down, plainly speaking his strength was shit, the wall that kept him tethered to low mid in skill, was his body couldn't handle the forces involved with his rise in skills. He was taller and stronger from his ordeal with Kaiubi Shure, topping off roughly 4 inches taller than his cannon self. Just slightly shorter than Rock Lee, but he still had to build up his skills slowly but surely through constant training. Speaking of ordeals, after he had spilled the beans about his new foxy bits to the class, the kids went back and told their parents about the kid with the foxy bits in class, from what he could gather the parents had told them to stay away from the demon child, so he doesn't hurt you. Ah, with his natural good-natured personality along with his constant joking in class, many of the kids ignored the warnings, to the parents' dismay. Word had also spread around town about his new accessories. But other than a few more glares, maybe a raised hand or two nothing seemed much different. It was either the fear of Kami that Anko put into people or the constant pranks he pulled that kept most of the civilians from taking him seriously. He still preferred to hide the ears and tail though, by either stuffing them away under clothing or hiding under a hinge it didn't really matter. As for his classmates, for four years he had been keeping tabs on them, creating a mental dossier on their personalities and abilities, just in case he was ever paired with any of them. Naruto turned his gaze to the duck-headed wonder in the corner of the room and just stared. He couldn't describe the feeling of putting the arrogant Uchiha in his place when he stuck his head out during their spars. Overall, Sasuke was a nice guy when you got to know him, broody. Yes. Self-centered. Yes, but a decent guy nonetheless. He did carry a bit too much emotional baggage with him, a fact that Naruto would eventually break the boy of if it was the last thing he'd do, after all, he really was one of Naruto's first true friends, so if he could help the Ichiha get over his pissy attitude, he'd count that as a positive point in his book. Following the rose of the room had his eyes land on Sakura. The girl was good, a bit annoying in her fandulish attitude, not to mention violent. But a clever mind and greater control of chakra, you will not find in any of the other students, except for maybe Naruto himself. The girl next to her, Eno. You know. Like Sakura except less book smart and more seductive. I swear she acted like a slut half the time in class, but damn it it wasn't effective. Continuing on, Kiba, another good guy, loyal to a fault, decent friend, kind of annoying after he got his dog. Some of the others in class think his dick is going to his head when he starts yapping off about starting his own pack. El Naruto could start his own pack whenever the hell he wanted, with his mastery over his ice bloodline, the main elements, the foxy bits, and any other hidden bloodlines he may still hold. He could have his own damn harem if he just asked the council to supply him with the women, though that thought made the boy's stomach turn. Turning himself into breeding stock was not the most pleasant idea he'd had that day. Above and to the right were Shikamaru and Choji, the brains and the muscles. They were awesome people to hang with, and it only helped him along when he realized that old Shika was a freaking genius, the fact the guy had an IQ over 200 was just scary, but you couldn't find a better challenge at Shogi or Go in the village, he still hadn't beaten him once. In four years. Near the back of the class on his row was Shinohu. 
was just Shino, the guy gave him the creeps, but he was a smart person to hold a conversation with when he did open his mouth for more than a few casual words. Cerulean eyes fell on the one thing in the room that Naruto couldn't come to terms with. Hinata. The girl was a mystery to him. She followed him at a distance everywhere, it wasn't like he really minded her watching him from afar, she never did look at him with animosity or hate, just a quiet acceptance and reverence. He had come to appreciate the quiet girl's gaze, as it was a strangely relaxing feeling, knowing someone was watching you with a positive attitude. The big problem however was getting the girl to talk to him, in four years she hadn't said more than maybe a couple dozen words to him, and any time he tried to talk to her, she had just blushed a very dark shade of red and passed out, again, something he'd have to figure out and tackle at a later date. Right now was game time, the end of the school year, the make it or break it of the academy. Haruka was handing out several written tests to the class during the blonde mentally droned, he had no problem doing the written work, he just had too much pent-up energy at the moment. He was a man of action damn it. After the written test was the practicals, basically a grade on standard academy to jutsu and using ninja tools, he was decent at the academy style, but he preferred a variant that tossed an Anko style. His hit rate for kunai and shuriken was 8 out of 10, not bad but not good either. After that was the final part of the test, the basic three, Bunshin, Kawarimi, and Henge. The Naruto, this part was the most important, he hadn't really mastered any of the basic three, regardless of the fact that they were the foundation of all the ninja techniques beyond, he knew Cage Bunshin, so the clone part of the test was in the bag, his transformation wasn't that bad, in fact with his sexy jutsu he was actually damn good at it, his replacement was decent, nothing to write home about but still a passing grade. All in all he had this in the bag, and thanks to a small incident involving a certain white-haired man, he didn't have to worry about anyone screwing with his test score. Yeah, good old Mizuki team had fucked up before the graduation test ever started. He'd noticed Mizuki acting a bit on edge and staring at a few of the failing students with really bad grades, you know, the disposable kind. Well acting shifty in a village of ninja may be par for the course, but doing that while teaching a class of students that have a majority of the clan heirs in said class, and you have a very big problem, one word to Suratobi and a squad of Anbu, were tailing Mizuki's ass. The bastard was caught red-handed when he was pulling a kid aside to have him steal the forbidden scroll of sealing, after that, they threw his ass to Ibiki and found out he had been sabotaging the entire class in one way or another for years, a serious crime in its own right, but there were several other dark and dirty secrets that all but damned Mizuki to a life in prison. Uzumaki, Naruto get down here Aruka's voice cut into his musing. Come on Naruto, it's your turn, or do you want me to fail you? Alright, alright. Geez you think you think the Kyubi rose from the grave or something. Naruto stole a small glance at Uruka's pale white face and snickered quietly, Kami loved doing that. Uruka was a nice guy, if a bit gullible. Okay what's my score of awesome on a scale of 1 to 10? Teeth glimmered as his grin took up his whole face, haha very funny. Uruka deadpanned and if you must know, 3. Oh he burst a gut when Naruto's grin turned into a deep frown, he had definitely gotten under the blonde skin with that one. You're gonna pay for that one Ira say, okay clone, replacement and transformation, right? A nod of confirmation. Okay let's do this. In a one-handed hand seal he summoned five cage bunchins, in a puff of smoke, two of them were transformed into Aruka and Mizuki, the other two transformed into large katanas, the two human clones grabbed the katana clones and rushed each other, in a flurry of stabs and slashes the two dueled. A thrust by clone Aruka was diverted to the side, and a follow-up by clone Mizuki, who cut down the length of the scar Junin's blade, it would have taken clone Aruka's head off, had he not brought the guard of his blade up and raised the attack harmlessly overhead. The keep from getting slashed on the downward cut clone Mizuki crouched down and took one hand off of his blade, and with a yell, he laced his fist out and landed a blow into clone Aruka's sternum, when he raised his blade to strike clone Mizuki, causing him to dispel. Or so he thought as a sword ripped through clone Mizuki's shoulder, dispelling him to reveal that clone Aruka had replaced itself with the fifth Naruto, who had crept up behind clone Mizuki to blindside him. Another cloud of smoke signaled the clone's dispelling, leaving an astonished class and Aruka to stare at the blonde maverick, who just so happened to be fiddling with his ninjato. So do I pass. He grinned mischievously. Aruka could only nod dumbly at him, the whole duel between his clone self and the Mizuki clone took only a couple of seconds, but the sword play was impressive, hell he couldn't move as fast as those clones had, he threw a glance at Naruto for a second, those were shadow clones, weren't they? Yep, gotta love them, one of the most useful jutsu ever his grin hadn't left his face. Well, it's not the academy bunshin, but it is an advanced bunshin, and it is acceptable in this case, congratulations Naruto, you pass he flashed him a warm smile, Naruto's come a long way, heh, only a few years ago I saw him as nothing more than a fox in human skin, but just look at him, no demon could ever be this goofy, I just hope he can handle the world outside the village the way he handles himself here. 
Oh who am I kidding, he doesn't need to prepare for the world, the world needs to prepare for him. His thoughts were filled with praise for the boy in front of him. It was truly inspiring to see how much he had grown both physically and mentally these last four years. He tossed Naruto his hide to immediately tied it around his head as he took his seat at the back of the class. Alright class, that's it for today's test, those of you who passed come back tomorrow to meet your new sensei and find out your team placements, for those of you who failed there is always next year, so keep practicing, dismissed. He turned and walked out of the classroom. The next day, Anko stood in front of her mirror, trying on several new dresses she had bought over the weekend. She wanted to take Naruto out after he graduated and passed the real genin test. After all she had spent five years with a boy and their relationship hadn't really gone anywhere, sure there was the occasional kiss, and they did pretty much everything with each other, bathing, eating, even shopping. Hell they could be called a married couple and everything but having sex, which Naruto made clear the year before when she had initiated a bit of a dirty bubble bath, that they would wait till he was a bit older to do that sort of thing. That didn't stop Anko from teasing and corrupting the boy as much as she could, much to his ever-present annoyance, but she didn't care, he was fun to be around with, and that's all that really mattered to her, hell even the threat the council threw at them every year or so about multiple wives or having children didn't faze her, in fact they had a conversation just a few months ago that if he ever found someone else to share with that she would support him in his choice, it's not like she minded really. More fun for her in her mind. She flashed a feral grin. A little known secret to only a select few women that had known her before her marriage was that Anko was bisexual, and she had no problem with Amina Jatrois, in fact on several occasions she even promoted it. If Naruto ever did find another wife to marry. The feral grin never left her face as pervy thoughts floated through the snake mistress's mind while she tried on another dress, this one more mesh than fabric. Uggh, so bored. Our blonde-haired hero moaned in anguish, it had been an hour and a half since the last of the teams had left, he looked at the only other two people in the room. His teammates the ever-broody Sasuke and his pink-haired chia pet Sakura. He had tried to start up a conversation with them, but Sasuke had blown him off because he was in one of his moods honestly you'd think he was on the rag. Ugh, note to self, tell the narrator to shut the fuck up about Fem Sasuke. Fourth wall breaking aside, he really was bored out of his gourd, looking around one more time he finally sighed and stood up. Ichiha noticed a movement out of the corner of his eye yo, dope, what are you doing? I'm bored he remarked dryly, as he started doing one-handed push-ups, if we're going to be sitting here for hours on end, we might as well do something productive while we wait. He raised an eyebrow, and what exactly are you doing? What's it look like? I'm training, I'd rather my muscles not atrophy while we wait. Finishing a set on one side he switched to the other if you want I can show you a few tricks to getting a good workout, what do you say? Sasuke looked around for a moment before sighing, he'd never admit it, but Naruto was right, it was boring as hell in this place. Alright he stood up and walked over to Naruto, what kind of training is this? Naruto sat up for a moment and looked around, he noticed a small stack of flash cards under Aruka's desk, alright here's what you do, he grabbed a couple slips and handed one to Sasuke, first off, I'll explain the chakra part of this exercise, simply, use your chakra to stick that piece of paper to your forehead like this as he reached up and placed a paper on his brow, and like a piece of tape it stuck, once you get this part, start doing physical exercises, I find that push-ups and sit-ups get the best results out of this. Not only are you working your chakra reserves with the paper, but when you're concentrating on keeping the paper on and doing the exercises, it'll increase your control as well, not to mention you're still getting a workout, a workout that's that much harder, since you are using chakra while you're exercising. Sasu looked at the paper in his hand for a moment, shrugged and stuck it to his head, it didn't stick as well as he had wanted it to, but it stayed, he sat down and started doing crunches, sweat beating his brow. Sakura was watching her crush work out with a blush on her face, he was just so sexy. Naruto rolled his eyes, he knew exactly what she was daydreaming about, and it sickened him to no end, sure Sakura was hot, but Anko had beaten an ever-present fear of fangirls into him, to him fangirls were scum, lower than dirt, and to hell, if he was going to have one on his team, if he had anything to say about it, Sakura. He yelled, snapping her out of her Sasuke-induced trance, you going to join us? Why should I? She bit back, well for one thing, you're weak he deadpan dryly. Naruto you jerk. I am not weak. Yeah you are and quit lying to yourself about it, out of the entire class you have the worst physical ability, Ino has better tojutsu skills than you, Halshikamaru has better tojutsu than you, and he's one of the laziest people I know. Sakura shook in anger, tears welling in her eyes, she was about to run from the room when Naruto stopped her. 
but that's why I'm trying to help you Sakura he tossed her one of the slips. Just doing this exercise over a period of a month almost doubled my chakra control and it increased my strength by a fifth. Multitasking is an essential in battle and being able to concentrate on your physical attacks while you're unconsciously controlling your chakra is beyond helpful. That's why I turn my entire day into one big exercise. Even when I'm relaxing I'm still doing something to better myself. After we get done today with our sensei you should look into it too using weights, going the long way to your destination, sticking leaves or other light stuff to your body with chakra throughout the day, stuff like this is great training for a good ninja. Clapping filled the air around them, the three genin turned to the sound to see a silver-haired masked man standing in the doorway here. I was gonna say my first impressions of you three was I hate you, but it seems I have someone fairly competent on my squad, Spiky over there has it right, that's a great exercise. You got 30 minutes, after you're finished training, meet me on the roof. They then disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Well that was interesting Naruto sweat dropped. 30 minutes later, Naruto. That sucked. The only girl there bitched my muscles are already sore. That's because you were using chakra at the same time as you exercised, thus you couldn't use chakra to do most of the work your muscles should be doing, so all that effort was placed on your muscles alone, which in turn increases the effects of the workout. Naruto pointed out as they reached the roof that still sucked. She huffed, Naruto just palmed his face in irritation. Yo. The silver-haired Joan inhaled them from the edge of the roof alright, now that you're all up here, I think it's time we introduced ourselves, give your likes dislikes, dreams for the future and some hobbies, here I'll start. My name is Kakashi Haddock, I have many likes and dislikes, I don't know you well enough to tell you my dreams for the future, and I have hobbies. He nodded to them. Well that was informative, Naruto remarked dryly. Yeah all we got was his name, Sakura agreed. Kakashi looked bored. Doesn't matter, you first, he pointed to Naruto. Well, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, I like training, Raymond and proving myself, my dream. Naruto's face darkened a second. Actually no, not a dream, my goal is to restore the Uzumaki clan and become a better Hokage than any that's come before me, so that the people of this village can look up to me as a true shinobi. Bakashi stared at him for a moment well isn't that interesting. He nodded hobbies. Um, well besides pranks and practical jokes. Kakashi sweat dropped, yeah I saw your handiwork the other day, painting the Hokage monument in broad daylight, and nobody noticed you till you were done, how exactly did you pull that off? Naruto laughed sorry sensei, a good magician never reveals his secrets. Kakashi's eyes smiled at him oh Mr. Magic, and how many Anbu chazzed you around town after that little stunt? Heh, uh, two teams of Anbu, eleven Chunin and four Jonin, he had his hands behind his head with a shit-eating grin on his face, Sakura and Sasuke just stared blankly at him. What the hell dope? Sasuke said, dumbfounded. Naruto looked at him, hmm, you say something. The three genin turned after hearing a crash to see Kakashi face first on the floor. Am I already rubbing off on them? Kakashi wondered, face still firmly planted on the ground. After removing said face from said floor, he pointed at Sakura. Okay bubblegum, you're next. Sakura glared at him, Sakura Haruno, my dreams are. She glanced quickly at Sasuke, my hobbies are. Again at Sasuke I like Sasuke and I hate Naruto. Naruto sighed, out of all the kids in the academy he was stuck with Broody and the Beast. Well isn't she shallow? Kakashi thought blandly, okay duckhead, you're next. Ha. I knew other people thought that about your hair. Guess who said that? Sakura glared at Naruto and Sasuke scowled Sasuke Chiha. I hate a lot of things, and I like few, I don't see why we are talking about dreams, since Naruto has it right for once. I don't have a dream, I have a goal. My goal is to restore my clan and its honor, and to kill a certain someone. An eerie silence filled the air as Naruto and Sakura inched back a few hairs from the Kai Sasuke was giving off. Dare I ask about your hobbies? Kakashi wondered dryly, ignoring the Kai. Training, brooding and knitting. Kakashi choked. What was that last one? He asked quickly. Knitting, Sasuke replied with a straight face. Kakashi suppressed the need to giggle like a schoolgirl, if Sasuke's parents knew his hobby they'd be rolling over in their graves, just thinking of Yugaku catching his son knitting made him choke, and his mother Makoto would have made him her little princess like she did Itachi. After a few seconds of inner conflict on whether or not to fall over in fits of giggles or just to point and laugh, he thankfully did neither and opted to file it away under blackmail for later use. Okay now that we understand each other, I want you to meet me at training ground 3 tomorrow at 7am for survival exercises, oh and don't eat anything or else you're gonna throw up. He chuckled a little before he shunched it away. And like that he leaves us with nothing to go on, greatest sensei ever. Naruto palmed his face with a tick mark showing prominently. Whatever. Alright, ignore the last thing he said and eat tonight and in the morning, okay? The other two looked at him like he was stupid or something. But sensei just told us not to eat, why would we break the rules like that? Sakura rubbed her legs together nervously. Do things. 
one, tomorrow is most likely not going to be a survival exercise, it's probably gonna be a test on teamwork, hell why would they go through all the trouble of sticking us on teams and preaching about teamwork all throughout the academy if it wasn't about teamwork. The looks on their faces told him they hadn't thought of that too, since he directly told us not to eat anything while taking into account that he's probably going to be pitting us against each other tomorrow it's safe to say that he's going to try and turn our tempers on each other to test our teamwork and resolve, after all, starving and desperate ninja a good team do not make. So eat something, it doesn't have to be much, just enough so we don't kill each other tomorrow out of hunger and stress. They both nod, if anything they could just blame Naruto if things went south, so with that, and a few goodbyes Team 7 headed home for the night. Ugh today suck Naruto groaned mentally I wonder what Kakashi will have us do tomorrow. If I know Sasuke and Sakura they probably won't eat anything, so just in case, bring an apple for both of them or something. Sigh, so much to do tomorrow, might as well get some sleep, well like and as Naruto nodded off he felt a slight tug on his conscious eye, this better be good Kaiubi he opened his eyes, and he was again in that familiar sewer, seriously he needed to clean this place out. He turned to stare at the beast behind the cage, waiting for it to speak. Looked down at him with a small grin on its face. Hello monkey, I see you graduated today from that pathetic excuse you call an academy. Yeah yeah yuck it up furball, I'm on my way to becoming Hokage, and ain't nothing gonna stop me now. So what did you need me for? It's I, honestly. It's kind of lonely in here, it's been more than a year since you've even come in here, there's nothing to do except sleep and torment you, and seeing as you don't torment easily, it's gotten rather boring in here. Well sorry if my head doesn't match to standards, suck it up, you're a man, take the pain like the rest of us. Naruto was about to make another smart comment when a large amount of killing intent flooded the room, he snapped his head towards Kaiubi and stared into its eyes, there was a mixture of anger and hurt in them, what the fuck. Ayubi grit its teeth in anger glaring holes into Naruto that's just it you stupid monkey, I am not a male. Wait. What? The blonde's eyes flew wide in shock. You're a girl. The fox fascipened. Somehow. And spoke evenly yes I am a female, a girl. How do you not notice these things? He looked a bit sheepish. Well I just assumed, with such a deep voice and all. The tick mark formed on her head. I'm 100 times your size mortal, my vocal cords are much larger than yours. If I was your size or you mine we'd sound the same as the other. Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment before a look of disgust crossed his face. But that means. Ugh gross. What? The vixen tilted her head curiously. I was going to say it must suck having your junk soaked in the sewer all day long, but now that I know you're a girl that must suck even more, he scrunched his nose in disgust. Now you know why I don't like you that much, your mind is filthy, figuratively speaking. Well what do you want me to do? It's not like I can remove all this water, and I sure as hell ain't removing that seal. Well you could. What? The fox looked around its cage. It's a significantly drier cage. How? She wondered in astonishment. What did you do? Naruto turned back to the entrance of the room, noting the receding water huh? I guess I just thought of it drying out and it must have done it. You fool, a mindscape doesn't work like that, I told you as much the first time we met. A mindscape is a representation of one's own current mental state, along with past experiences. If you're sad, it rains. Happy, it's sunny. Depressed, it's foggy or dank like the sower. The fox gestured with one of her clawed hands this is direct control over one's mindscape, only people who are true masters of the mind like those Yamanaka monkeys can do something like this. Naruto tilted his head curiously so you're saying that I can directly change anything I want in my mind. In essence, yes. This may be another bloodline of some sort that you absorbed that day, or maybe it mutated from something you absorbed, whatever it is, it's interesting to say the least. You got rid of the water here, and that's a welcome change for me at the very least, maybe now my fur might finally dry out. Naruto stared at Kayubi for a moment, looking around the dank musty room and thought, this place is a disgrace. He noted dryly, he looked back at, who seemed to be enjoying the dryer cage immensely. And she's loving just having a dry place to sleep. Kami, now I feel like such a bastard for keeping her in this damn place. Wait. That's it. He cupped his hands and yelled up at the vixen oi, Kaiubichin. The fox growled in anger at being addressed as such what mortal. You don't like the sower do you? She glared at him dryly I'd think that would be obvious, who in their right mind would enjoy living in a place like this. Naruto sweat drop point taken. Well then, let's see how this works. Naruto scrunched his eyes in concentration, focusing on something, slowly the walls of the room seemed to expand and disappear, leaving a bright white light in its place, trees shot up from the floor, their leaves sprouting from nothing. The sound of songbirds filled the air along with the sounds of wind blowing through a forest. After the transformation was complete, Naruto opened his eyes to look at his work. It was the forests outside Konoha, he had even recreated the city in the distance. 
he turned to the fox who was sitting outside of the cage for once, however, there was a tattoo on its chest in the kanji for seal so how's this? That better for your fur. The fox's jaw dropped to the floor ho. How in the hell did you create something this detailed so quickly? Heh, this is the part of the forest I see every time I sit on the Hukage monument, I just imagined the trees and kinda put the village in the distance, so. What do you think? Her bristled in the breeze as Kaiubi stretched out her limbs, what are your views on interspecies relationships? Huh. Why do you? Kaiubi's face stretched into a playful grin as a giant puff of smoke filled the area. But the blonde gasped as the air got knocked out of him. He landed on his back in a heap with something heavy on his chest, as his head stopped spinning from smacking the ground he happened to glance at the heavy thing in question, only to freeze as he noticed that same playful smirk above him. Only smaller and more human. And hotter. Wait. What? That's why sharpened canines flashed in the sunlight as Kaiubi let out an ear-to-ear -ear grin, she had transformed herself into a human, or rough equivalent to it, the foxy attributes that she shared with Naruto were a dead giveaway that she was a little more foxy, that what her beauty suggested. Her face shined in the morning light, her seductive eyes framing her face as it trailed down a rather cute nose to full luscious lips. She wore a full-length burnt orange kimono with spiral designs, the kimono itself was opened in the front to reveal a rather large chest, on which the same tattoo for seal stood out on her snow-white skin. Her eyes were red and slitted like normal, and her hair was a dull rusty orange, as well as her tails, all nine of them which splayed out behind her in a fan shape, each flicking independently. You have no idea how long I've wanted out of that fucking cage. Twelve years. Twelve fucking years sitting in that sewer of a mindscape looking at nothing but dark, pipe-covered walls. Thank you kid, I know we may have started off on the wrong foot, but doing this has seriously raised you a few notches in my book, I just might not kill your loved ones now. She smiled again, despite the fact that she had just threatened to kill his loved ones. At least indirectly. Naruto sweat dropped ya. Yeah. Okay he looked up at Kaiubi who was still straddling his chest. Well, this is awkward. Kaiubi blinked a couple times before she fell over laughing pfft ha 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 kid, you are so innocent it's not even funny, she tossed him a sexy smirk and ground herself on his chest a bit for effect. Don't you like this form? A little too much actually, could you get off me, you're kind of crushing me. He gasped a few times to get his point across. E, you're no fun she pouted playfully before that smirk took its place back on her face, but you are interesting, you actually care about my well-being, you're the first person to do that for me, most are either too scared of me, or are using their powers and just lording over me. You're the first to actually treat me like an equal. Naruto blinked once what? Have you never had a friend before? A friend? She put a finger to her chin and thought. Can't say that I have, the two containers I had before were complete bitches to me. She pouted again, this time in anger. Naruto's eyes flew wide wait, there's been Kaiubi Jinchiriki before me. His voice squeaked a little when. Who? Well obviously 12 years ago since that's when I was released from the last container, and roughly 20 odd years before that for the other container, that container held me for several decades actually before she passed me on to your predecessor. You said bitches. So are you saying the two containers before me were female? Kaiubi looked lost in thought for a moment, seeming at war with herself on how she should answer his question, after a moment of thought she nodded once yes Naruto, my last two containers were female, they were Mito Yuzumaki, one of your distant relatives and wife to the first Hokage. Naruto on the other hand was wide-eyed, he had just discovered the name of one of his relatives, he knew she couldn't be alive if she was the wife of the Shadame Hokage, but still, it was a start. And the other. He asked tentatively. Kaiubi looked into Naruto's eyes, there was a pleading there, a want to know about the others before him, but this. This was going to be difficult to explain. My last container was your mother kid. Kashina Yuzumaki. The Kaiubi Jinchiriki stood deathly still as his hair shadowed his eyes, ever so slightly he started to tremble. It wasn't noticeable at first, but as it grew you could tell he was crying. He curled up into a little ball at the base of a tree and sobbed, the tears on his cheeks forming twin trails of moisture down his face. Kaiubi stared at the boy's whimpering form, his sobs echoing loudly around the empty forest. She sighed and gently wrapped her arms around the blonde. Naruto went rigid when he felt the contact wa. He tried to choke out. Just shut up kid she said softly I may be a demon, but I'm not heartless. Everyone seems to think we are nothing but evil monsters. She gripped him a little tighter. To be perfectly honest most of us aren't even evil. Sure, we're sadistic and like to fuck with people, our containers even more so. But we're not heartless, she rubbed the boy's back soothingly, as his tears soaked her kimono. So why are you crying kid? I know finding out about your mother this way was a bit unexpected but still. That's. Not it. He cried. Then what is it? Long tears streamed down his cheeks I'm just. So happy. Yet so sad. I can't help it. She blinked a couple times at that. What? I'm happy about knowing about my mother, but I know she must have suffered as much as I did. 
And just knowing that dad loved her enough to have me makes me happy as well, but I'm also sad that I'll never know more than her name and maybe her face if there are any pictures of them left. I will be made a soft sound of understanding as she held the boy, rubbing his back gently to calm him down kid, your mother wasn't treated the way people treat you, no one really knew she held me inside of her, not to mention I hadn't attacked the village yet, so even if they did know, it wasn't as much of a stigma as it is now, L back then people could have just called it an unstable bloodline and wouldn't have given it another thought. Naruto smiled bitterly at that at least she had a better life than I've had so far. She chuckled, we're both having a hard time, I'll try and figure something out on knowing who they were, don't worry about that too much. Huh? Why would you do that? I will be sighed because I'm actually sorry about what has happened to you, I never meant to attack your village, after being trapped inside of Mido and your mother for so long I really didn't want to have anything to do with Konoha anymore. The tears in Naruto's eyes had dried by now, as he looked at her confused so why did you attack then? Ayubi's face hardened in anger it was all because of that man. She growled, the vibrations in her chest made Naruto shake. What man? He frowned, a sinking feeling filling his stomach. The man who is directly responsible for my attack on your village and the deaths of your mother and father she replied darkly, her voice trailing off as she remembered the day. Naruto's voice was quiet for a moment before he spoke two simple words. Tell me. Chapter 7. Bell Test Blues. An orange spiral mask and a Sharingan eye, the face of my enemy. Naruto brooded over this information as he walked towards training ground 3. Kaiubi had told him everything, how she had been controlled with a Sharingan to attack the village, even the last moments of his parents. He didn't blame Kaiubi, hell he'd be pretty pissed too, if he had been trapped against his will inside someone or another for close to 60 plus years, with a very likely chance of getting sealed back inside someone else by those same people. And from what he understood his mom had whipped Kaiubi hard, the fact Kaiubi called it rough bondage didn't help either. He'd never look at chains the same way again. Disturbing thoughts aside, he felt good today. Today he could finally cut loose against someone and a Joan and someone at that, lucky, lucky. The only problem with his plans was the added baggage of Brady and the Beast. The test was teamwork, and their teamwork for lack of a better term, was shit. The Achiha prodigy was a pompous ass and tried to do everything himself. Sakura on the other hand was the exact opposite of Sasuke, she was fiery yes, but she tended to only be fiery towards Sasuke, or when she compared her fist density to the hardness of his head. Brain injury aside when Sasuke wasn't around she could be introverted and quiet, hell maybe even willing to work together, but once pompous ass met ass kisser, it would take a miracle to get them to work correctly together. Oh well he sighed dejectedly, might as well at least try to work with them, maybe the impossible will happen with that thought he walked onto the worn field of training ground 3, he noticed immediately that Sakura and Sasuke were already there, Sasuke was sitting silently under the shade of a tree, while Sakura was leaning against one of the three stumps in the middle of the training ground. Sakura stared at Naruto with a frown planted firmly on her face you're late Naruto. Yeah and so is sensei, did either of you eat anything? He watched as both slowly nodded apprehensively, after all if they were in trouble, now was the time for Kakashi to punish them for it. After a good 30 minutes of waiting the three knew that Kakashi wasn't testing their adherence to the rules and was genuinely late. Again. Naruto who expected Kakashi's tardiness after he told Anko about who his new sensei was. It wasn't like she had to laugh so hard. But it did tip him off that the guy was a joke, the little quip Anko made about being late for his own funeral didn't reassure him either. After another hour Naruto was starting to twitch well, I'm tired of waiting for him, he turned to his two would-be teammates questioningly, would either of you like to train while we wait? Neither moved from their positions, both were clearly on edge. Naruto shrugged fine, more for me, cage bunch and no. Instantly five Naruto clones appeared in front of him, alright guys you know the drill he tossed a scroll to the clones and they ran off into the woods to train. Yo dobe what the hell kind of clone was that, I saw you use them during the graduation exam, but what are they? They're cage bunch and sasuke, shadow clones hella useful, but the drain they put on your chakra reserves is massive. If I were to estimate, you could probably only make 10 or so before you fell to the ground dead. Then how did you make 5 of them? He shrugged simple, I have more chakra than you do, a lot more actually, most likely more than our jonin sensei in fact. My fox bloodline increases the amount of chakra I have by massive amounts, more than a cages if what people tell me is correct. Only downside to this bloodline is my chakra control is complete shit, those clones right there, I put enough chakra into them to make 10 clones, before I got my control up, it would have been 50 or more. Sasuke raised an eyebrow so your bloodline doesn't really have any permanent weaknesses, does it? Naruto stuck a finger to his chin and thought, he pulled his cap off exposing the ears to the air, well to be honest, I don't think I do, besides really loud noises. These ears are fairly decent for hearing over large distances he yanked the tail from his pants for the tail. I don't know, it really doesn't do anything more than increase my balance, I could probably find a use for it for something. 
Have you ever tried holding something with it? Sakura questioned. No, why? She walked over beside him and pulled out a kunai here try and hold this. Naruto turned to look at the blade in her hand and mentally willed his tail to reach out for it, after a few failed attempts he sighed in frustration nothing, it just doesn't have the control necessary. Sasuke stared at the half-assed attempts by Naruto's appendage, why don't you try running chakra through it done? The two ninja turned to stare at him, he pointed at the tail and thought I use wires all the time, and running chakra through them makes the things easier to control, I imagine that tail would work the same way. Naruto looked back down and thought at his tail, he tested a bit of chakra going to the tip of the tail, instantly the first stood up on end, and his entire body jolted, sending waves of electricity up his spine, holy shit. He stopped the flow of chakra and stared the fuck was that. What happened? Sakura knelt down to where the tail was eye level, she was giving it that fangirl squee look, but there was genuine concern in her eyes, so Naruto wasn't gonna run for the hills just yet. I don't know, it just started shocking me. Try putting less chakra into it then, maybe you just forced too much in, and it hurt you. Naruto nodded to the and slowly forced a smaller amount of chakra in, it still tingled, but not nearly as bad, once it reached the tip the oddest thing happened, the tail went completely slack. Naruto raised an eyebrow, the hell. What happened? The asked, he scratched his head I have no clue, this thing reacts to chakra in a weird way, I think I need to train with this thing for a while, maybe I can use it with a hand sign a dozen clones were in a line in front of him, alright, go test this thing out, he grabbed his tail and shook it at the clones I want results by the end of the day. Uimon Capitan. They turned and ran off into the woods. Sakura sweat dropped what is wrong with your clones. Naruto sighed comically some things are better left unsaid. The three genin sat quietly for another 30 minutes until a cheerful voice filled the clearing, yo. Kakashi hailed them, he glanced over at Naruto and nearly fell over, he still had his tail and ears out for all to see, and this was a first for Kakashi seeing them. Hmm interesting, I knew he had them, but it's just odd seeing things like that poking out of people, this may take some time to get used to, you're late. Sakura growled out. Surprisingly Naruto kept quiet. Well Kakashi began I got lost on the road of life, liar. The fumed. Actually, Naruto interrupted, I believe him. Kakashi's eyes smiled at him. After all, it's not every day that someone gets laid. The eye smile widened in shock. Wah? Jonin choked out. Naruto tossed Kakashi a book here, for the next time you get lost on the road of life. Kakashi knew what it was the moment it left the blonde's hand, the orange cover gave it away almost instantly, but what shocked Kakashi the most was that he had never seen this cover before, which could only mean one thing, it was a new Ichicha volume. Kakashi slowly opened the cover, and there in all its glory was the signature of the author, and in bold letters first. Addition he looked at the boy in awe how. He said reverently. I have my ways he grinned impishly thank you Anko, that made a hell of a first impression. Kakashi stood frozen for a moment before bending forward quickly in a deep bow, much to the shock of the other two gen in their dot you, have my deepest gratitude Yuzumakasen. Yeah, yeah create a shadow clone to enshrine your book back home, you got a team to pass. He looked up at the blonde so the brat knows it's a test. Interesting. Slowly he nodded once, a hand sign and a puff of smoke later his clone, and the book vanished in a shunshun. A second later Kakashi's poker face was back while his body regained its comfortable slouch. Okay then the Oni man pulled out a clock and placed it on one of the stumps. This here is a timer set to go off at noon, two bells dangled from his fingers, you have until that time to take these bells from me, those who don't. Get sent back to the academy. Sasuke and Sakura were shocked. Naruto not so much why would they get sent back to the academy if this was survival exercises. Unless. But sensei there's only two bells. Sakura piped in. Correct Sakura, that means even if you do get the bells from me one of you will be going back regardless. Out of the entire graduating class, only nine of you will be advancing to become full-fledged genin. This test has a 66% chance of failure and is used to root out the hopeless cases, so you better get the bells by lunch or else. Also for a little added motivation, if you don't get the bells by lunch, you won't get any lunch. Sakura glared at Kakashi in thought so that's why he said not to eat, the bastard, and if he lied about that to make us weak and fight amongst ourselves then. She glanced at Sasuke who was looking at her as well, they both thought. Naruto was right, this is a test of teamwork that both glanced at Naruto who was watching the both of them intently, ever so slightly they nodded, a large grin crossed Naruto's face. Eh, uh, we might actually do this now he turned back to Kakashi with that grin still plastered on his face. Kakashi raised his only visible eyebrow what are you up to? Sakura, Sasuke, you get it now right? They both nodded. Good, alright one eye let's get this over with. I got places to go, women to meet, you know important stuff he threw that impish grin from earlier at the cycloptic. Kakashi sweat dropped he's s getting a thousand years of death for that one. He coughed to cover his loss of composure alright then, be prepared to come at me with intent to kill, or you'll never get the bells. Begin. 
In a burst of speed the three genin disappeared into the woods. Across town outside a jewelry shop a young heiress stood pouting, staring at a display case of engagement rings in the widow dreamily, she had passed by the shop, thinking of a certain blonde-haired boy, when she noticed the rings, after a few more moments she sighed in despair as if Naritakin would ask me to marry him. What would he want with a plain girl like me? She shook those thoughts from her head, she'd never given up on him in the four years she's tried to be close to him, watching him grow into the person he is now. There was no way in hell she was just gonna let go of her feelings for him. She turned from the shop and marched off to one of her favorite spots in the village, simply because it was one of Naruto's favorite spots. The top of the Hokage Monument. What the fuck is with these kids? Kakashi screamed in his mind as he dodged another barrage of kunai launched by a tripwire trap that had been set by the blonde maverick himself. In just a few minutes, Naruto had booby-trapped a large portion of the forest that he was now running for his life in. Not to mention every so often Sasuke and Sakura would launch sneak attacks from behind him, only years of experience kept him from getting seriously injured. Or worse. One minute I'm chasing after Naruto, the next I'm tripping over myself in a forest of pointy doom. How the kid had gotten a hold of so many kunai and explosive tags he'll never know. Backing up he felt a tug on his foot and looked down quickly to notice another tripwire against his heel shit. A set of explosions and kunai assaulted him from every direction which he narrowly dodged. I know I said to come at me with intent to kill, but this is ridiculous. Bakashi stopped for a moment to focus on the area around him and realized something odd, there was not a single sound around him. He leaned against a tree for a moment to get his bearings only for his eyes to go white, as ninja wire sprung up and wrapped around the tree, encircling him with near invisible wire, a sharp tug and the wires snapped, pinning him. Not a half moment after that, two shuriken flew through the air and struck his palms. Gah. Pain shot through his arms as the bladed stars tore into his hands to prevent any use of. A shadow appeared beside the one-eyed Joe Jonan's head before darkness took him. One hour later, you think we overdid it? A girl's voice awakened the Jonan. Who cares, the dobe's plan was awesome. A gruff male voice who he pinpointed as Sasuke answered, Heh, I never knew you cared about Sasuke, nice work on the wires by the way, and the same with the shuriken Sakura said, the current bane of the Jonin's existence. Ooh, trap master bastard, ah hell I'm tied up he mentally groaned, realizing he was tied to one of the training stumps of training ground three. The irony of that wasn't lost on the cycloptic Jonin. I don't. You just had a good plan retorted the blondes taunting. And thanks. No shit the silver hair had grown from the stump, a large black and blue welt on the visible side of his face right below his eye. Oh sensei you're awake. Sakura giggled happily. What the hell hit me? The asked. That would be the Yuzumaki special said Yuzumaki held up his left fist in front of his face, and his eyes gleamed menacingly. The Kashi sweat dropped, taken down by a punch, ugh I'm never going to hear the end of this once this makes the rounds at the lounge. Should have used the Sharingan from the beginning damn it. By the way Sensei Naruto held up both bells in his hand, mission complete he handed one to Sasuke and one to Sakura and grinned proudly. So do we pass or what? Bakashi hung his head in despair, he had no choice, not only did they use more teamwork than he'd ever seen a genin team use, they had beaten him as well. Hell they worked together like a well-oiled team, how that happened he'd never know, but in a way he was proud to have them as his team, if this was just a taste of what they could do now, yeah, you pass, I guess you figured out the meaning behind this test right. They nodded. He sighed again by the way, how in the hell did you lay all those traps that quickly Naruto? And how did you get your teammates to work so well with you? Naruto scratches his head in embarrassment Hey, as for the first one, Cage Bunch and no, the clearing was filled yet again with clones of Naruto, but this time there was over 50 of them. I can make dozens of shadow clones like it's nothing, these guys were setting up traps while you were stumbling through the first ones I set. Bakashi's face turned sour. He makes it sound like I'm a complete novice. His face straightened slightly in the teamwork. Simple, for Sakura I said I'd help her get the attention of Sasuke by helping her get stronger and keeping the other fangirls off of him. For Sasuke I said I'd help him get stronger as well as keeping a majority of his fangirls away. So you bribed them. Basically. Bakashi sweat dropped again why am I not surprised. The ropes behind him snapped and he stood up, much to the surprise of the genin okay then, since you passed, meet me here tomorrow for mission assignments and team training, Naruto. Naruto jumped to Kakashi's raised voice uh. Yeah. Since you seem so adamant about helping your teammates get stronger, you'll be helping train them as well. Kakashi's eyes smile. He's getting back at me isn't he? The blonde's eyebrow twitched slightly in annoyance. Till tomorrow then, I have a makeout date with an ice pack. A swirl of leaves signified his departure as the rest of Team 7 left the training grounds, two of them heading home, the other heading to his most favorite spot in the village, the monument. Anada Hayuga sat silently watching the sunset in the west from the top of the Hokage monument, the wind blowing gently through the trees, the slow shaking of the branches, creating a soothing soundtrack to the view. Oh Naruto. 
she sighed, staring at the pale orange sunset in despair, will I ever be able to catch your heart, will you ever notice me? The Hyuga era sighed again and looked longingly over the village, just one moment is all I need to tell you, but I I just can't say it. Tears filled her pale eyes as a lump caught in her throat Naruto. I I. Hanada. The Hyuga's eyes went wide, she turned sharply to see the embodiment of her love standing not 20 feet away. Narutokan, what are you doing here? The pale-eyed girl's heart was about to tear a hole out of her chest, here he was the boy she had admired for years, the person who never gave up no matter how much hatred was thrown his way, the one who gave her courage and hope that she herself could overcome any obstacle, just standing there staring at her. It was almost too much for the girl. Naruto watched Hanada intently, he could hear the girl's heart beat faster, and her breathing quickened, it was like she feared him, but the way she blushed and stuttered contradicted that, he had spent the past four years trying to understand what caused her to act this way around him, and so far he had no clue what the hell her problem was. Looking at her now, he felt this might be the only chance to figure it out, he had heard the last bit of what she was saying, she needed to tell him something, but what it was she felt she couldn't say, now was the time to get her to say it. Hinata. He said again, this time it wasn't a question, he walked closer to her and noticed that the girl broke out into a cold sweat as he approached. He's walking towards me, what does he want? The girl's thoughts were spinning around at a thousand miles an hour, so confused was she that she didn't even notice that he was standing right in front of her, his cerulean eyes gazing hard into her pale lavender ones. Her eyes widened yep. She squealed out trying to back away from him, but she only felt the edge of the monument at her back. Anada, do you have something to say to me? The tone of his voice offered no argument, I heard you from before, you said you wanted to tell me something, what is it? His eyes never left hers, while hers widened in shock. He heard me. At first she was happy that he had heard her words, but then her stomach fell. He clearly hadn't heard the first part so he wouldn't know what she wanted to tell him, she'd have to do it now, or never. Marito. I I she grit her teeth and tried to force the words from her mouth, but nothing came damn it. Just three words, three damn words, say it, say it. She jerked when she felt a pair of hands on her shoulders. Anada calmed down and just tell me he was close, too close, and that was it. The shy girl fainted under his touch, falling to the ground. Only, there wasn't any ground below her, being on the edge of a cliff does that to you. Anada. He yelled and kept after her, shit she's falling too fast. I won't be able to catch her and stop our fall, wait, that's it. Cage Bunshin no. The dozen Naruto latched onto each other and grabbed the edge of the monument, the last one had a hold of Naruto's legs as he reached out for Hinata, a few more inches, and he had his hands around her, now he screamed latching onto what he could of the girl. Right boss. The clones jerked them to the side, swinging them back towards the top of the mountain, they flew through the air flying towards the tree line. Naruto's eyes widened when he saw where they were landing. He turned and cradled her body in his, putting himself between the hard ground and her. With a loud smack he struck the stone of the monument before bouncing into the soft grass of the tree line, Hanada held tightly to his chest. It took a few moments for the dust to settle, but after it did a slight groan echoed out. Ugh, Hinata. He shook the girl lightly trying to wake her Hinata are you alright? Blood was coming from his arms and back, he could feel the burning in his limbs telling him he was hurt, but he could only care about the pallid heiress at the moment Hinata. Please answer me. The girl groaned weakly in his arms. Hinata. His movements were frantic as he gently brushed her hair out of her eyes. Slowly those lavender orbs opened, they were half-lidded and dreamy looking. Narutokan, she groaned. The tone froze Naruto, it wasn't in a friendly tone. It was something deeper. Something more along the lines of lust and desire. Needless to say it freaked him out. Anada, are you alright? He asked timidly. Seemingly ignoring him she drew closer, eyes still hazy Narutaku and she stressed, bringing her face closer and closer to his, making his eyes go wide. Wade and his protests were cut off when her lips met his, slowly oh so very slowly her tongue slid gently along his lips. Oh Kami, where did she learn to kiss like that? His eyes were wide with shock. Wait, why is she kissing me like that? His thoughts were broken off with the kisses pulled back, still in her own little world. Anada's eyes closed contentedly this is the best dream ever, I just wish this could be real life she thought quietly, as she held what she thought was her imaginary crush. My Naruto-kun, I love you so much Naruto-kun she laid her head on his chest. Naruto's eyes widened even more. She. She loves me. Since when? He wondered, as he hesitantly wrapped his arms around her. Anada was content, even if this was a dream, she still wanted to hold Naruto, she listened to her Narutokan's heartbeat, feeling. His warmth. Wait. Feeling. Heartbeat. Suddenly her eyes weren't so hazy and her movements not so dreamy, she looked up into Naruto's face in shock, Naruto. She whimpered. The Aya. This isn't a dream is it? The pleading look in her eyes nearly broke his heart, it seemed like her whole world was crashing down around her. No Hinata. It isn't. 
Her eyes widened as her face fell, her body slowly started shaking with barely controlled sobs. He was surprised at her sudden tears. He could only watch as she cried in his arms. After what seemed like forever he couldn't take it anymore Hinata. He called gently while slightly shaking her, which caused her to look him in the eyes. Slowly he reached out and cupped her face with his hands and brought her face closer to his to return the kiss she gave him. Her eyes, like his before, widened in shock. He. He's kissing me back. Does that mean he likes me? The girl could only go with the flow as their lips met in another tender embrace. Slowly as before the kiss broke, but this time with a smiling Naruto and a stunned Anne Narutokan. There we go, no more tears he threw her his trademark grin. The couple minutes of awkward silence filled the air as the two held eye contact with deep blue orbs, staring into pale lavender ones. The two sat for a few seconds longer before Naruto broke the silence Hanada, you care for me don't you? Like really care for me? It was a simple question, but the young girl could tell that it was something much deeper than just a question, like what she answered would be extremely important. The eyes, I do Narutokan. I've been watching you since the day we met, you always make me feel better when I'm around Eiyu. The girl's stuttering was all too cute for the blonde boy, he chuckled lightly, before his face grew solemn. Dad I, I have to tell you something, something you may not like the girl's ears perked up at the tone of his voice, what could be so important that he'd sound so reserved like that? He sighed once you remember what I told the class about how I have a bloodline. She nodded well what I didn't tell any of you was I'm also the last member of two clans, my mother and father were both the last of their clans as well. The girl was slightly surprised that her Narutokan was that important, but she nodded again to show she understood. Well the night I gained my bloodline I was taken before the council to discuss my fate, many of the council, especially the civilian council hated me. The reason they hate me is Hinata. Sai you know the story of how Yandame defeated Kaiubi, right he was sweating a bit and apprehension filled his body. This was going to be difficult to say. She nodded, getting a sinking feeling in her stomach. The Yandame killed the Kaiubi on October 10th, the night of the attack. Only half right Hinata, yes the Yandame fraud and defeated Kaiubi, but no he did not kill it. Kaiubi is a massive chakra given form and consciousness, you can't kill that. So he did the only thing he could do to save the village, he sealed that power away. Do you know where he sealed it, Hinata? As the girl looked him in the eyes she saw sadness within those pure blue eyes, taking what luster was there and dulling it with pain. She shook her head, but by the way Naruto was acting and how the village treated him. She could guess well enough. I hold the Kaiubi within me, Hinata, the story I told about my bloodline was for the most part a lie. The girl's eyes widened, but she kept quiet as Naruto continued. You don't have to worry about me becoming a Kaiubi reborn though, the seal on my stomach. He raised his shirt and channeled a bit of chakra to show her the seal keeps the Kaiubi locked up tight, but that doesn't stop people from hating me Hinata. He chuckled bitterly. Hell they were going to. To put this bluntly, whore me off to those willing. When I reached an age that I was sexually active they would use me as breeding stock. Hinata's mouth hung open slightly. He looked at her and chuckled again yeah, I know, horrible isn't it? Well, thankfully Hakajiji thought ahead of time to counter the council's plans, knowing that my blood was now worth more than gold to them. He. He. Well. He tried to find the right words but couldn't, so he decided to tell her about Anko a woman by the name of Anko Midrashi found me that night when my bloodline activated. She. She was like me. Hated by the villagers. She was actually going to adopt me that night, but Jiji said that he had already tried that and failed, so he came up with a way for both of us to be together. Anada's face fell at this, she could tell where this was going. I see you understand he sighed yeah, to keep me away from the council and to allow Anko to care for me he. Married us. Anko Midarashi is actually Anko Yuzumaki, we've been married five years now. A single tear fell down Hinata's cheek, to have her Prince Charming return her affections, only to lose him a moment later. But. He sighed, causing the girl to perk up slightly there was one other thing that was talked about. The Clan Restoration Act. Under the Kraz laws I can legally have more than one wife, and that's where this discussion is going, I know it seems shallow of me but. Anata, if you truly do love me like you say you do and it's not some fangirlish phase, then I'm offering the chance to you she meant to say something, but he held a hand up to stop her, you don't have to answer me now, if you want we can date or something to see where this goes. I've already talked this over with Anko, and she's entirely cool with me dating multiple women, how she's cool with it, I honestly don't know, but, yeah. He snorted a bit in amusement. Anata looked lost as she thought over what he had said, on the one hand she was glad that she still had a chance with Naruto, but on the other there was just something odd about being one of someone's wives, it just seemed to take the magic out of being married, but again, on the other hand, she was a rather pragmatic girl, and she was also a ninja with a strict set of morals to follow. Being a whiny fangirl lusting after the perfect man and perfect wedding wasn't one of those morals, although it just so happened that the perfect man for her just so happened to be eligible and married. 
Would that even be the right word for his circumstances? Maybe multi-eligible. Would be a better description. She rubbed her hands together thoughtfully. I suppose it all comes down to one thing really, can I share? She looked her crush in the eyes, his clear blue eyes reflecting everything back to her, they were full of life, full of love regardless of who he spent time with. He smiled again, this time one of his genuine smiles, not as big but just as infectious. Her heart melted in her chest as she sat there quietly deciding one of the greatest choices in her young life. Narutakan. How? How do you feel about all of this, I know what I feel, but what do you feel? She bit her lip nervously. Naruto stared off into the distance for a moment before speaking. Hinata, I had to choose to marry Anko. A child had to decide his future like that. Even after all this time I still feel that the lake of loneliness. I know I can spend time with Anko and it goes away some, but it's still there. He sighed I think it's because I didn't have anyone that cared for me in my childhood. He stared off into the distance until I met Anko I was completely alone except for Jiji and the Ichirakus and even then they were never as close as they could be, sure I knew the men respect them greatly, but they never gave me any love sure there was affection and a lot of caring, but never anything as close as a mother or father's love or even a lover's love really. So to answer your question. Honestly, I don't know. Anko told me that I have enough room in my heart for more than one person and I'd like to think that she's right, but again, I don't know. Anada seemed disheartened by that answer then why give me this chance at all? He chuckled lightly, well I can't really say, if you want a reason. He scratched his chin thoughtfully. I guess you can say I just felt like it, her face twisted in confusion just felt like it. Hey, yeah Hinata, I don't really know anything about being a husband or father. If that ever comes around. But I do know how to be a friend to someone, if you want to go deeper then we can start out as friends and go from there, that's why I said we should date before we do anything drastic. She stared at her crush for a good long while, it was a difficult decision, one that she had to weigh against everything she knew, but answer she did. I'll do it. Nani? Naruto's face vaulted from his sitting position, how that's possible, I don't know. He turned back quickly to Hinata to see a warm smile on her face. You'll do what? Date me or marry me? Both. Her smile took up her entire face. Naruto just sweat dropped at the answer. Okay, did not see that one coming. She must really like me. Taking a few moments to compose himself he asked. How about we make today a date then? Those were the magic words, instantly Hinata's eyes lit up and her entire face flushed red. Oh yeah, she really likes me a shiver went up his spine as Hinata grabbed hold of him. Let's go Narutakin. There wasn't a single stutter in that sentence, and she sounded like the happiest person alive at the moment, another chill went up his spine as she pulled him back down to the village. In a galaxy far far away on a peaceful little planet, we find a small green creature meditating in silence. Slowly it opened its eyes and looked towards the stars in the night sky. The disturbance in the force, I sense. A great evil, awoken it has. Hmm. By problem, it is not. It closed its eyes and resumed its meditation. Naruto-kun. Hinata sang. Ami help me he cried, as a pair of hands grabbed him, dragging him off to another place on their date. Chapter 8. Day. So she's in on this whole multiple wives thing then. Anko eyed the sheepish looking Naruto and the blushing Hinata behind him. Uh. Yeah, turns out she kinda has a huge crush on me. Naruto chuckled. Dust a crush? Anko raised her eyebrow. Naruto scratched the back of his head nervously er. The make out for almost an hour with tongue kind of crushed. Said eyebrows disappeared into her hairline. Hey then Anko stared at the blushing girl, who upon closer inspection, was rubbing her legs together suggestively, which made Anko's other eyebrow disappear. She turned to look at Naruto in surprise crush nothing, this girl is about ready to jump his bones, it's only me and her modesty keeping her from following through. Damn Gaki you bagged a minx. Anko licked her lips a little and grinned. Naruto paled when she did that, that could only mean one thing. I'm sorry Hinata-chan. Really, really sorry. Alright then, Hinata, come with me she grabbed the girl and all but dragged her into an adjacent room to explain a few things to the girl. The sounds of said explanation brought a thin trail of blood from the blonde's nose before everything went black for him. Meanwhile in the other room Anko was grinning madly well there he went Anko cackled mentally, knowing the boy had passed out from the noises she was getting the Hyuga girl to make, after she heard him hit the floor, she stopped her playtime to give the Hyuga girl a firm glare. Alright girly listen up she snapped, making the partially violated era stiffen a bit. The eyes Ankison. The girl replied nervously, still reeling from the sensations the snake mistress Ave her. I've heard the Gaki's reasons for this little addition to the family, but now I want yours, I want to know if you really love him and why. Do it quickly before I start playing with you again. She wiggled an eyebrow suggestively which made the younger girl blush furiously. Well, Naritakan is. She blushed again just thinking about the boy. Anko smacked the girl on top of the head, quit stuttering and tell me Dumbus. 
Oh we the high Uga wine drubbing the bump on her head, a look from Anko told her another would be coming soon if she didn't hurry. The girl sighed and took a deep breath. Narutakan. I've always admired him, ever since we met, it was that day you were casing him to that playground, he sort of crashed into me, and we talked for a minute or so before he left again. She poked her fingers together nervously I can't say I believe in love at first sight, but I fell for Narutakan just like he fell on me. She chuckled a little bit with a blush. I have watched him for a long time now, and he's always inspired me to better myself, just watching the training he goes through when he's by himself is amazing, and I can't help but admire him. The girl blushed again it helps that he's so sexy with those ears and tail. She turned an even deeper scarlet when she admitted that, which caused a wide grin to cross Anko's face. So you love him then? The snake mistress prodded. Yes Hinata nodded with every bit of my heart, but Anko smiled. That's all I needed to know. Hinata stared at Anko like she was crazy, which to be fair she kind of was. That's all. Yep, as long as you really love that, which from the sound and looks of it, you really, really do. Just don't hurt him and we won't have any problems. Hinata nodded dumbly wondering just what the hell she'd gotten herself into, only to realize that Anko was staring hungrily at the girl, who let out a little leap of fear, which made Anko look feral as she descended on her prey. The noises of which were heard all around the forest of death making many of the native creatures look towards the tower and somehow or another being sentient enough to sweat drop at the noise, which by all rights shouldn't be happening there. The next day, training ground three. Hello team. Kakashi hailed them. Thought you're late. Came the annoyed reply. The I smiled sorry that a black cat crossed my path so I had to take another path. You do realize you could just shunch in here right? Naruto deadpanned. But then where's the fun of the journey? Came the irritating reply which made the three genin facipum. Okay fuck the explanations let's just train and maybe stay sane enough to do a mission afterwards. Naruto growled. Oh, and just what kind of training do you want to do Naruto? Kakashi looked questioningly at the blonde with his one good eye, not forgetting that little boast about him training his teammates yesterday. Naruto stared blankly at him, then turned to look at Sakura and Sasuke. He frowned for a moment, then snapped his fingers. Got it. Yo Kakashi, do you mind if I teach Sakura and Sasuke about chakra natures? Kakashi pulled his itcha itcha out and waved dismissively at him sure knock yourself out. Subtly though he kept a keen eye on the boy, wondering just what he was up to. Naruto sighed and turned to his teammates alright you two, let's see what natures you both have. He pulled out a couple of pieces of paper and handed it to them, channel your chakra into those slips of paper. They stared at him questioningly, just do it. He sighed. They nodded and sent chakra into the paper. Sakura's paper soaked with a corner of the paper crumbled into dust, Sasuke's on the other hand crumpled with a large corner catching fire. Both dropped their slips in shock, much like Naruto had his first time. Alright, it looks like Sakura is a water element with an earth sub. Sasuke is a lightning element with a fire sub. Naruto nodded to himself already coming up with a decent training exercise. Alright I got something. Naruto pulled out his water bottle and tossed it to the, alright Sakura, for you, I want you to use your chakra to try and spin the water around in that bottle, once you can get the water spinning at a decent speed, I'll show you the next step. He glanced at the Acha. Sasuke, do you have a pair of kunai on you? Sasuke nodded and produced the number of kunai. Alright now what I want you to do is hold those two kunai with the tips almost touching each other, and I want you to force chakra into one of the kunai. Then, try and arc your chakra from one blade tip to the other. If you both complete this exercise you'll have already attained a small mastery over your main element, after you've gained a mastery over that element, I'll help you work with your secondary element. Hey Naruto. Yes Sakura. How do you know all of this stuff? I've only read bits of elemental training, but. She looked at him diverting her attention between him and the bottle of water, already the water inside was slowly starting to spin. He snorted it's quite simple really. He held up a piece of chakra paper and pushed chakra into it, like it had several times before, it split in half twice, and each corner went to one of the other four elements on top of the foxy bits, I have a major affinity to all five major elements, along with my natural bloodline element, ice. He flew through several hand signs. And brought a hand to his mouth water release. Mizurapa a small rush of water flew from his mouth and landed in a puddle nearby, going through several other seals he brought his hand down on the edge of the water ice release. Frozen wave the water flash froze when his hand came into contact with it, had anyone been standing in the puddle they'd have been anchored to the ground. However he smirked and went through a few more hand seals, due to my affinity to the major elements and a few other things that I'm not gonna go into detail about, I can use other elemental bloodlines as well. Observe, lava release. Lava globs. A wad of lava flew from Naruto's mouth and struck the ice, instantly causing it to hiss in protest before Naruto fired off another Mizurapa to harden the lava. So it's true then. Kakashi mused, flicking a curious eye from his book to glance at the large chunk of rock in the puddle that used to be ice. 
I guess what he told me is correct, but for him of all people to have a mastery of the five main elements, and the ability to replicate other elemental bloodlines naturally without the blood of that bloodline in his veins. This team just got interesting. And if they can get their teamwork and skills up to a manageable degree, this team will be a force to be reckoned with. He noticed the looks of shock on Sakura and Sasuke's faces hmm, perhaps those two will learn something from Naruto after all. Sakura was watching Naruto's display with awe. Is this really Naruto? He was such a baka in the academy, always joking around, but this. This is just too much she glanced at Sasuke who had a similar look on his face as the one she now had. Sasuke for the most part was boiling with jealousy, to have that much power at your fingertips was unreal to him damn it, if only I had that kind of power killing Itachi would be child's play. Maybe I can get the dope to teach me how he does it, then maybe. The grit of his teeth, the thought of bound to someone lesser than him to gain power, did not appeal to the proud Ichiha, even if Naruto was a decent guy and one of his few friends. The thought still sickened him. Okay. Any questions? Naruto barked, snapping the two out of their thoughts. Sakura looked at the bottle she had in her hand, just what are you planning for us to learn about Naruto? Sakura asked curiously. Well now, that's an interesting question, Naruto mused. Toss me that bottle real quick, a toss and a pop later the cap on the bottle was removed, what I'm going to teach you too is what I myself discovered while learning how to control my elements. What most people don't know, or at least don't think about, is how to control elements in their base forms, most people use hand signs to shape and form a, but to be perfectly honest, you could perform jutsu without a single hand sign, sure you can do that with regular as well if you practice enough with it, but I mean actual control over the elements around you. He held up the bottle take for instance this water bottle he spun the water and the bottle around a few times, infusing it with his chakra before taking a sip. With a sharp exhale he spat the held water at a nearby tree, which impacted with a noticeable thud, despite it being only a small amount of water. That is what I'm talking about he pointed to the dent made in the tree. What I just did is something akin to water release. Tepndama which creates a bullet of water from the mouth, while not nearly as strong as a tepndama it's still useful. He walked over to Sasuke getting inches from him, what if an enemy has gotten in close, too close for you to dodge your form hand signs. Just have a lugi or a sip of water ready, and you can hit the guy in his face with the equivalent to a strong punch, hell you hit him in the eye, and you could blind one of them. The Achiha shivered, one of the few things he feared was being blinded, as were all users in a way. For lightning he continued, as a slight buzzing noise was heard. Looking down at Naruto's hand there was a small bit of lightning chakra on the tips of his thumb and pinky. He reached out and touched Sasuke which made the boy jump back in pain from the sudden jolt. I called it the taser. Shocking isn't it? Naruto cackled. Sasuke just glared at him. Boy don't give me that look, you're lucky I toned that down, that was only about one fourth the power I can put into that thing, if I went full out with that tap, you'd be twitching on the ground right now. Besides, I can teach you how to use that ability if you'll stop brooding for a moment. Sasuke continued to glare at him. But couldn't help but agree with Naruto Ugh, fine, I let him teach me something. If anything I can use it against him later on, not to mention that last attack was baddest. Ichiha nodded. Naruto grinned alrighty then. A shiver went up Sasuke and Sakura's spine. A few hours later, Mission Hall. Iruka couldn't help but snicker at the sight before him. Naruto had a wide grin on his face, beside him, and completely soaked to the bone was a waterlogged Sakura. Next to her was a smoking Sasuke Ichiha, every once in a while a stray spark would jump between the spaces in his hair. Behind the three of them was Kakashi who had a wide-eye smile on his face, but if you looked closer, you could tell he was silently laughing at two of his more unfortunate students. Ahem. Jonin cleared his throat to keep himself from laughing. Team 7 here for their first rank mission. Iruka snapped to attention ah, ah yes your first rank mission. Let me see here. The scar dug through a small mound of scrolls to one side of him and pulled out a single scroll. This should be a decent enough challenge for your team. He tossed a scroll to Kakashi who opened it and began to read only to pale dramatically and stare at the now grinning in front of him. You really don't like me do you? He groaned, which only made Aruka's green wider. Fine. Team 7. Mission to capture Tora, accepted. 20 yards till in reach of the target Naruto's voice over the radio whispered. At closer and prepared to ambush Kakashi whispered back. Roger came the unanimous response. Moments later. HHRG, commerce pussy. Naruto's voice roared out around the forest followed shortly by a hair-raising hiss and the sound of claws tearing into flesh. A.N. Hey he's a master of elements not animals, wrong story. Mission to capture Tora successful Kakashi beamed, happy to have stayed the hell away from that demon spawn of Satan known as Tora. Casualties. He looked at Naruto who was lying in a pool of his own blood, silently cursing whatever god spawned that fucking cat, and ever so slowly moving his hands in a motion that suggested he was trying to strangle something. 
5.5. Now you know why I hate people Kairubi replied happily using whatever mental communication powers she had to annoy the crap out of Naruto. Shut it woman. He groaned mentally, perfectly content to let his healing power take care of the bleeding. How the hell did I get scratches on my ass? Funny thing is, when you passed out with the cat in your arms you landed on her and she proceeded to tear you a new asshole. Why is there the kanji for Tor scratched into my ass? Got something to remember her by. Ten minutes and deus ex machina healing later. Okay, that's the last of the blood. Naruto whistled happily, that is until he noticed that the rest of his team had left. Sighing why do they do this to me? Maybe because you waterlogged one and turned the other into a lightning rod. Good job on that by the way, way to spread misery to those around you. Yeah whatever. Naruto stared up at the clock to check the time. Hm I wonder why they left, there's still a good 34 hours left of the day, we could take at least one more mission in that time, couldn't we? Yeah I don't get that about you humans, even though there's plenty of time in the day you still rarely do all of what you can, that kind of behavior is confusing. Well we do tend to enjoy ourselves a lot he nodded sagely and the more time in the day we have to have fun the better, after all it's not like we can be in two places at once. Came an odd growl from Kairubi in Naruto's mind. Kairu? What's up? He was getting concerned when she didn't say anything for a good 30 seconds. Hit, what if you could be in two places at once to do more of these drank missions? The fox said finally with a strange tone to its voice, something like curiosity but not. Well that could help a lot in making some quick cash. You're thinking of using shadow clones aren't you? The light girly chuckle filled his head. Have I ever told you how much I appreciate you? He asked sincerely. No, but you should definitely start, my vanity commands it. The two shared a quick chuckle together. With the reveal that Kairubi was less of a dick. Er. Bitch than previously thought it was much easier to get along with the woman. Er. Vixen. Thing, fuck it. Yes, please do. She licked her lips sensually in Naruto's head, which made the blonde-haired teen all kinds of uncomfortable. Great not only do I have a sadistic and horny wife I have a sadistic and horny demon vixen in me head, fuck my life. Gladly. She replied perkily. Not you damn it. The boy sighed in defeat, that is until the light tapping of fingers drew his attention to Aruka, who was giving him a questioning look, apparently the range of emotions passing over his face must have looked rather odd. Yeah Aruka. What are you still doing here making faces fool? The Chunin's head swelled comically to yell at our blonde haired hero. Naruto just stared blankly, but in his head. Crikey, here we see the big head jutsu in its natural environment, what a beautiful and dangerous creature. I'm gonna poke it with a stick. Hiss oh it's angry. The FFFT haha the Kaiubi snorted in amusement. Moments of possible insanity aside, the Oirikasen say Naruto hailed him, deflating the Chunin down to less comical levels. Yes Naruto. The scarred man looked curiously at the boy. And I do missions on my own as long as they are right for my rank. Aruka scratched his head trying to remember the few rules of conduct for Genin regarding taking missions, and as far as he knew nothing in the books, said a Genin can't take a solo mission, as long as it was within his level of skill. Sure Naruto I don't see why not. What about multiple missions? Chuanin nodded, a bit confused. Well then Naruto smiled, could I see what missions you have? He pointed to a pile of scrolls off to the side, you kind of backed up lately Iruka sensei. The boy sweat dropped at the massive tower of scrolls sitting next to the table. Well it's not usually this bad, but yes there are quite a few missions that don't get completed sometimes, but that's just because we're a bit undermanned to handle all the requests that come in all the time. More like the Genin teams are too lazy to take more than one mission Naruto snorted as he dug through the pile of scrolls let's see. Dog walking, nope. Painting fences. And pulling weeds, nada. After about 10 minutes of sorting through all of the dranks which for lack of a better term could just be called chores Naruto, five of the ones that paid well and weren't obscenely difficult or time consuming. He thumped the small pile down on the table which brought a raised eyebrow from Aruka. You sure you want to take this many Naruto? Naruto nodded. Yeah Iruka sensei I'm sure. I need the money to pay for my own things and doing dranks is the easiest way to make money. But aren't you staying with Anko? Chunin was curious. Everyone in the village knew that Naruto and Anko were staying together, but unlike most of Konoha he knew that the two were actually married, Saratobi had put a gag order on telling the populace that the two were actually husband and wife, leaving it to become a rumor. While Naruto had told Aruka after the man proved that he was a good guy and one of the few people that actually treated him as a person. But that's just it Aruka, if anything happens and Anko can't work, it'll be up to me to handle paying for everything, and since I became an adult the moment I put this headband on I can't just ignore my responsibility to her. Haruka would have laughed at how devoted the boy sounded towards the woman, but then he realized that this was something genuine from the boy. Anko was one of the few people who had seen him at his worst, without a mask to hide his true feelings. She, along with Saratobi the Ichirakus and himself, were the only people to truly accept him, so this was a touchy subject for the blonde. 
I understand, he sighed. You know you're a lot like me Naruto, I had to take care of myself too, though I was a bit older than you when I started he grinned and rubbed his nose in embarrassment. If you need any help or advice you know who to ask. Can I ask you about anything? Anything. Naruto got a devious smile on his face, oh then can I ask you all about that then. Haruka turned beet red, he knew exactly what Naruto was referring to, but he wasn't gonna give the genin the satisfaction of knowing he was getting to the scarred man. Ah, get out of here, Anko's crazy is starting to rub off on you. Haruka huffed, marking the scrolls down and placing them on the desk in front of him. That's not all she's rubbing off. He cackled madly as he grabbed his scrolls and ran out the door, leaving a sputtering Aruka in his dust. Adaruka facipumed. Better make that facetist. Actually, better make that both at the same time. Ouch. Ah that was refreshing, Naruto chuckled, as he put so much distance between himself and the mission hall. Hey even I have to admit that was pretty devious of you kid, the look on his face was priceless. Oh this is just the beginning, the prank king of Konoha has just gotten started muhahaha. As much as I enjoy your semi-descent evil, why did you choose those five missions they weren't anything that special when you looked at them, aside from the fact that they're easy and pay well, you seem to put a lot of thought into them. Naruto grabbed one of the scrolls and opened it. It was a part-time job at a bakery to handle the oven in the kitchen. What in this scroll looks like it would interest me. You could almost see the fox woman's eyebrows scrunch together as she examined the mission, then a smile spread across her face. This is training isn't it, every one of these missions has something to do with the five main elements. Got it in one. He grinned helping at a power plant will allow me to work on what lightning I have. Working the oven at the bakery, which just so happens to be a wood-burning oven, will help my fire. Picking up trash by the river will help with my water. Clearing a field of rocks for earth and helping repair the wine mills around town will help with wind. I gotta hand it to ya, only you would think to turn chores into training. Naruto shook his head, nah this wasn't my idea. To be honest these jobs were originally used for exactly what I'm using them for, training. Back in the old days they were used to promote teamwork and act as a form of training. Clearing a field of stones could easily be a physical exercise. Working the ovens would increase your tolerance to harsh temperatures like you'd find in wind country. Knowing how a power plant functions could give you valuable info on how to sabotage one in an enemy village, thus causing panic and confusion, along with giving an invading squad a much needed advantage by allowing them to do their mission under cover of complete darkness. So you see, dranks, when used properly, are invaluable to a shinobi in training. And just who came up with this method of training? Naruto cracked a grin, the first hokage of course. How nice. The fox replied blandly the man who first imprisoned me with his wife is also the one who'd give my newest container a great way to train in using powers indirectly gained from me. Naruto chuckled. The irony of the situation was not lost on me either. Whatever, let's just get this over with, I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable with you leaving Hinata with Anko. There was clear agitation in her voice. Concerned. Really. The raised brow showed his confusion, just why would the fox care about someone other than itself? Unlike you I know exactly what she is capable of, not to mention that Hyuga girl is going to be your mate kit, and by extension mine, and I don't want that snake woman violating her beyond what is acceptable, at least until you can get a hold of her. A barely controlled feeling of revulsion ran down Naruto's spine. There are levels of acceptable violation. Do I want to know? There are three, and until you are married to her. No. Okay then. As he proceeded to forget that conversation ever happened. Chapter 9. Mission to Wave. I'm skip four weeks and a metric fuck ton of dranks later. So you think you're ready for a crank mission do you? The third mused as he stared at the irritated faces of Team 7. Surprisingly Naruto was fairly calm about the whole situation. Apparently he didn't mind dranks that much since his clones take care of most of the work. The third had noticed this while checking on Naruto through his crystal ball, to the stunned surprise of the age cage. That, and Saratobi knew the kid must be loaded right now, he'd already done well over 150 dranks that month 56 per day, and at roughly 5,000 ryo per mission, the kid was more than well off. An roughly 50 United States dollars per 250,300 United States dollars per day, or between 7.5k and 9k United States dollars in all. Yes sir, I believe my team has earned a chance at taking on a crank. You could tell Kakashi was sucking up to Saratobi, hell even Sakura could tell, and that's saying something. The third side well seeing that your team has enough missions between the three of them to constitute a crank, I don't see why they couldn't take one. He lit his pipe and took a nice long drag. I thank you Hikaju-sama. Kakashi let out a little bow. Very well, I have just a mission for your team today. He turned to a by the door. Send in the client please. The Chunin nodded and walked out, a few minutes later an old man wobbled in, you could tell he was drunk by the smell that followed him, not to mention the open bottle of sake in his hand. What? These bunch of brats are gonna be guarding me? The old man slurred. 
yes, Team 7 will be escorting Tazuna the bridge builder here to the land of waves where his next bridge is to be built and will stay for the duration to protect him and his bridge from any bandits or highwaymen that may interfere with that. Bakashi turned to the Tazuna don't worry sir, these three may be genin, but I am a jonin rank ninja and their teacher, so you don't need to fear any bandits while we're with you. Kakashi I smiled at him, yeah whatever. He turned back to leave the room. Meet us at the gate in one hour. Kakashi called out, the only response was a wave of a hand. He turned to the genin present. Alright you heard, go pack your things and be at the gate in one hour. Alright, finally a decent mission, no more of the crap work for a while. Naruto was nearly jumping for joy at the prospect of leaving the village on his first real mission, even if it was to protect some old goat of a bridge builder. It was a start and that's all that mattered. You know Hinata's going to jump you when you get back right. The fox chuckled, I swear that girl has become so attached to you, I'm surprised she has infused your tail with how much she grabs onto the damn thing. Ugh, don't remind me. I know I only really showed the thing off once in class when I first started, but seriously did she have to pull an anko on my tail. Actually I'd be more afraid of what her father is going to do to your tail. Naruto let out an unconscious shiver. Don't remind me, in Eric flashback of doom, three weeks ago, in Adichin. Naruto started, the two were sitting comfortably in the Tower of Death. After Anko's little session with Hinata, the young Hayuga had taken a liking to the place, if only to be around the snake mistress more. That and become a symbiotic life form with her ever-present center of the universe, Naruto. Or more accurately the tail he just so happened to show her not a few minutes ago. Said girl proceeded to wrap her body around said appendage and then started to snuggle the furry thing. Hinata didn't really give a shit at that point, but it was starting to freak Naruto out. Yes Naruto-kun, Hinata replied sweetly, his tail wrapped firmly around the girl. So are you still going to marry me and everything, I know it's been a week and we've gone on a few dates and all but does everything feel right to you? The Hayuga girl nodded yes Naruto-kun, I haven't felt happier in my life. I see you're not stuttering anymore, what happened? The blonde looked curiously at the girl, for her to stop stuttering, meant she overcame the confidence issues she had told him about on their first date, but how the hell did she do it so fast? Anko's aggressive therapy helped she smiled again, but there was a tint of red this time. Ah that's why. A large sweat drop was starting to form on Naruto's head. Wait, I forgot to ask, how has your dad taken to us dating and our planned marriage? The girl's face fell oh that's not good. I haven't told him yet she replied sadly, he knows I'm dating you, but the marriage is still hidden from him. Don't worry Hinatachan. He wrapped the girl into a big hug, which got the desired EP was looking for, no matter what therapy Anko used, Hinata was still Hinata. We'll burn that bridge when we cross it, if it helps any I'll try and get him alone and have a nice father and chat, really? She sounded hopeful. For you Hinatachan, anything he gave her a warm smile which made the girl snuggle her fuzzy boa, Aka Naruto's tail even harder, causing some discomfort for our hero. Then flashback, Naruto shivered again as a phantom pain reined up his tail. Yeah I'll talk to her dad when I get back from this mission. Oh you poor, poor bastard. Thanks for the vote of confidence. She giggled like a schoolgirl. You're welcome. At the gate, he's late. Sakura growled. And you're surprised by that? Naruto asked, staring down at a pair of cards, hit me he barked at Sasuke who dealt him another card. That's 21. Damn dog, remind me to take you to a casino to clear the place out, how many wins is that now? 42. He replied blankly, Sasuke's face crunched up in thought. Dot I suddenly got a feeling. That the universe is fucking with us. Welcome to my world. You like it here, we have cookies. Naruto replied maniacally. Make it tomatoes and you got a deal. Sasuke barked with conviction, pumping his fist in the air. Smack, smack, you two are hopeless. Sakura huffed as the two rubbed the lumps on their heads. Ah you're just jealous that Sasuke's hanging out with me a lot more than you Naruto got a sly look on his face, or is it you think something's going on between us, Yaoi Sakichin. Smack, in your dreams, Baka the lump on Naruto's head now had a smaller one on top of it. Naruto could only chuckle though, seeing as Sakura barely put any power behind that one or the one before for that matter. Over the past month Team 7 had bonded surprisingly well. Sasuke seemed mellower and friendlier, though that was probably from Naruto showing Sasuke how to use his lightning element, nothing like a sense of accomplishment to bring people together after all. However when Naruto had shown him how to use the gleam that looked eerily similar to his when he pulled pranks was visible in the Ichiha's eye and that sent chills down the blonde maverick's spine. Whether they were good or bad chills had yet to be established. As for Sakura, the girl took to her water element like. Well. A fish to water. It only took an abnormally large amount of partial drownings to get the girl into tip-top shape with her element, she couldn't do anything big with her reserves as small as they were, but what she lacked in power, she more than made up for in control. Naruto chuckled evilly it's funny, she took the Tepndama knockoff I showed her and refined it down to insane degrees, now it's almost as effective as a regular Tepndama. 
She doesn't even need seals either, just gather chakra and bam. It is impressive, they took to their elements better than you did. Kaiwubi piped in. Well, uh. They had me teaching them while I had to find out everything they now know on my own, so it took me a bit longer. It's a good thing we were able to get her to learn some medicine as well. Yeah he snorted silently even if she's coming along nicely with water we definitely need a medic, I know I'm a baddest motherfucker, and all but even I get hurt. It's definitely a good idea, wonder why no one's thought of it before. Meanwhile is some bay city in fire country a blonde haired woman sitting at a slot machine sneezed violently, causing the machine to hit trip sevens. Someone must be talking bad about me the woman mused as she scooped her winnings into a bucket. Back with our hero we find him winning another hand, this time at poker. Damn it. The Ichiha grumbled, seriously dude, we need to market you as a good luck charm, what does that make it now? 69 wins. God I'm getting that feeling that the universe is fucking with us again. Don't worry you get used to it, Naruto waved off his concern, now deal the cards. After another 10 minutes of Naruto winning hands, Kakashi finally decided to grace them with his presence. Yo, glad to see you're all here. Naruto turned an interested look at the cycloptic what's the excuse this time, huh? Kakashi shrugged a, I got jumped by some woman on the way here, she had her way with me in an academy broom closet and when she was finished she wanted to snuggle. Who was I to deny her? Both Naruto and Sasuke dropped their cards, Sakura dropped her jaw, Tazuna. Who just so happened to be just as late as Kakashi, due to him having a hangover dropped his sake bottle, which he promptly caught before it hit the ground. No sense in wasting good booze. Naruto's laughter filled the air. Okay if that's a lie I'll give you a 10 for originality. Kakashi I smile if it's the truth then hot damn ha 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 ha. Well, I'll be happy to admit that you three will never know the Jonin pert out, creeping out all of those present. Not that I'd want to know what your sex life is like. Naruto remarked blandly. Oh and what would you know about a sex life, Mr. Virgin? Kakashi raised an eyebrow, hoping to get a rise out of the youth. Sadly Naruto just gave him a blank look, he also raised an eyebrow which made Kakashi sweat a little when he remembered that Sirotobi said the boy was married to Anko. All he'd have to do was ask the kinky woman to do anything, and she'd most likely try it. Okay then, moving on. Kakashi wisely dodged that bullet. Are all of you packed? He glanced between his three students, his gaze finally landing on Naruto, who didn't have a pack on. Naruto, where is your pack? In response, Naruto pulled a scroll out of his back pocket. Sealed up tight in this scroll sensei. He flipped the scroll once before pocketing it. You know how to make storage scrolls. Kakashi sounded surprised and genuinely interested. Yeah I've dabbled in the sealing arts here and there. I like making my own things and making my own exploding tags and storage scrolls makes my life a lot easier. He grinned, hoping Kakashi would drop the subject. Alright Naruto, just don't try to learn anything that is out of your range, I don't want you accidentally ripping a part of your soul out or blowing up half of Konoha, just be extremely careful in what you do, one wrong line can destroy a lot more than it can create. Yes sensei, I take every precaution when I'm practicing seals, I even use shadow clones to do the seal, so I don't get caught up in anything if something goes wrong. But, he I smiled. Now let's get going. He turned away from Naruto, not catching the slight sigh of relief Naruto let out, he didn't need to know how much he knew about seals, or the real reason why he was studying them. Hey Kakashi sensei how long till we get to wave country anyway? Naruto asked as they walked down the road leading away from the village, the trees around them blowing in the wind. Well Kakashi looked at the position of the sun, going at this pace we should get there by this time tomorrow. Naruto nodded and they continued walking in a comfortable silence. Kakashi stared at the pages of his Icha Icha book when he noticed a small puddle of water along the roadside. In the middle of a sunny day when it hadn't rained for weeks. That's not suspicious or anything, by the feel of it, to Michunin. Hmm. A let's see how much they've improved. He chuckled mentally and turned back to his book, silently reading a Kawarimi since he was at the back of the group, thus the first target. Sure enough two men rose from the puddle, in complete silence the two brothers Gozu and Maizu charged, in mere moments they had Kakashi wrapped up in the shuriken chain connected to their gauntlets. One down. Gozu growled, yanking the chain and in a fountain of blood and gore, bits of what was left of Kakashi, hit the ground in a wet puddle. Four more Maizu growled back. Kakashi sensei. Sakura cried. Naruto mentally scoffed come on Sakura he isn't dead, even an idiot could tell those two were there, and if I noticed him, Kakashi sure as hell did. He didn't have time to tell the girl that his Gumzu was getting too close for comfort, flipping through a couple hand seals he slapped a hand on the ground. Earth release. Earth flow spears he yelled, as several spikes rushed up from the ground, pinning the chain that connected the brothers with lances of stone. The two were jerked off their feet as the chain snapped taut, slamming them to the ground in a heap. How did? Maizu grunted, as the two released the chain from their gauntlets. I got the bridge builder. He got to his feet and rushed forward clawed gauntlet leading. 
Naruto jumped in front of the nin and pulled his ninjato out, blocking the slash that would have taken Tazuna's face off. Tazuna backed up and Sakura got in front of him with a kunai ready, while the blade of Naruto's sword got caught between the metal fingers of Maizu's gauntlet, causing several sparks to fly. Not bad brat. Maizu chuckled as he grabbed hold of Naruto's blade and yanked the weapon out of his hands but not good enough. He threw the blade away and took another slash at the blonde who ducked aside and leapt away from him, flashing a single hand seal as the demon brother chased after him, earth release. Earth flow river he tucked into a roll as he struck the ground, a pool of slick mud formed right behind him which the charging man couldn't avoid. As Maizu slid through the brown goo he fell back, not having any traction in the soft mud. Naruto quickly got back to his feet going through a few more seals as he clapped his hands together wood release. Root binding out of the ground hundreds of thin roots latched onto Maizu's body, pinning him, particularly his gauntlet arm, keeping it away from the rest of his body so he wouldn't have a chance to cut himself free. Walking over to his captive he gave a swift kick to Maizu's head, knocking a few brain cells loose and keeping him from retaliating. Meanwhile in a tree overlooking the battle we find a shocked Kakashi. He can use Mokuten as well. Interesting. Maybe I should get him and Tenzin together, that would be an interesting meeting Kakashi knew that Maizu was out of the fight, so he turned his attention to Sasuke. Stop dodging you brat. Uzu yelled angrily, as each of his swipes with the clawed gauntlet flew harmlessly wide, a smirking Achiha dodging each attack. Not a chance, bonehead. He got within Uzu's guard, and a loud buzzing noise was heard. Uzu looked down and noticed a small bit of chakra on the boy's pinky and thumb, what the hell is th? His question was cut off as the digits made contact and a harsh jolt of electricity surged through his body, causing a total loss of muscle control. He slumped bolusly to the ground, gurgling out obscenities at the Achiha brat. I have got to thank Naruto for that, that was awesome. A rare grin crossed Sasuke's features, marveling at what his new toy could do. He tied up Mzu and walked over to Naruto, who was looking through Maizu's equipment. To the ire of the man in question, who was throwing every curse he knew at the wood-manipulating bastard. As he put it. Everybody alright. He asked as he glanced over at Sakura who was still guarding Tazuna. Sakura nodded yay, but what about Kakashi sensei He, yo. Kakashi hailed, appearing behind them in a puff of smoke. Is an asshole. Naruto finished for her. Kakashi sweat dropped, coughing to cover it. Good job team. Now that those two are taken care of. He turned a pointed look at Tazuna who looked nervous just what haven't you told us Tazuna-san. And don't try to lie, I heard those two. He pierced the man with a heavy glare. They were after you and you alone. Azuna looked between the four leaf ninja for a moment before sighing, the country I come from, wave country is under the tyrannical hold of a businessman named Gato Kakashi cut in at this point, wait. Gato. Of Gato shipping and transport, that Kakashi was a bit bugied at the prospect, Gato was one of the richest people in the world, and from the rumors a pretty vicious person to deal with. Azuna scoffed yeah that's him, the little troll. The bastard may look like a legitimate businessman, but on the inside he's a cruel criminal and dictator that controls what he has through force and money. He has a chokehold on my entire country, bleeding us dry of all of our hard-earned money, leaving us with little but poverty. Beside this bridge I'm building is going to connect us to the mainland and break Gato's hold over our country, he knows this and will stop at nothing to kill me. He turned a pleading eye at Kakashi. Please I know I lied, but you can't leave me or my country to this fate, I know I can't pay for it now, but as soon as our country is liberated, we can easily make the money to pay for this, we leave and pay double or triple the amount. Just. Please, all we want is to be free from this accursed bastard. Bakashi stared at the pleading look on Tazuna's face, thinking about what to do, finally he nodded to himself and turned to his genin. Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura. This decision is up to you. Do we stay with the mission or go back to the village? Naruto chuckled. If all Gato's got is the likes of these two bit thugs. He accented that little quip with a kick to Maizu's ribs, getting a grunt and a curse from him. Then we ain't got nothing to worry about. Sasuke nodded his agreement and Sakura reluctantly agreed as well. Speaking of, Sasuke interrupted, what do we do with these two idiots? Bakashi sighed well seeing as you three have agreed to continue we'll just leave them tied up here, I'll send a message back to the village to come pick them up. Won't they just get loose if we tie them up? Sakura asked. Naruto pumped his fist leave that to me ha 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 Naruto chuckled evilly, pulling out a brush and ink bottle from his pouch. The two Miss Nin struggled against their bindings, but to no avail. Naruto approached Mzu and opened his ink pot, with a slight dip and flourish, he began inscribing the ink into his forehead. It was danced to those watching, a quick flick here, a thick curve there, ending in a somewhat elaborate pattern in the center of the man's forehead. Once done Naruto channeled chakra into the seal to set it. With a jolt Mzu hit the ground unconscious, the seal setting into a small swirl pattern inside a circle. He repeated the process with Maizu who was screaming out for his brother, that is until Naruto had his roots bind his mouth and head. 
He finished and completed the seal on Maizu's head before storing the rest of his supplies away, the other man like his brother before him sent into sweet unconsciousness. What the hell was that? Sasuke raised an eyebrow at the blonde. That Sasuke was a containment seal Kakashi explained, it's a seal used by our T&I department to handle dangerous prisoners, the seal drains a captive's chakra and puts them in a stasis, kind of like a coma that can only be broken by those who know how to undo the seal, it's mostly used for transports nowadays. He turned to Naruto let me guess, Anko. Naruto nodded. Very well, tie them to that tree over there, and let's keep going. The three genin nodded and did as told. A few minutes later they were back on the road, but this time they were in a diamond formation with Tizuna at its center. A few hours later they reached the shores of the fire country. A small boat was docked with a single man at the oars. Tizuna. The man greeted them. Thanks again for this Tizuna bowed to the oarsman. No problem, just hurry up, I want to get there as quickly and quietly as possible. Right. Tizuna nodded. Him and Team 7 boarded the boat and the oarsmen started the engine, setting off at a decent pace. An hour into the trip Sasuke turned to Naruto. Hey Naruto. Yes Sasuke. I was wondering, how the hell do you know so many bloodlines? As far as I know, you're an orphan, and I haven't heard of any Uzumaki clans that have a bloodline. That's where you're wrong Sasuke Kakashi broke in the Uzumaki clan, was renowned for its mastery of, the seals they made were on par and not surpassing the skills of the fourth himself. He took a moment to let that sink in. But that in itself is not a bloodline, it's simply bred in skills. As for Naruto, his family's bloodline is Heimton, Ice Release. Although it was rare even for the Uzumaki as they were a distant relative to the now extinct Yuki clan, who were masters of Heimton that ran strong in that tiny clan, however. Due to a civil war being raged in the land of water, where the Uzumaki were originally from the Yuki clan were entirely wiped out. That civil war has been raging for close to two decades now between the Mizukage's forces and a rebel faction of bloodline users. You see the Mizukage has been systematically destroying any and all bloodline user clans. Shock registered between everyone on the boat. Except the rower, he didn't give a shit. But sensei, why would the Mizukage do that? Sakura asked. I don't honestly know, but from the few reports we get from Water Country, bloodline users are hunted down and slaughtered on sight there, it's not a pleasant place to be. Sasuke looked disgusted, in Kanoha he was loved for his bloodline, practically worshipped. He couldn't wrap his head around being hated for that very same bloodline, being hunted down like a dog and killed for something he had no control over, the very thought sickened him. Well that answers my question about his ice bloodline, but how in the hell is he able to use lava and wood release? And for that matter, how is he able to use those bloodlines when we don't have any Imton or Mokuten users in the village? Bakashi was about to say something when Naruto interrupted him. It's alright sensei, I got this. Sasuke the reason I can use multiple bloodlines is because of an accident I had when I was younger. You remember that explosion that woke everyone up a few nights before the Ichiha clan massacre? A slight bit of disgust crossed his face at the mention of the massacre, but he nodded anyway, remembering the event despite the tragedy that happened less than a week later. That explosion was me. K the shocked looks. My ice bloodline activated that night and mixed in all the wrong ways with my fox bloodline, as a result the explosion destroyed my chakra network, but due to my fox bloodline again, I was able to make it back just barely from that, however something happened to my body. Naruto looked down at his hand, clenching and unclenching it, as a few phantom pains went through it. I found out later that what happened to me is called elemental convergence. The short explanation is that when my chakra network was destroyed, it became neutral. When my elementally neutral chakra network was repaired, it sucked in any nearby elements and abilities, I just so happened to land in the forest of death from that explosion. When the convergence started it pretty much turned me into a human vacuum cleaner for anything nearby. Naruto rubbed the bridge of his nose absently, glancing around his hand at his two other teammates. It just so happened that the forest of death is an elementally unstable area, and I drew in all five major elements to such a degree that I'm a damn Rakuto Senen knockoff now, and due to that I can use all five major elements to an almost stupid degree of skill. He drew a deep breath before continuing. As for using bloodline elements. Well, due to my affinities I can mimic quite a few of them, however ice, and for some reason wood are actual bloodlines. The ice was mine originally, and I'm guessing that since I was in a forest at the time, I drew in enough of the wood element for it to become a part of me. However I am told that the ability to use bloodline elements the way I do is, in and of itself, a bloodline that can be passed down. He smiled seeing the two other genin on his team paying close attention, while Kakashi was looking at him with a calculating gaze, Naruto ignored that and continued. Sure my children may not have the affinities to all the major elements like I do, but any two elements that they may have can be used to power a bloodline. For example, say I have a child that has a fire and earth affinity. Even if he doesn't have the lava bloodline, my elemental mimicry bloodline would allow him to use it. 
Again with the shocked looks, you'd think their mouths would hurt after a while with them sitting on the floor like that. True, the bloodline that goes with most of those elements aren't my own, but a copy can be just as deadly as an original, you'd know that, right Sasuke? He grinned a little at the Achiha who knew damn well what he meant. And who's to say? Several of the doctors that looked me over said that even though I don't have those elements as a bloodline, now I could theoretically develop them into one that or my children could, due to the mimicry bloodline affecting their DNA, so the possibilities for a family of elemental masters is highly possible. He let out a chuckle hell, I get more shit from the councils to marry people than you do Sasuke. The last Ichi had deadpanned, the council pushed for him to marry someone at least once every couple weeks, he could only imagine the annoyance the council provided when they pushed for that even more. You still haven't told us how you know specific from those elements. Sakura pointed out, trying to ignore the fact that Naruto was becoming nigh onto a god among husband material, hell the only thing he didn't have was wealth and land, and that could be fixed simply by the way the blonde worked. She had watched him create a veritable army of clones and take out over a dozen dranks in one day, and that equaled out to be a rather high paying crank mission that would normally take a month to complete. Lord only knows if he ever started taking low cranks that were taken around the village. He'd be filthy rich by the end of the year. She glanced over at Sasuke who was beginning to look a little. Lacking. Naruto grinned at Sakura. Pretty sharp there Sakura, it's true I haven't explained that, but I do kinda owe Sasuke's family for that one, so it's not something I brag about. What do you mean Naruto? Sasuke asked curiously, if he was indebted to his family, that could help his training in the long run. Yes. Sweet, sweet blackmail. Well for one thing your family has been around for a long time and their library is massive, they even include some of the other bloodline users. Even though they couldn't use them themselves they still cataloged everything so they know what they're fighting. He pointed a finger at Sasuke. When the Sandane cleared out your library after the massacre so no one would mess with it, he kinda let me into the bloodline section to take a look at some of the D and crank in there. On top of that a few of the I've used I came up with on my own, just figuring out how to manipulate that element in various ways. Honestly, it's not hard coming up with new things. The others on the boat looked at him like he was retarded, here he was talking about creating new techniques like he was talking about the weather, like it was nothing. What? Only silence answered him. Twenty minutes later, we're here the boatman grunted out, having switched out the outboard motor to a oar earlier, so they could sneak into wave country under cover of mist. The boat made a dock next to an abandoned building dropping its passengers off. I can't thank you enough. Tazuna bowed to the rower who nodded in return. Just finish that bridge to Zunison, that's all the thanks I need. The man paddled the boat back out into the mist, the four on land losing track of him as he disappeared from view. We better get going, Tazuna grunted. My house isn't far from here. He made his way onto a path nearby that led further inland. The Kashi meanwhile was tense. Those last guys were ranked ninjas, if we're up against Gato, then he's going to send someone much stronger, probably a level ninja, to keep my senses open. Naruto interrupted his thoughts when he slowed down a bit to bring himself closer to Kakashi. Don't worry Kakashi-sensei, I got my ears and nose tuned to the area around us, if someone's coming I'll let you know. It wasn't more than a whisper, but it set Kakashi at ease, at least a little bit. They walked in silence for an hour, until Naruto twitched slightly, flicking a shuriken into the bushes to his left. What is Naruto? Kakashi said quickly, anything that would get the boy to act like that with his heightened senses was something dangerous. Naruto was silent as he walked into the bushes and pulled out a snow hare who had nearly pissed itself in terror, a shuriken lodged in a tree only an inch above its head. Sakura and Tazuna relaxed but Naruto was on edge, on closer inspection of the rabbit Kakashi was too. Their coming was all Kakashi said which sent everyone on edge. What do you mean? Sasuke asked. Naruto kept his senses honed on his surroundings, it's summer Sasuke, this rabbit still has its winter fur, that means it was kept inside out of sunlight, this is a pet, and whoever its owner is. Their nearby Sasuke finished, he ground his teeth and pulled out a kunai readying himself for anything. Well almost anything. Bet down. Naruto yelled as he grabbed Tazuna and Sakura and pulled them to the ground, Kakashi grabbed Sasuke and yanked him down as a large blade whistled overhead, slamming the blade first into a tree. Nearly downing the poor plant as a man landed on the sword's handle. Well, well, well. A bunch of genin out on mission the man chuckled darkly. Naruto looked the guy up and down, the guy wasn't wearing a shirt, so you could see he was built like a brick shithouse. The ninja wore a dark pair of pants with snow camo, arm and leg warmers, had his face covered in bandages, and a kiri headband tied up on top of his head, with the symbol scratched through signifying him as a Masingan. All in all he looked like a badass, especially standing on his sword like that, if memory serves. The Kashi glared at the man. Your reputation precedes you, Zabuza Mamachi, Demon of the Mist. And you yours, copycat Kakashi. Zabuza chuckled again. What do you want, Zabuza? Kakashi demanded. Why the bridge builder of course? 
he pointed to the man in question who was busy making himself as small as possible under the missing Nin's cold glare. Hand him over and we won't have a problem. The Kashi walked into his line of sight taking the brunt of the killing intent being directed at the old man Sari's abusa, but our mission is to protect Azuna, you want him you go through me. He laughed, I was hoping you'd say that. As he yanked his sword out of the tree and landed on the pond nearby. You three stay behind me and protect Azuna in a manji formation, this man is way beyond any of you. Looks like I'll have to go all out on this one. Kakashi reached up to his headband. Oh, using the Sharingan already? I'm flattered. Sharingan. Sasuke thought, shocked by this revelation. Be careful, he's coming. Breaking Sasuke out of his thoughts. The three gen intensed, preparing for a fight. To the death if necessary. Chapter 10. Dance of the BFS. Zabuza jumped back and landed on a small pond and began weaving hand seals. What a release. Karigakur no jutsu. A mist rose up from the water and smothered the area choking out all sight. Be careful you three, Zabuza is a master of silent killing, he doesn't need to see you to kill you in this mist, be prepared for anything and keep your senses focused. Oh ho, so you do have some experience fighting blind A Kakashi. Zabuza's voice echoed around them. Eight points. Larynx, spine, lungs, liver, jugular, subclavian artery, kidneys, heart. HMHMHMHM which one shall I attack? A chill went up two of the three genins and Tazuna's spine. Naruto however had a look of amusement on his face. So is that a question directed at us? Can we choose which one you strike? You could almost hear the man in the mist fasivault. Tabuza's voice sounded as if he couldn't believe what the genin had said Kakashi, is that student of yours retarded? Or did he just get dropped too many times as a baby? Before Kakashi could answer, Naruto quipped nah, I was just wondering how you'd react. And from the looks of things you don't get many people as crazy as I am. Naruto let out a little psychotic giggle that had his teammates pale, they heard that laugh before when he was training them in their change in nature. So. Much. Pain. Tuckling was heard from the mist hey I like this kid Kakashi, sounds like a boy after my own heart, what's your name kid? Naruto's grin turned feral. Naruto Yuzumaki, prank king of Konoha and all around badass at your service. Tabuza broke out in laughter ha 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 cocky as hell. Yeah this kid's a winner in my book, I might actually let you live after I kill all your friends, no promises though. Yeah yeah, heard that line before, let's just do this shit. Naruto grunted since Kayubi made that threat before, with the same result, the results being fuck and all. Impatient as well I see, have very well. The three genin and one jonin tensed as the mist thickened. Naruto looked around quickly. This isn't good, I can't see a foot in front of my face. The mist was getting even thicker as he thought this damn it we need an out and quick. Naruto. Kakashi whispered harshly. Flare your chakra, make it wind natured. Naruto nodded and got into a horse dance, crouched with his legs spread slightly, he brought his hands into a hand seal, slowly a circle of bright blue energy surrounded him, ha. Huh. He forced as much chakra as he could into the pulse, as the force of the chakra pushed the mist aside, almost like a wave the mist parted, revealing Zabuza a dozen feet away with a shocked expression on his face. How the hell? He gasped, what part of all around badass didn't you get? Naruto gasped, the strain of forcing that much chakra out draining him more than he had liked. HMPH, well I guess I do this the old fashioned way he pulled his sword over his shoulder and rushed Azuna only to be stopped by Kakashi, who blocked his overhead slash with a kunai. No chance Abusa he grunted, pushing against the heavy blade. I won't let you hurt my students or my client. Well it's not like you have a choice he replied, hopping back for another slice. The two clashed, trading deadly blows. A slice here, a chop there, coming closer and closer in a dance of death that mesmerized the three genin and Azuna. Kakashi ducked a horizontal chop and rushed ahead his Sharingan spinning wildly, watching every move Zabuza made, predicting every flinch of his muscles. The only thing keeping the swordsman of the mist from being impaled was his skill in the blade he held and the countless years of experience under his belt. He brought the Zambatu in close and blocked the kunai with the flat of his blade, diverting it to the side, with Kakashi's guard wide he leaned back, his blade acting as a balance, and kicked Kakashi out onto the lake. The Kashi cursed, but it was too late as Abusa was already on him flashing through hand seals at incredible speeds. Water prison jutsu he yelled, a ball of water formed around Kakashi trapping him above the water, with no possible way of breaking free. Akashi sensei. Stay back, you three. Kakashi yelled, waving them back as best he could in the sluggishly moving water. Haha, <laughs> it's over Kakashi, those brats don't stand a chance against me, and with you out of the way, this'll be almost too easy. He held up a hand in a single hand sign as his other hand was holding the water prison. Water clone jutsu. A puddle of water on land slowly started to rise, taking on Zabuza's form. Damn it I knew he was good, but this. Kakashi was horrified run you three. You can't beat him with all this water around you, and that clone of his can't stray too far from the main body. Take Tazuna and run. 
looks of shock crossed their faces, they couldn't just leave their sensei behind. Naruto made their opinions vocal. Hell no. He yelled, this mission was fuber the moment you got trapped, we either help you now and die trying or get hunted down and killed anyway, at least this way there's a chance, now shut up and hang on, we'll have you out of there in a moment. Tabuza snickered quite the cocky set of brats you got there Kakashi, I do like the blondie though. Kakashi's Sharingan was keyed on the standoff. Silently, he was praying for his student safety hopefully Naruto has a plan for this, knowing his bloodline abilities he could pull it off, but Tabuza has over a decade of training over them all. His eyes flashed over the three of them. Please be careful. Sasuke. Naruto whispered. Yeah Naruto. He replied back in a whisper, the two moving closer so as not to draw attention. I have a plan and I need your help. Sasuke nodded and leaned in closer, Naruto started whispering in his ear, for a moment a shock crossed his face, then a grin began to form, slowly growing. You're one crazy son of a bitch you know that. Tell me something I don't know. Naruto jokes. My mom was bisexual. Sasuke is not joking. Didn't want to know that. You asked. He deadpanned. Naruto facipumed, and the collective IQ of the world dropped with that statement. Whatever, let's just get this over with he pulled his ninjato off his back and glared daggers at the Zabuza clone, remember the plan Sasuke. Don't worry, we got this, he replied, bringing out a kunai. The two shot forward weaving between each other, trying to throw the Zabuza clone off. Naruto slashed at Zabuza's legs, who brought his Zambatu down to block the debilitating strike, Naruto smirked and held up a hand in a single hand seal, a dozen Naruto's appeared around Zabuza and tried to strike with their shadow ninjatos, but Zabuza jumped back and swung his sword in a wide arc, cutting through the clones like smoke. Now Sasuke. Naruto yelled, bracing himself on the ground. Right. He growled back placing a foot on Naruto's back as he leapt high into the air, tossing several shuriken to keep Zabuza on his toes, the last Ichiha fell at the missing nin, with both hands charged with a taser. The water clone brought its sword up to block with the flat of the blade, Sasu could only smirk, as both his hands touched the blade. A violent arc of electricity coursed down the blade to the clone's arm. The twin towers shocked the water clone from head to foot, causing it to burst into a puddle of water. Zabuza chuckled from his position next to Kakashi, those kids aren't half bad, that one already has a decent grasp at elemental. You have no idea. Kakashi mumbled which earned him an odd look from Zabuza. Alright Sasuke, phase 2 go. Naruto rushed to the water's edge, flashing through hand signs as he gathered a massive amount of chakra. He slammed his palms onto the edge of the water and shouted ice release. Frozen wave. Zabuza's eyes flew wide as release. He gasped, too shocked to even notice that Naruto had flash frozen the lake surface and Zabuza's feet to the ice. Meanwhile in a nearby tree hidden from view and watching the battle a young voice gasped as well, but that's my. The voice couldn't say any more, it only watched the fight with much more interest, keeping a closer eye on the blonde boy. Back with the battle Zabuza was cursing. Looking down he saw his feet were firmly frozen to the ice, he turned his eyes back to the genin, only to see Sasu throwing several kunai at him, most of them wouldn't have been much danger to him, but one in particular was heading right for his face. With another curse he yanked away from the kunai dodging all of them, but in doing so released the water prison. With a quick swing of his sword he had broken away from the ice and jumped back from the two children and the newly freed Kakashi, who was hacking up a mouthful of water. So Blondie has Heimton as well, eh? That kid just got a lot more interesting. Zabuza flicked a few more chunks of ice off his foot and got into a ready battle position with his blade down and to his side. Kakashi spat up the water and got to his feet. You huff won't lay a hand huff on Naruto, Zabuza. He wiped water from his mask and pulled another kunai out, you three have done enough, stay back and protect Azuna. But Kakashi sensei Sakura began, no buts Kakashi growled, he turned a glare on the demon of the mist. That same trick won't work on me twice Zabuza the man in question only raised an eyebrow, which looked kind of funny with his lack of eyebrows and all. Big talk for a waterlogged scarecrow, come get some then. He egged Kakashi on. In a flash the two were crossing blades again, this time Kakashi seemed to be on even footing, as most of the water Zabuza used for his water was frozen underfoot. Zabuza noticed this haha <laughs> so an even battle eh? Fine by me. He pushed forward on the back of the blade and forced Kakashi back. Akashi sensei Naruto yelled. Jonin glanced to the side for a split second to catch Naruto's ninjato, he nodded his quick thanks and brought the sword to bear just in time to catch a downward cut from Zabuza's. With a crunch the ice below Kakashi buckled but held under the pressure of the clashing blades. If it up Kakashi, in a battle of swordsmanship you can't beat a swordsman of the mist. Zabuza growled, kicking the way and holding his zambato up to point at Kakashi. That may be Zabuza, but I'm not just using a sword. Kakashi flipped through several hand seals with the sword still in hand and gripped his right wrist. The air around Kakashi slowly started to glow as a harsh crackling sound filled the air. What the hell is that? Zabuza asked, eyes wide at the sight. Rikiri. 
My own original. Kakashi growled, the lightning element chakra forming a circle of energy around him. And your death. Zabuza went into a deep stance with both hands on his blade, it was a purely defensive stance. The hell is with his hand. You can almost see the chakra there. What an insanely powerful technique. He tensed when Kakashi rushed to need to stay on my toes, one hit from that, and I'm gone. Zabuza blocked the ninjato and spun out of the way of the rikiri, the trailing edge of the technique, nicking him from the sheer concentrated power. Holy shit. Definitely stay away from that. And like a dance their duel resumed Kakashi leading with an Ninjato, while he used his Rikiri to keep Zabuza on his toes, both opponents knowing he only needed one strike to finish things. Meanwhile Naruto and the others were watching the fight with awe, Naruto and Sasuke were getting a tingling in their hands, they knew that the Rikiri was just a step in magnitude above the Taser in power and concentration. The two genin looked at each other and flashed a devilish grin between them, a silent agreement to try and copy the technique together. Turning back to the fight, they were shocked to see Zabuza actually putting up a decent defense, that is until Kakashi stopped leading with an Ninjato, he switched leading hands at the last moment, shocking Zabuza who had brought the flat of the blade up to block. The Mist Nin watched in horror as his blade snapped off right above the incurve of the blade, Kakashi used his shock to land a slash across his shoulder, severing the muscle there and causing the knot so heavy to the ground. Before Zabuza could get back and lose ground a heel to his sternum sent him into a nearby tree, not a moment later four kunai lodged into each one of his limbs temporarily crippling him, and if he didn't get medical attention, permanently. It's over Zabuza Kakashi laid the edge of the ninjato against Zabuza's jugular, his sharingan lazily spinning, only for that eye to widen in horror, as a pair of pierced the missing nin's neck, apparently killing him instantly. Zabuza's eyes bulged sickly as he slumped to the ground, Kakashi turned quickly bringing the ninjato up in a reverse grip defense, but he lowered it a moment later, when a short nin and a hunter mask dropped down from the trees. Thank you for your help the youth's voice called out, the pitch of the voice and the size of the body, meaning the nin couldn't be much older than Naruto and the others. I hope you didn't mind me taking the initiative and killing Zabuza myself, he had become quite the elusive target and I wanted the satisfaction of putting him out of his misery myself. Kakashi knelt down and placed a pair of fingers against his jugular to feel for a pulse. There wasn't one. Really dead Kakashi mused. Standing up he turned again to the Hunternin it is no problem Hunterninson. Oh so you know of the Kiri Hunternins. You could almost see the hunter's eyebrow raise behind the mask. The figure stood a bit taller yes I am a Kiri Hunternin, Zabuza has been my target for quite some time, it's taken me a good six months to track the man down to wave, but I can finally call this mission completed. You have my thanks the nin bowed and sunshine to the body, Kakashi backed away, he still kept his sharingan out in case this was some kind of trick, but when the nin vanished with the body he relaxed and covered the eye with his headband. He turned to his team and I smiled. Then fell flat on his face. Must have overused the sharingan he remarked dryly as his team called out his name and worry. Don't worry you three I just have chakra exhaustion, then we better get to my home so you can rest, Tazuna offered. Everyone nodded except Kakashi, who was finding it hard to even breathe at the moment. And what a time to have an itch that he couldn't scratch. Are you alright? A young woman looked down at the bedridden Jonan. I am fine Sinamison. Doc Kakashi said weakly. The young woman above him was a fair sight to behold to the exhausted man, and she was quite the looker too. He mentally let out a little pervy giggle as he waved the woman off. Just give me a week's rest and I'll be back to my old self. Yeah we can't have you getting even more lazy than you already are Naruto teased the Cyclops, who gave him a blank glare. Akashi sensei just who was that ninja earlier? Sakura asked. That, Sakura, was a hunternin. He turned his eyes to stare at the girl. Each village has a division of hunternin, however that particular nin was a part of Kiri's hunter forces. Kiri's hunters are infamous for their brutal and meticulous methods. Why would they need a hunternin anyway? That is an interesting question Sakura, the main reason for hunters are to go out and capture or dispose of missing ninjas, you see, just because you kill someone doesn't mean their secrets die with them. He held up a single shaky finger. Take my Sharingan for instance. If I were to be killed and my body taken, someone with enough time and patience could theoretically learn the secrets of the Sharingan and replicate them, it wouldn't be an exact copy, but just think for a moment. His eyes hardened, a village that can give its entire shinobi population the ability to copy on the fly, with no repercussions to its use. The thought sent shivers down their spines. Exactly. That is what Hunter Nin are for. They go out to find Nuke Nin, and if they can capture the Nin, they'll take the secrets back with them. If not, they destroy the body on the spot. He let his hand fall, the explanation over. Meanwhile in a secluded wooded area the masked hunter Nin was working over the body of Zabuza. Let's see, first the wrappings the Nin grabbed a pair of clippers from the tool roll laid out next to Zabuza. The hunter was about to cut the bandages off Zabuza's face when a hand reached out and gripped the offending limb tightly. That's enough Haku, I can handle this part. He gasped out. 
oh wake are you? I'm surprised, normally you'd still be out for another hour. The newly named Haku jokes. Very funny the missing nin grouch slowly dragging himself to a sitting position, still feeling the in his neck he grasped the weapons, and with a viscous yank that sent blood spraying everywhere the two barbs were pulled free. Aku placed a gentle hand on Zabuza's shoulder, please Zabuza-sama, please don't yank those out like that, or you really will end up dead. Zabuza looked up at his apprentice's face, which was covered by the emotionless hunter mask, that mask had always irked the Exanbu Kirinan, not because of what it symbolized, but that it was something that dredged up ghosts far gone and better left forgotten. He didn't waste time voicing his displeasure. Haku, take off that damn mask already will you? The young hunter nan nodded and pulled the mask off revealing a surprisingly beautiful face underneath. So what now Zabuza-sama? The teen was curious, just what were they going to do, Kakashi was a problem, but so were the two boys that were with him, and judging by the skill levels of the boys, the girl was most likely skilled as well. For now? Nothing. I need to get back to full strength. He growled, struggling to his feet. After that, we go and kill the bridge builder. Simple as that. What about the boy with Heimton? Haku asked curiously, if he had Heimton then, maybe. I'll think of something Haku could only nod and follow along with his plans. The two nin made their way back to their hideout, to heal. And plan. Kakashi's eyes flew wide and shot up from his futon startling everyone in the room. What was that feeling Kakashi's hand shook as he placed it over his face in shock I'm getting seriously bad vibes from this, just why the hell does it feel like I'm missing something, I know Zabuza is dead, I felt his pulse. Wait, Akashi sensei what's wrong? Naruto asked. Amma Kakashi sighed, Hunter and are trained to destroy the bodies of the ones they kill on the spot. You got that feeling too, Naruto asked. Kakashi nodded, making Naruto TSK in annoyance. Yeah, and? Sakura asked, confused, where her sensei was going with this. What happened to Zabuza's body? Kakashi asked out of the blue. Sakura tilted her head questioningly, uh, I don't know the hunter nin took it away. Now why would a hunter nin who was taught to destroy a body on the spot, move a body much larger than them? And on top of that, what did the hunter use to kill Zabuza? Sasuke thought for a moment used for acupuncture. His eyes widened no way. Way, Sasuke Naruto grimaced, I had a feeling about it after Kakashi explained what a hunter was earlier, but I didn't think much of it until just now, when Kakashi felt it too. Yeah, we fucked up. Kakashi sight it's highly likely. That Zabuza is still alive. He trailed off as both Tazuna and Sakura gasped. But how? You checked yourself. Sakura said fearfully. Zenbanzakura Naruto sighed. Senbin, when used correctly can do any number of things. For someone of Hunter and skill it's child's play putting someone in a death-like state. Kakashi nodded. What Naruto said is true. If Zabuza truly is alive we need to be on our toes until we can prove otherwise. Regardless, we still need to keep an eye out for any other people under Gatton's employ. It's not like it matters anyway. A voice said. Everyone in the room turned to a young boy who was just walking in the door. Inari. Tsunami smiled where have you been all this time? Hey mom, I was out for a walk. He turned to Tazuna hey Gramps, welcome home. He walked over and gave the old man a hug, all in all it was a sickeningly cute display of affection. Well it would be if the little brat wasn't looking at the ninja in the room with an apathetic glare. Inari, these are these ninjas protecting your grandpa, please greet them properly, Tsunami chided. But mom, they're just gonna die, they can't beat Gan. Naruto snorted at that. Inari turned to him with a glare. What's so funny? He demanded. Naruto chuckled for a few seconds before breaking out into full-on laughter. What's so funny? He demanded again, this time with a harsh edge to his voice. You're a kid. Naruto laughed, wiping a single tear from his eye. Before Inari could bitch Naruto cut him off. Kid, telling us that we're gonna die is like telling your gramps over there that he's gonna get a hangover from drinking too much. The only difference is we don't know when we'll die Well, your gramps knows damn well when he'll get a hangover he laughed again. Kid, we're ninja, dying is a part of the job description. We are born and raised to fight, kill and die. For our friends, family and country. His grin turned into a bit of a glare however, thinking we'll die to some little troll like Gatm is insulting. That bastard doesn't have anything going for him, but his money, from what your gramps has told us the dude is as short as you are, he has nothing to fight us with himself, he hires his power. Then. Inari began, suddenly feeling a bit out of his league in the argument. Nope, wrong again Naruto cut him off. We just came out of a battle with an A-class Masingnan and arguably one of the best swordsmen in the elemental nations. If that big of a bastard can't kill this team who do you think will? We're not gonna die that easily kid, if you think that then we can take this outside and I'll show you a thing or two about ninja. Inari had a look of shock on his face at how blatantly his beliefs had been thrown in his face. He grit his teeth in anger at Naruto, mentally cursing the blonde bastard. Who do you think you are? You have no right to come in here and talk that way to us, do you have any idea how badly we've suffered under that bastard rule? 
a ninja like you who probably has had it good all his life what do you know oh the rest of his words were cut off along with most of his air as a hand gripped his throat, it wasn't a tight grip, just enough to shut him up and hold him off the ground. Inari. Naruto. The people in the room yelled. Shut up and back off. Naruto growled at everyone in the room, his voice sounding slightly deeper as a bit of Kyuubi's chakra ran through his veins in anger. This kid needs a reality check. He tossed Inari on his ass, you want to know how good he spat the word my life was. The anger in his voice made Inari shake in fear. You have a family, a home, three square meals. He threw his hands around the room to point this fact out. Me. I'm an orphan, I didn't have any parents or family, I lived in an orphanage filled with spiteful people who would have seen me starve. I had to dig through trash and steal to even live. As for the villagers, nearly everyone in my village despises me. He spat a curse at a few choice people. For the first seven years of my life I got glared at and ostracized by the very people I now protect, you want to call your life unfair. How about this? At seven years old I was nearly murdered by the villagers I'm protecting, and it took me killing a dozen of them and nearly dying in the process to find someone who shared my lot in life, that woman took me in, and I've been what you might call happy, if you'd get your head out of you ass. Life sucks kid, get used to it and grow up. He flipped off the room and walked to the door. If any of you value your life you'll stay the hell away, you too Kakashi. I don't want to have to explain your death to Jiji. He slammed the door behind him, a few minutes of silence passed before what sounded like dozens of explosions, and the loud snapping of trees broke the silence. Akakashi sensei Is everything Naruto said true Sakura whimpered a little bit as an angry yell ripped through the night, while bits of what sounded like splinters hit the roof of the house. Akashi sighed. Yes Sakura, it was all true. His eyes turned sad for a moment. Naruto's younger years were quite bad honestly, there was never really anything physical. Aside from that the villagers have done everything they can to destroy him, his life hasn't been. Everyone in the room jumped when a piece of tree impaled itself in the front door. But Kakashi finished. Sighing once again before laying back in his bed. The third had said that Naruto was a tad touchy when it came to his early years. But this. Best to give the boy time to work on his frustration, else he'd find a hole somewhere he didn't want from the collateral damage. Another explosion rocked the night. Yeah, give him a day or two. Kakashi sweat dropped. Chapter 11 chance meetings. It had been two days since Naruto's little blow up. It was nighttime as we found our blonde hero sitting in a shallow crater surrounded by several mall trees. To say he had been creative in their destruction would have been an understatement, as even in a rage Naruto used the time to test new abilities. He looked around for a moment taking in the side of the destroyed clearing, there were several trees that had holes bored through them with scorched edges, from a rather interesting combination of lightning and wind nature chakra. He'd read about storm releases which worked mostly the same way, but that was water lightning dot. This was something different as the piercing power of lightning mixed with the cutting power of wind. It was odd watching the wind chakra spiral around the lightning chakra, and it created something pretty fucking dangerous. He tilted his head to the side slightly to get a better look at the tree behind the one full of holes, sure enough the tree behind that had a matching set, and the tree behind that. And the tree behind that. To continue out of sight. Thinking he might have overdone that a bit he looked down to his poor singed tail, which was free of his pants, as he had wanted to see if his clone's training with the thing had paid off. To an extent would be a good description. He had found that by channeling through his tail, he could call forth skills through said appendage, for instance, going through seals and smacking the ground with his tail to throw up an earth wall, or smacking a tree with a taser-infused tail. All in all it was a productive blow up if he did say so himself. As he passed out from exhaustion. Morning, Aku was humming a nice tune as she walked through the forest, it was one of the few places that she could just relax, it was quite peaceful even. But like all things, peace being one of them, it was simply a temporary thing. She had come to find herbs to help Zabuza recover from the paralysis she had placed him under, it was her lot in life to serve the man, after all he had saved her, raised her as his own, and taught her everything she needed to know to be an effective tool for him, to be used. And abused at his whim. Thankfully the very few abuses had been near-death experiences due to her career choice, and not from anything more sinister. Walking for a few more minutes she found herself in the clearing that had some of the best herbs she needed. Only to find half of it was destroyed. She gasped when she noticed a familiar blonde boy in the middle of a small crater near the center of the clearing. It's him. She thought, her heart beginning to race at the possibilities, if this boy had Heimton, could he really be? Family. The thought seemed foreign to her, she approached him slowly, careful to make sure he wasn't tricking her. What should I do, he could be family, but he's also Zabuza's enemy. Before she realized it she had reached her hand out towards the boy, whether to strangle him or wake him she didn't know. She made to pull back, but the boy had apparently sensed the mixed intent in her actions, and a hand shot from the side and grabbed her arm. The boy shot up at his subconscious action and glared around bleary-eyed as sunlight filled his vision. 
Aku meanwhile nearly jumped out of her skin as she had barely registered the hang grabbing hold of her or the boy moving for that matter. Such speed. She flinched visibly at the contact. Naruto only now coming to his senses noticed the girl in front of him, or more specifically the hand that was grabbing the girl's wrist. With a quick apology he released her and backed away a bit. Aku quickly lowered in a small bow I'm sorry if I startled you, I was just checking to see if you were alright. It's not good to sleep out in the open like that. Naruto on the other hand was shocked at how pretty the girl in front of him was, sure she wasn't Anko. Not many people were that crazy after all. But she had her own beauty to her. Shaking his head to clear his thoughts as her words caught up to him. Uh, no problem. Sorry if I hurt you or anything, I usually don't react like that when I sleep. He rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. She smiled don't worry, I may not look like much, but I can protect myself just fine. Wow she's got such a nice smile, weird though, why does she seem so familiar? He took in a deep breath of morning air, what looked like a yawn was secretly him testing the sense around him. Seriously why does she put me on edge? Maybe it's because she's that damn hunter and you met the other day. Kaiubi growled inside his head. Naruto's eyes bugged comically, but he quickly calmed himself realizing if this girl knew who he was, then she could easily kill him if he wasn't expecting it. Hell maybe that was why his hand acted the way it did, she might have tried to choke him in his sleep. Aku noted Naruto's expression curiously something wrong. She asked one of her hands, tensing in anticipation. No. He said quickly, I just realized that I've been out here for two days. My sensei is probably gonna kick my ass when I get back he chuckled nervously. Sensei? Are you a ninja? Her hand relaxed a little bit. Naruto chuckled, yep, the name is Naruto Uzumaki, and do you think a normal person could have done all this? He made a small motion with one of his hands indicating the destroyed clearing. I suppose not. What are you doing out here anyway? She asked, besides destroying a perfectly nice clearing. Mentally rolling her eyes. Well. Haha. <laughs> I guess I was training. I kinda blew up on the client's kid and walked off so I wouldn't kill someone, I guess I took it out on the trees. At least they died for a good cause. He rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment and laughed when he noticed that the girl had that look on her face that meant it was a bullshit excuse. Hey just why are you out here missing? Haku? My name is Haku, and speaking of the forest, I came out here to gather herbs for a friend of mine, this clearing had several of the herbs I needed. She raised an eyebrow at Naruto accusingly. Uh. Sorry. He apologized sheepishly. If you want I could have this place fixed up in a sec. Oh? And just how do you plan to do that? She placed her hands on her hips as if waiting for him. You might need to move a little bit so you don't get caught up in this. As she backed off from the clearing Naruto used a simple earth to fill in the holes in the clearing, then running through several elaborate sets of seals he slammed his palms together wood release. Restoration. The air around Naruto started to buzz as the trees and plant life started to grow, the trees full of holes from Naruto's earlier experiments, filled in, leaving no trace from their abuse. After a minute or so the clearing was even more vibrant than before, with many lush fruit-bearing trees and herb plants dotting the edges. Aku stood back and watched the transformation with wide eyes Mokuten as well. Just who? Or better yet what the hell is he? She was shaken from her amazement by the boy in question waving a hand in front of her face. Aku, hello? What? She started. You were spacing out there. Anything wrong? There was a genuine concern in his voice, despite the two being enemies, Haku was starting to grow on him. She was nice, if a bit too polite. No. Nothing's wrong. But he flashed one of his large smiles which made Haku blush slightly. Wait blush. Aku was having the weirdest reaction to the boy, she felt a bit hot, steamy even. It started at her toes and worked its way up, she felt comfortable around him, even more so than with Zabuza himself. Well I better pick the herbs I need for my friend, I've been out here longer than I should have. Okay, I'll help you he threw her a thumbs up, and the two went to work gathering the herbs she needed, every once in a while Naruto would ask about a certain plant and its uses, to which Haku answered the best she could, all in all it was a pleasant experience for the both of them. Standing up to wipe the sweat from her brow, Haku sighed, that should be enough the small basket in her hands was filled to the brim with herbs. She turned and smiled at Naruto thank you for helping me, it was fun while it lasted. Oh, it was no big deal. Naruto grinned back. It would be a crime not to help a pretty girl like you. Haku couldn't hold it anymore as she let out a laugh. It wasn't a loud laugh, but it held an honest humor to it, like she was pushing aside all her troubles and just enjoying the moment. I had fun today, I wish I could stay, but my friend needs these herbs soon, I'll be seeing you. She turned and walked away, but almost as an afterthought she stopped, oh, and by the way, I'm a guy. Before continuing on her way. An obvious lie Kai Ubi mentally snorted, you can practically feel her attraction for you, she's just making shit up, so she doesn't have to face you. 
Naruto raised an eyebrow at the retreating girl if she's attracted to you, go work your heroic mojo on her hehehe <laughs> Naruto flashed a little grin at that, if this lady had the hots for him, maybe they wouldn't have to fight Zabuza after all. Naruto snuck up on the retreating girl, a crazy plan forming in his mind. Naruto slipped his arms around the girl and felt her stiffen in shock. naruto and what are you do? Do you think a lie like that can fool me Hakuchin? Or should I call you Hunterchin instead? Oh Kami, he knows Haku shook a little bit in the boy's grasp, he had his arms around hers, so even if she put up a fight, she couldn't make use of her arms if he tightened his grip. Naruto could feel her shaking and decided to mess with her a little bit. Grinning, he spoke flippantly. I could smell you the entire time, so don't think you can fool my nose Haku-chan, you are definitely not a guy. Oh no, he knows I'm. Wait what? She thought curiously he has me right where he wants me, and he's making light of me telling him I'm a guy. She stopped shaking for a moment doesn't he want information from me? Use me as a hostage. Anything. She turned slightly to look over her shoulder to see the blonde grinning from ear to ear. The hell. He looks like he just played a prank on someone. The girl would have fascipened if she could of course, he tricked me. But what is he playing at? Naruto let Haku sweat a little trying to figure out his little game, but after a moment of brain racking, he could tell the girl had no idea what he wanted, so instead of her asking something of him, he asked her. So who are you really Hakuchin? He poked the girl in the stomach a couple times to get her attention. If you're strong enough to be a hunter nin at your age, then you've definitely got something going for you. Haku froze, clearly it was an innocent question, but having lived as a missing nin for most of her life, it left her cautious. What do you mean Naruto-san? Naruto frowned at her hesitation, finally he sighed look Haku, despite what you may think, we aren't enemies. An eyebrow rose at that proclamation. If I can find a way to keep us from fighting each other, I'd gladly go down that path, even if it's more difficult than just outright fighting you. Fighting is pointless unless you're doing it to protect. Haku shivered despite herself, that was dangerously close to her way of thinking. She could have pushed away from him, could have fought back, could have done a bunch of things, but something was making her trust him, just him holding her was making her feel hot, like he was just radiating warmth and kindness. Despite herself she started speaking shakily of her past, about how she had nearly been killed by her father after he killed their mother, of her meetings of Yuza and of her ice power. When she had spoken of her use of Heimton, Naruto froze. The hell, I thought Heimton was extinct. I should be the only person who can use it. I would be cut in. Did you forget the Kakashi said it was a bloodline of two clans? Since she's nothing like your mother Amido and judging by her story she can only be of the other clan, the Yuki clan. If that's the case that makes you. What? Distant cousins. Huh, one of your first true enemies and it's a family member. Go figure. Naruto frowned at that. Haku. Do you remember the name of your clan, did your mother ever speak of it? Haku looked up from her explanation to notice the frown on the boy's face. She felt uncomfortable under his scrutiny. She spoke of it only once so that I would understand my past, it was one of the last things she did before she died. The name, Haku. What was the name? He spoke a bit more forcefully. Aye it was Yuki. She said fearfully at his tone, but relaxed when his face softened, though he still had an odd look on his face. Is something wrong with Naruto? Naruto relaxed his grip and spun the girl around in his arms, when they were face to face he enveloped her in a hug. Aside from the fact that the two of us are family, no. Everything is just fine. You could hear a slight whimper in his voice. Haku's eyes widened as she froze in his arms. Wow. The Yuzumaki clan and the Yuki clan are related, I it's the reason why I can use Heimton Haku. If I were to guess we'd be cousins. Naruto's voice hitched a couple times as he tried to grasp that he actually had some family left in this world. Haku meanwhile just stood there with a the shaking boy holding on to her for dear life, so I was right, we are related. And he feels so vulnerable right now she tentatively reached out her hands and returned the hug which made the boy stiffen a bit. Aku frowned at that that's an odd response to a hug, even if it wasn't expected, it's like he's not used to affection, or at least not from someone like me, and judging from the way he's acting towards me. He must have been an orphan as well. Naruto felt Haku's hands on his back and immediately tensed up, it wasn't like Anko hadn't hugged him like this over the years, it's just with so many emotions running through his head, he hadn't expected her to return his affections quite so readily. A pat on the back. Sure. But to return his hug even if it was half-hearted filled him with hope. Now more than ever he had made up his mind to avoid the fight with Zabuza. But how? Hakuchin. He asked slowly. Aku looked up into the blonde's eyes and saw a curious look in his eyes, it was a calculating look she had seen many times over the years. You're trying to figure out a way for us to avoid fighting, right? Naruto nodded. Sigh. That is going to be difficult then. Zabuza has never been one to back down, especially if he's been beaten before by the one he's going up against. She sighed again, not to mention Gatm has something that Zabuza needs more than just about anything else. What could that scumbag have that Zabuza doesn't? 
Naruto's voice was filled with disgust, but he said almost as an afterthought. Money notwithstanding of course, information Naruto. Kun she thought on the suffix for a second before nodding to herself, Kun would do just fine for him. I can understand your hatred for the man, I personally don't like him either, but he has information that can help Zabuza and his goals, and I am his tool to help him achieve his goals. Naruto frowned when he heard Haku call herself a tool, she had said it so matter of fact, like it was just the way things were. Well to hell with how things were, she was family damn it, and like hell his family would be used by someone else. Haku, we may not be enemies, but speak about yourself like that again, and I just may have to kill the man who put those thoughts into your head, he held the girl tighter, which shocked the ice mistress, the venom in his voice at such a simple thing, made her shiver. You are not a tool Haku. I don't care if you see yourself as one. I don't. And like hell I'm letting someone use my family and just discard them like one. Again Haku felt the warm feeling spread through her body. Just what was it that made her feel like this? The two of them sat down next to one of the trees Naruto had abused. Naruto had his arm around Haku's side, holding her close. Haku, if the only thing Gatten has over your heads is information, why not just beat it out of him, from the description people gave me the guy is even by standards, hell one of our second year academy students could probably kick his ass. Haku frowned. It's against Abusa's policy, never harm the client unless they give you a reason. Most villages go by that standard. Naruto thought about that for a moment before a devious smile crossed Naruto's face. Then why not give Zabuza a reason? Haku raised an eyebrow. Just how would we do that? Naruto's smile grew wider, which made the corners of his eyes crinkle a little. Haku could only shiver. Most people in the world viewed Gatan shipping and transport as a legitimate business, but underneath the clean exterior, we see what it truly is, a corrupt and powerful corporation hell-bent on making as much money as possible, regardless of whose life they have to ruin or what country they have to cripple. We find the corporation's namesake sitting behind his desk going over documents that would, in essence, lay the final stone for his movement into the mainland, it was a grand scheme that would gain him even more power and influence in the elemental nations. However, before he could finalize any of it a frantic knock came to his door. Enter he growled, angry at the disturbance. The young thug rushed in breathing hard. Sir. All of our men in the city are missing. What? Gatton jumped up from his chair, slamming his hand on the table in front of him, several of his important papers flying off. That's not all sir, many of the operations in the village are at a standstill, the brothels and the protection money offices are destroyed. Send out the men and comb the village. Find whoever did this and end them. Gatton stood up and grabbed his cane. Throwing on his coat he walked past the underling, his two samurai bodyguards Mrai and Waraji falling into step behind him. Sir, where are you going? The underling asked. He turned to look back at the little pissant I'm going to seize Abusa, only a ninja could have pulled this cluster fuck off, and the only ninja I know of that are nearby are that team from Kanoha and that asshole's Abusa. I'm just going to make sure which side he's on and to dangle a nice juicy carrot in front of his face if he isn't. Before he walked out the door. Meanwhile two shadows watched the short man's departure. One a girl who was just staring at how easy this all was, and the other was a boy who was grinning like a loon. That was simple enough. Haku deadpanned. Naruto chuckled. Oh that's nothing yet, I make breaking into Anbu headquarters and dumping itching powder into their uniforms, an art form. Getting a stuck-up selfish bastard like Gatton to second-guess himself is child's play. He tilted his head in her direction, you know your part in this right Haku. He flashed her one of his ear-to-ear -ear grins which had that wonderful warming effect on her and made her knees turn to jelly. She nodded quickly and used a mist shunshun, making her way back to their hideout. She had a part to play and if she was going to spend time getting to know her family in the foreseeable future, she needed to make it believable. What took you so long Haku? Zabuza growled, spread prone on the bed in the middle of the room, it was really the only piece of furniture aside from the couch and dresser and the large cocoon-shaped hideout. I had a few errands to run Zabuza-sama. She bowed her head slightly to the man. I picked the herbs needed to cure the temporary paralysis and, well well well. A snide voice echoed around the two missing men. Haku's face turned to one of distaste, since there was only one person she knew of that could be that pompous, even if she knew he was coming, it didn't change the fact that she despised Gatton. She turned to take in the man's appearance, he was wearing his casual suit today, along with his cane he was as scummy looking as a crooked businessman could be. Any thoughts she had against double-crossing her client flew out the window in the face of the man's arrogance, he literally walked into the Miss Nin's hideout like he owned the place. Well technically he did own the place, but that's besides the point. I think, this is how far the demon of the hidden mist has fallen. And they called you one of the best. Fair, praise wasted if you ask me. Gatton walked forward with that shit-eating grin on his face. You couldn't even take care of one team from Kanoha. Hell most of them are snot-nosed brats, makes me think you don't want the information I have Zabuza. The mist nin narrowed his eyes at the corrupt businessman. 
He needed that information if he was going to fulfill his promise and nothing was going to stand in his way. Just keep that info ready and waiting Gan, I'll have that bridge builder's head on a platter soon enough. Adam snorted in amusement. You'd better. One more slip up and you'll be out on your asses, I've gone to a lot of effort keeping those huntermen away from here, prove to me that you're worth the trouble. He turned and walked away with a satisfied grin on his face. As the door to their hideout slammed closed Abusa let out a growl and slammed a hand down on a bed that arrogant bastard. A few minutes of silence passed as the mind of the demon of the mist wandered. Tabuza sama Haku cut into his musings. Why don't we just torture Gadden for the information? It wouldn't be hard. She looked at her mentor who stared back at her with a calculating scowl. I know how easy it would be, but you know my rules. Don't harm the client unless provoked. And besides we may need his help later on. Zabuza sighed just deal with it a little longer Haku will kill him eventually. Maybe sooner than you think a voice called out from the shadows of the room. Who's there? Zabua growled, though Haku already knew who it was. Oh, you know. Naruto laughed as he presented himself to the missing men. Naruto Yuzumaki. So that's where you were Haku. So. Have you betrayed me? Is Kakashi outside somewhere, ready to bust in here and take my head? Zabuza actually looked hurt by asking those questions, which surprised Naruto a bit. Hardly. Haku admitted dryly, she turned to Naruto anything. Oh ho ho yeah Naruto pulled a tape recorder from one of the pockets in his shirt, having kept the thing in a scroll beforehand, seeing as it was useful for keeping notes or gathering information. He clicked the play button on the device, and Gatton's distinct voice was heard. Ah and get those fools I paid earlier, the merc sir. A voice asked, most likely one of Gatton's minions. The other them, Zabuza is becoming more trouble than he's worth, and I'm getting tired of covering his ass. How are the mercs gonna kill him, he's a ninja dot star. Even ninja get tired fools, I'll just sick him on those Konoha shinobi. Best case scenario they'll kill each other, and I don't have to lift a finger, but if worst comes to worst, I can just flood those weakened fools with disposable mercenaries dot star. What about that info you read baiting him with? A curious voice asked. That report from Mizu? Haha, <laughs> you know what, I think I'll tell him when I spit in the cocky bastard's face as the light leaves his eyes. Star. Boss that's cold, I don't pay you to sympathize, now get the fuck to work. The tape recorder clicked to a stop, leaving the room in an uncomfortable silence. Silence broken by the cracking of knuckles as Abusa's hand clenched in fury. That no good lying motherfucking bitch. Haku, change of plans, we're torturing that bastard and killing him now. He turned to glare at Naruto. As for you, what the hell do you want? Naruto smirked, to spend time with my cousin of course. Zabuza's eyes widened a fraction at that statement, he glanced at Haku who nodded. So you are related then? He mused, anger mellowing out at the revelation. Yep. Naruto said happily. The Yuki and Yuzumaki are family, she may just be a cousin, but all the Yuzumaki are gone, and she's the only blood family I have left. So what's with that recording? Zabuza pointed to the device in question. Why are you helping me? Couldn't you have just spirited her away with you? Na Naruto waved him off. I'd never do that to anyone, I'm not a bleeding heart romantic. I may be a gentleman, but I don't go that far. That's not what I meant. Zabuza sweat dropped. An uncomfortable silence filled the room. Okay new topic, as for why I'm helping you. I'm killing two birds with one stone, figuratively speaking of course. I knew Gat was a traitorous bastard, he just seemed like the chronic backstabbing kind of guy. Knowing him he would have done this anyway, even if I didn't piss him off by killing all his cronies in town. And judging by the way he had a bunch of fodder ready and waiting I was right on the money. That doesn't explain anything. Zabuza growled. I'm getting to that, keep your panties out of the knot. Naruto scowled. Well, since you now know that Gatton is even more of a piece of shit than before, you're most likely not going after Tazuna's head, correct? I mean why kill the bridge builder when you're just gonna torture your client for the info anyway? Zabuza nodded once. Yeah after Gatton screwed the pooch on their deal, he reached the top of his shit list. Okay, well that guarantees the safety of my client, while at the same time gaining a temporary ally in protecting my client, seeing as your client is my client's main threat. The enemy of my enemy and all that bullshit. Zabuza frowned, something wasn't right, something like this just didn't fit the kid's style, or what he knew of it, there was something more to this, he could feel it in his gut. That doesn't explain why you're doing this. He pointed out sure, protecting your client is an end, and this could very well be the means, but that just doesn't fit, you wouldn't have convinced Haku otherwise. Why are you really here? Naruto chuckled as I said before, I'm here to spend time with my cousin, killing Gatton is just a bonus. And personally I don't want one of my family being hunted by hunters all her life. So I'm here to offer my protection to you and Haku. Since she's my family she can join my clan as per the laws of Konoha, and seeing as she's your adopted daughter in a sense. He waved his hand back and forth in a washy manner, the offer extends to you as well. So you're bribing us with a tasty carrot and expecting us to hop to your tune. 
you're as bad as Gad. Zabuza grunted half-heartedly. Maybe so, Naruto chuckled. But I at least have noble intentions for you both, and I damn sure ain't gonna betray my family. Family, huh? A far-off look crossed Zabuza's face for a moment, Naruto noticed a bit of pain on his face, clearly he was remembering something better left unasked. Zabuza shook his head to clear those thoughts. Kid. Yeah. Zabuza sighed. We were going to attack Tazuna while he was working on the bridge, bring your team and Tazuna there in two days time, you'll have my answer then. Now get the hell out, I need my beauty sleep. Naruto nodded as he disappeared back in the darkness, a small chuckle escaping his lips. I'm back. Naruto called out, walking into Zuna's house, sweat dripping when he noticed the sliver of wood still lodged in the door from his blow up. That was when Kakashi appeared out of nowhere, nearly scaring the pants off the blonde genin. We were worried Naruto, where were you? There was concern in the man's eyes. Era I, as he shuffled over to him on crutches, apparently he wasn't at full strength yet. Looking around Naruto noticed everyone else was there as well. Naruto was debating whether or not to tell them what he'd been doing all day, but the prankster in him just couldn't resist seeing their reactions. Well. He started, sitting down at the living room table, the others joining him, both Sakura and Sasuke looked exhausted. Sakura's hair was wet while Sasuke's was frayed, so he guessed that Kakashi had put them through the ringer on their elements, or something to prepare them for Zabuza's return, poor them, Zabuza's not the enemy anymore, haha <laughs> a barely visible grin touched his face as he continued, after I blew up the other day, I went out to the woods to blow off some steam and train. That's it. You've been training all this time? Kakashi sounded disappointed for some reason, what else would he be doing normally? Well. That barely their grin grew wide that, and I took out all of Gatton's men in the village, met up with and found out that the hunter Ninhaku is my cousin, got Zabuza to betray Gatton, and he and Haku are going to meet us on the bridge in two days to see about joining Kanoha. His smile grew even wider, making the corners of his eyes crinkle. Now, some things in this world can be bought with money. Other things with prestige and power. This. This was something no amount of money could buy, nor any amount of power or prestige could pay. The sight of Kakashi bujied and twitching, Sakura and Sasuke just deadpan as all hell and Tazuna, Tsunami and Inari all with their jaws on the floor was simply priceless. Haha <laughs> life was good. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys in the next video. Till that. Take care.